Honestly, I think uh, uh, we've only seen them on Suna versus these teams. I think they're going to be underestimating them. Cobra Cartel. Now they are the underdogs. Okay. Let's right. hear for Hope Cobra Cartel. All right. Uh, they are the underdogs, and we all love an underdog story. I think I think these three other three teams are going to be focusing on each other. They've been taking their eyes off the ball when it comes to Cobra Cartel. I think we might be in for a surprise. Okay, I like that little spice right there, Lampy. Yo. But this being a VR event, Veil has been on an up and up, one of the hottest games on the market right now. How excited are you to see all of this come from the game that we love most? Yeah, oh, I mean, it's amazing. I, what's, really, what's really fascinating is that this game is so new that most of these players, I mean, 75%, 80% of these players have under 200 hours in the game. And that's basically nothing in a game, right? So um, there's a few players with over 400, maybe 800 hours um, with a lot of experience. But the fact okay. that these guys only have 100 or 200 hours in the game and they're going to show us here on stage what they have, that's, that's something special. But I want to preface it something with that. You know, he says you only got 200, 300. These guys who have, you know, and girls, who knows? But the, the point is they've been playing for hundreds and thousands of hours in VR. Like, in VR. This isn't, yes. they haven't, these aren't like new people to VR shooters, right? Right. Um, so they are tried, tested in other leagues and other games. And this is the game they want. This is the game they're playing. And this is the game that they focus on now. So. Oh, most definitely. Now, to actually um, capitalize on a few hero moments in a moment, one of the players that has most of the hours in the game right now that's actually at this event, you know him most, man. Hey, who are some of the top dogs to you? Um, I gotta say, Nadix and Clev from uh, Rekt are, are pretty, pretty bomb players. Um, Roll Strive, I mean, they got Nero, that guy's insane, right? Matt H, also big Lurk player, big Strat caller, right? Um, from Vortex, I gotta give, uh, gotta give some handouts here to C, big Crack of J, and uh, and Frick there. And then on Cobra Cartel, Orzo, that guy's a monster. But don't forget about the rest of the guys on that team. I've seen, you know, Michael play really well. I've seen Good Bet play really well. It's going to be a really exciting game today. Right. And also here at the event, we don't have just the professional teams, but we have some familiar faces as well. Now, I know Jake Sucky and Hunter, they're somewhere here in the venue right now. But um, you've seen some familiar big names as well. Who do you see in the audience? Uh, you. Yeah, Belly, man, my, my eyes are all on you right now. We uh, we got my VR. We got Game Attack down in the audience. Woo! We got a lot of VR people. We got like Lonely Viper over there running the cameras. Uh, we got some experience up in here. Oh uh, yes, sir. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time to bring the teams out. Introducing team number one. Let's go ahead and give it up to Brad. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and make some noise for right, right here on the main stage. Yeah! <laughs> I love it. All right, so I'm here with the captain right now. My man's Chill Step, and um, Chill, is this your first professional land that you've played at? First one we've ever played. Thank you, Vale. Thank you, IVRL. This has been amazing. First time I've seen some of these guys since ever. Like, we've been playing for three years, some of us, and just being able to see them in person here now is amazing. And just ready to play, ready to go. Let's go, I absolutely love it. Now, one more question before you jump into the first match of the event and the first match of the day, okay? You're going against Cobra Cartel, a team that everyone's calling an underdog that you have to watch out for. 
But the question to you is, what should they watch out for when going against your team? You know, what they're used to. Uh, they've been playing against us for a while. We've been scrimming all the time. We've played together uh, in the qualifiers, and they know. They know what's coming. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now it's about that time to also introduce the opponents. Let's give it up for Cobra Cartel. Yes. I think they walk out after the video. Orzo getting vision and Zeeling picking up Deuce. Orzo finding Hoggins and now Elf only oh. finds Oblivion. That time. Zeeling, a couple of good entries on the scale and Deuce. Zeeling a third on Oblivion. Oh, incredible play here from Z-Link. Wow, Michael with a nice double. Michael might get a pick here. Oh, and he gets two! Let's go ahead and give it up for Cobra Cartel. <laughs> there we go. Smooth intro oh, right yeah! here to the main stage. The underdogs of the event. They did it. They're ready to take it to the next step. Oh, yeah. I love that intro. I, I wanted <laughs> them to do that. I egged them on to There we go. Crowd, let's so go bad. ahead. Let's get, make some noise. Let's go ahead and live them up right now. Oh, bro. All right, all right. So I'm here on the main stage with one of the big dogs on this team and one of the big dogs in this game in general. We're talking about Orzo, a man that has been on absolute fire, and you can definitely check it out with his gameplay. Now, Orzo, my question to you is, man, how are you feeling about this event so far, and are you excited for the first match of the day against a team like Red? Yeah, they're not that good. It's our nature to just destroy teams. You know, we're chilling. All right, so um, I asked them what you guys need to worry about going against them, but my question to you is, what does Rex have to watch out when playing against your team? Uh, they'll figure that out. All right. So, <laughs> hey, good luck and hope you guys crush it, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get this match underway. But before we do, once again, send us back over to the commentator desk. Fellas, take it away. I love the confidence there. Oh, you got to yeah. respect that. Absolutely. You got to respect that. Absolutely. You got to come door, in with confidence. Smack talk straight back at them. They know they're the underdogs. They know they got something to prove. I love it. They're hungry. You'd love to see it. Yeah, You'd love absolutely. to see it. Yeah, Rex coming in as number one seed here for today um, on the online seeding Cobra Cartel, tar Cartel coming in at number four. Uh, it is a little bit of the underdog, but we're talking about people with only a couple hundred hours in the game, like we mentioned. So it's hard to get, just base things off of, you know, what we've seen in Vail and what we're seeing recently in the past couple of months. Um, Rex being a team that's been around, uh, you know, for a few years together. I mean, most of their core is a three-year team. They've been running along for about three years. And with uh, the addition of Clevin Natix um, only being around for a couple months now. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of uh, chemistry they're going to have and bring today. Yeah, I mean, they, they're a team that uh, have probably uh, scrimmed against Wrecked one of the most. So they've, they've played, these teams, of all the people here, they know each other the best. Yeah. Yeah, they're right. not afraid to face each other, so they, they're going in with some confidence. Yeah, you, you just don't know what Cobra Cartel have like, been hiding from Rekt in these scrims, because they've just been learning, learning, learning. They've been making those notes, they've been doing their exactly. homework, they've been bringing it here. They want to bring fire, they want to bring those venoms into play, you know? Right. Yeah, most teams are going to try and take it a little bit easy in scrims, read out their opponents a little bit. You never really want to leave all your cards on the table, right? Kind of a game of chess, a little bit of a mind game, especially when you're IGLing over 10 rounds on, uh, on one side, right? You want to make those reads, and you want to try to adjust properly for that kind of stuff, so... It's going to be really interesting to see what these guys got playing on this stage. I mean, this is, uh, I think, the first LAN event any of these players have actually really ever played at, so it should be good. Yeah, I think we're just going to roll and explain it just for the people who don't know. We're just going to roll and explain it to explain the artifact mode and the, uh, hopefully the map that are coming up. So let's cut to that so the people know what you're seeing. Hopefully. Let's 
coming. It's oh. on the big screen. Hopefully the people at home can. All right, so artifact mode is uh, you've got two artifacts, point A and point B, right? The Rayab team are the defenders of it. The colonists have a puck which scans the artifacts. They can choose to attack either site. Um, the two minute round. So the moment they get there, it doesn't matter if there's one second left or two minutes left. The moment they get that scan in, it's a 45 second round from that, sec from that moment on. And the colonists then become the defenders. Rayab, who were the defenders, become the attackers. They need to retake that site, and they have 45 seconds to try and disable that scan before it goes through. Yeah, keep in mind that each of the first rounds on the half are a pistol Use round, so far as we'll only have up. a pistol. You might, might see some weird strats or some stuff kind of pulled out of the bag, five-man rushes. We, we see that a lot on pistols, so it should be interesting to see what these teams have been working on for their pistol rounds. Yeah, I'm hyped. I'm hyped. The, the best thing, I'm terrible at pistol rounds, but when we go into pistol rounds, that is all hype. It's all aggression. You have five guys, five guns, bam, bam. Like, everyone is on point. When it comes to the normal rounds, people are, you know, taking the time. The on pistol rounds, it is fire. Everyone is fired up, everyone is glued in, everyone is targeting, and they're all going for the same people. Yeah. And I'm terrible at it. Yeah, for the pistol rounds, I mean, in the past, we've had, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at some of the stats here throughout the playoffs and throughout the online seating matchups. You know, Wrecked being uh, 17 out of 18 pistol 17 rounds. 17 out of 18? Yes, they have only lost one pistol round in the last 18 rounds. Um, so it's, that's something to behold there. Um, you know, you have uh, Cobra Cartel, they're, they're struggling a little bit on their pistol rounds, so they're going to go 7 out of 18. So yeah, but let's go back. You're telling me wrecked yeah. out of 18 pistol rounds they played through to the qualifiers, through to this point. Through the they playoffs dropped, and through the online team. one. They've only lost one. Wow, okay. Uh, I think statistically, like, teams who win uh, the pistol rounds in, in, in these games go on to, if they win both pistol rounds, it's like a 75% 75 chance, 75 chance they're going to win the <laughs> entire uh, game. Well, I don't know about those percentages. You know, I, we'll I go with it. We'll I go didn't make it, it up. Yeah. I didn't make it up. <laughs> the, the, the facts, maybe. <laughs> there but is anyway. Some, there is some significant momentum to be gained there for the first round, especially like on a stage like this. You know, tensions are high. Emotions are high, right? You get that first pistol round. Like, that is a, that's a confident boost, right? Oh, yeah. So we'll probably see whoever takes that pistol round likely to come out to an early lead just due to that fact, right? You start feeling really good about that first round win. Yeah. That can be a huge, huge Oh, factor. yeah, yeah. You, need, you yeah. get that boost straight out of the gate. Now, we have to remember there's lots of different weapons in this game, right? And everyone's practicing those different weapons. People lose focus and lose sight of the fact that there are a minimum two pistol rounds it. per yep. game. That's two points, yep. you know, and you need, uh, in this situation, you need nine to take the map. Um, and, you know, those two points are key. Right. So people who haven't been practicing the, like the, the pistol game, specifically the pistol game, are going to be people who are losing out. And we know that Rec know this stuff. Right. And we know Cobra have been lagging behind by your stats. Have they been doing their homework? Have they been catching up? Have they been doing, like, just grinding out the pistols? Yeah, it's, it's going to be something to see here. We'll find out on the first round coming up. And as we can see on the cameras, folks, you know, uh, this is VR. This is, you know, the motions, the movements that they're making is real life in the game. You know, it's not sitting at a desk. It's not sitting at a keyboard or a mouse. So you have to reload. You have to hold your gun up. You know, there's a lot of energy and uh, strength that involves in this game as well. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a factor of physical endurance that plays into playing VR versus sitting in a keyboard with a mouse and keyboard. Like, it's not, you know, not to take away from that, but VR is a whole different ball game, right? And like you said before, like some of these players only have up to 200 hours or whatever in the game, but there's a lot of transitional skills from their backgrounds and different VR games that they played. So it um, should be really, really interesting watching these guys and see how they do on this kind of world stage that we're at right now. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, like, we can't take away from the physicality of VR. When you see, once you guys, everyone who's live in the audience, you're in for such a treat because you get to see the game and you get to see these guys playing constantly. Now, it is all about that physicality. Throwing that nade is not a pressing G. You are throwing that nade. It's all about your arm movement. It's all about that practice muscle memory. You're not just holding down a button and knowing where that nade is going to land. These are practice moments. Every time we go crazy about a, a grenade like takeout, when we see a multi frag from a nade, that is someone's skill coming into it. That yeah. is someone who's, you know, you know, in real life, it's like playing basketball or throwing darts or something. You yep. know, you're not, you don't have a cursor on your screen or in your headset to say, I'm going to throw it perfectly at this distance, at this, you know, altitude or whatever it may be, right? So right. it's all about when you release that trigger. And, you know, it's the precision timing of it, the strength of your arm. Um, you know, the utility is going to be an amazing factor here today as well. Yeah. And just things like reloading weapons. You, if you, again, the cameras will cut to it. People from home will be able to see it. People live will definitely be able to see it. Um, when you see them, like, doing the things where the hands are underneath each other and you just see this quick flick action is because they're reloading. And right. again, in a game, you press R, it reloads. Right. And it doesn't, you know, different weapons have different reload speeds. But in this, in VR, you know, it mimics reality. If you get that muscle memory down with unloading, reloading, cocking the gun, you're ready to go. And people do that in like under half a second. Yeah. You know, they do it in a quarter of a second. And it's a practiced momentum. Yep. Yeah. 
I think we'll be going into Kitty here as our first map. So we're talking about nades, we're probably going to see a lot of big nade plays. I mean, teams have been putting in time. It's such a small CQB map with a lot of really tight corridors. So it'll be really interesting to see what kind of nades we see coming out today. Kitty. Right. Kitty, a.k.a. the artillery map. We're about to go live, ladies and gentlemen. Get Next. some noise, everyone. First round, let's go! Match one, uh, sponsored by, powered by Liv as well here as we get into match number one. Oh, yeah. Powered by Liv. If you don't know what Liv is, Liv is on a mission to empower content creators and game developers to share their experiences in VR. I recommend you check it out if you're into any type of streaming or anything like that. Powered by Liv, match number one. Let's get into it, boys. Uh... I believe they're in the game practicing right now. And we are live! Round number one. Round number one. Yeah, round number one here. I've got a screen in front of me, but I want to watch this thing behind me. <laughs> Cobra Cartel wow, can be taken. Wow, Clev Nate straight out of the gate takes out Batia. Cobra Cartel here starting on Colonist, setting up. Orzo's going to take down Tarmac. We're in a four on three right now as Clev grabs Orzo. That's a 2k from Clev right away, holding that long A area here. Now Z Link and Michael coming out right now. Take and this is the pistol clip. round we were talking about, ladies and gentlemen. So different to the rest of the game. Nades coming in, chill stuff, picking up his link. Again, Cobra Cartel on the attack. It is three versus one, three, two, two versus one situation now. Now it's all up to Goodbet in a one versus two situation against Basil and Nadix. Goodbet has sight control, but Basil's pressuring right now from the CTA connector here. Goodbet's going to trade with Basil, and that's going to be the first round in favor of Wrecked. One nothing. We've got our first round complete here in Miami. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful job by Rekt as they push four through A, one through mid there. Beautiful nade right off the bat. Um, and then uh, beautiful nade by Nadix and then also right there by Clev. Yeah, absolutely. And we've just seen the first round Rekt taking the very first point in the Miami Major. Uh, and, you know, it went down to a 1-0. There was one wrecked play alive. And ladies and gentlemen, if that isn't a sign of what's to come, I don't know what is. Coming down to one player left on the map is exactly what we want to see. Yeah, now uh, it looks like uh, Cobra Cartel going to be setting up for a B push possibly here with one player in middle right now. Setting up, they're watching for the nades. I mean, we're talking about it earlier. The nades can be so deadly coming out of that skate park area. Focusing on good bet right now. Z-Link, we can see right now that uh, Cobra Cartel, um, four man push on the B side with one in the middle trying to hold that middle ground. That middle ground so important because as the rotates come in, um, the takeouts, uh, of super important. Being able to hold that mid ground, cutting it down. You can see here now Cobra Cartel trying to take that middle ground. Now, the key thing about Wrecked is they're a very adaptive team, right? They, they don't go in with preset uh, tactics. They go in and learn about the enemy. Good bet taking out Basilmaz as the first kill coming out from Cobra Cartel. Yeah, and Wrecked's going to be rotating over to the B site now. Uh, Cobra Cartel has good site control right now, and we're into a two on two situation. We've got Orzo and Fatia against Chilsep and Clev. Orzo yeah, takes down Clev, but chill Clev grabs now. Orzo. Now it's a 1v1. No, Z-Link and Batia are still up. It's a two versus one situation, and they've got sight control. The scan, the very scan of the day has gone in. We've got 38 seconds left on the clock. Chill Step, the last Rex player standing. He has about 27 seconds to get in there and disable that scan. The scan going in there, beautiful. You can see it as it lifts up, and the artifact gets scanned. Once it's completed, it doesn't matter how many people are left. Chill Step now down to one versus one. Chill Step versus Batia. And he takes him down! Wow! Two versus one situation, he takes it, and he's got enough time to disable the scan as well. Once again, one player left on the Rex side. you love to see it. The scan comes disabled, and Rex 2-0 up. Yeah, we've seen a beautiful job there, but again by uh, Rex, you know, running that four and one. They're pushing one through the middle, taking control of the middle, stopping those rotations. But good uh, retake there by the defense as they did get in there, get the retake. They were there, 2v1. But man, chill step with the clutch at the end there, grabbing a 2-1 and stopping that scan. Listen, I know I said wrecked. Um, you know, everyone's like, hey, Rex, Rex the best, Rex the best. I said Cobra Cartel, don't, don't slouch. No, I it's mean, close. It's I know close. it's 2-0, but Cobra Cartel right are in this. Yes, they are. Bay's going out to the lower skate here. Nobody's going to get picked up on that. Basil's going to be pushing through. Good aggressive play there by Basil Mass as he takes down Orzo. Good bet's going to find Tarmac in the middle. Now he's going to fall back a little bit here. Cobra not able to really find any map control. Basil's in a really aggressive position right now. He's going to fight Patia here. Neither player's going to find each other as they trade shots back and forth. I just want to point out as well, Chill Step was going to be one of my picks for the uh, play of the day. And at the moment, he is 6 and 1. Nadix finding 1. Clev finding good bet. 2 versus 4 situation with Cobra Cartel on the minus. And Michael has a little bit of mid control here as uh, looks like Z Link's rotating over to A right now. Neither player has the scanner though. 
Right, you see the scanner is down in the bottom right-hand corner of the map, and it is now a one versus three situation, but this is a player who can pull it back. I mean, at the end of the day, Mikkel VR is taken down. He's a good player, but not good enough to take down three rec players by himself in this situation. Yeah, it's just been the dominance of uh, Rekt right now. I mean, they're taking control of the mid. They're taking tr control of Skate Park, connecting on their shots. Um, it's it's just been great. It's been amazing shots here so far. Yeah, absolutely. And we're seeing the artillerys coming out. We're seeing those early nades from both teams, and we're seeing the frag refrag. That's the first round that we've seen so far today where there's been more than one player left standing at the end of it. Yeah, it's interesting to see here. Cobra Cartel setting up the exact same way once again. They're really trying to commit on this B site here. They're not making any adjustments right now. Nades treading out. Z-Link's going to pick up Basil. Nice pick there from Z-Link onto the site. Now it's all up to Nadix left on site here as Cobra's going to be pushing up here with three members coming through the cave right now. Michael's going to grab one with a nade. Nadix going to take it on one. That's Z-Link done. Michael's going to be pushing around here. They're still doing a hard B push though. They're not giving up on it. Nadix taking down one. Nadix, Nadix down down two. There's on a 3k right now, ladies and gentlemen. Good bet. Taking out Chilster, but Nadix is still on site. Nadix the one. Everyone knows who Snadix is. If you know anything about Vale, you know who this player is, and he is holding the B site. He's famous for holding the KDB site. Clav on the side, though, picking up Patia, comes in from the flank. Good bet now, pushing through the center. He's all alone. He was in a situation where it was three versus two, and now it's all on Good bet. But Good bet has been delivering the goods today so far. It's a Good bet. He has a chance. Or not, Clav takes him down, putting Wrecked 4 0 up on the first map of the day at the Miami Vale Major. Yeah, great defense there is, uh, you know, like Radar mentioned, is Nadex always on that B side. Nadex has Round been playing that B as, as long as I can remember the last few matches that we've seen, and he's been holding it down quite well. You know, running 4-1-1 one, and one right now, um, just, just dominating his side and holding things in. Clev usually running that middle side, you know, running 7-2-0. and oh, Just both of these guys really, really confident and, you know, connecting on their shots. You can see a little bit of adjustment here from Cobra Cartel. They're going to send toward, one towards the A side here, 1-1-3 one, one, setup. Hopefully trying to take advantage of maybe a fake onto A, possibly an elite execute B. What do you think here, Radar? Uh, I think that the, the, the actual like slow play, I mean, they're not making noise anyway, really. They are pushing out a B. They're like saying, looking over here, look at me, look at me, look at me. Meanwhile, we do have a quiet player on the other side of the map. You know, we have, um, I believe it's Ozo just it quietly Ozo. biding his time, waiting for that noise to be made so that he can sweep in and uh, make some plays. Yeah, one, Cobra. one, three. Cobra Cartel really playing slowly here, trying to feel out Wreck, trying to find any gaps in the defense. Maybe they can make an early pick and try and execute. We haven't seen much of the coordinated nade artillery that we've seen previously on this map. Here it's coming out though. from Michael. See, no, we see it rotate through the middle now, so it's, they've given up on the A side. You see, wow, first nade. Well, Basil Mass taking out Ozo. That was Cobra Cartel on a four versus five situation. They're still dedicated to the speed side push. They're not rotating out. They are in this to win this. Yeah, Z-Link trying to work up and to be there, find anybody on site as Chillstep and Tarmac are now rotating that. They're going to have to deal with four members of Wreck that are now on the B side of the site. Cobra Cartel does have a decent amount of control here. And this is what I'm talking about. Wrecked are an adaptive play team. They know what the team, enemy team's doing. They work off it quickly. They do not stand back. They don't let the other players take the momentum. They hear it. They react to it. They take down straight away. And again, we are in a one versus four situation. A Cobra Cartel came out the gates with great momentum. Wrecked have taken that momentum back, straight back. And it is 5-0 in Wrecked favor right now. Um, yeah, Cobra Cartel is... They're having a tough time right, getting through mid. They're, they're getting into skate park, but they're not being able to push through as uh, Wrecked is doing a great job as they're rotating wow, in and they're just pouncing. They're circling in on Cobra Cartel and surrounding them and really keeping them confined. Uh, one big thing we're seeing right now is Orzo, who is normally their top shooter on Cobra Cartel, is struggling a little bit today at 2-5-1. and one. So we really need to see Orzo pick things up here to help their team out. Yeah, there's definitely a level of comfort that you need to have to be able to perform your best. And, I mean, these players are still adjusting to it. I'm sure that we'll see that change over time. And here comes a quick execute from Cobra Cartel. Smoke's coming out all over the all A-side. All right, here we go. It's a strong push on A-side. Smoke's are out. They are... They're not, look at the momentum. They are charging through. They've got the smokes down. Oh, Clev and Chilster! 2k straight out of the gate four Three, down four. wow and just like that wreck show that they understand their enemy like cobra came in with such dominance such ferocity pushing through to a site but wreck immediately reacted like they shut down the push from every angle and that's one of cobra's main strikes i mean wow, that is something they practice time and time again and they have great success with it but wrecked knowing their enemy playing to their strengths shutting down that push
And Cobra Cartel going to be setting up with a kind of similar strategy here. Lots going towards the A site here. One in the middle, a 4-1 push right here. Let's see if they take it quickly again, or they're going to try and go for a little bit of a slower push. Let's have an if it, ain't, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but it was pretty broke last time. Oh, we oh, see a, a flub nade that that's bounces back, almost takes out the user. Orzo trying to quickly come out here, but good bet steaming through middle, picks up Clev. Tarmac going to trade the frag on him. Chill Steps going to grab Katia with a nade. Tarmac's going to grab Orzo. And just like that, it's all up to two members of Cobra Cartel as Mikel takes down Chill Step. Wow, but look at the two remaining uh, Cobra Cartel players have no help to speak of. You throw a stone at them, it's going to take them both out. They're in trouble here with limited sight control, and all three members are wrecked right there. Tarmac's going to pick up Michael, and now it's all up to Z-Link as he trades with... Well, goes down to Tarmac after he picks up Basil, and that's going to be 7-0 in favor of Rekt right now. You know, I almost picked up on Tarmac there. He was... Uh, just a second ago, Tarmac was 0-5-2, and straight away, Tarmac, uh, Tarmac brings it back. He's laying down that concrete. He's back up to five kills. He yeah, right now what we're seeing is, you know, the amazing angles and, you know, the ability for Rec to hold those angles and know the angles to watch and then, you know, those crosshairs yep. and be able to hit those shots. That's yep. the biggest thing right there is those angles and, those cr and hitting those shots. Uh, they're not allowing Cobra Cartel really to move much. All right. I believe we're going to be going into a quick technical pause, so stay tuned. I mean, this is a live event. It's virtual reality. It's always going to have a few hiccups to start the day. You got that right. Hey, it is eSports, right? Shout out to technology. But also, let's talk about the game that we're currently watching right now. When it comes to Cobra Cartel going against Rec, I mean, hey, Rec is on a tear at the moment. Yeah, they are, and, and they have been throughout the playoffs and also through the online seating. I mean, you know, their KD and their ratio of kills to death ratio of all of over one. You know, they're at 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 1.5 um, KD ratio. You know, you got Cobra Cartel, they're struggling a little bit on that side. They, you know, a few of them under one, but a couple of them over one. Like I mentioned earlier, um, you know, Orzo was their top shooter, and right now he's struggling. Chill Step did it. We saw that 1v2. It was absolutely crazy. Seems like Cobra Cartel, they need some type of spark of their own to really gather their first round, right? All right, listen, I had the, 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 the joy and the absolute pleasure of interviewing both these teams, having spent time with them. And I was told that Cobra Cartel, if you get down, remember, you've played this game. You know this team. You've spent the hours. Forget you're on stage. You're in the game. You're playing a game you know. Play it as best you can. Yes, sir. And also, last but not least, Cobra Cartel, we're looking at them to really try to even this game out right now. What's something that you want to see from them, or do you want to see them step up in a way? I think right now they're not using enough coordinated utility, right? They've got to get those nades on positions that they know Rekt are in and trying to get a couple more entries before they execute on site. Rekt is doing a really good job of staying back before getting in the fights. Cobra needs to bring the fight to them, get those entries, execute on site, get some control. Yes, sir. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, as we go ahead and get this game together, let's go ahead and um, get some tunes as I toss it over to the DJ. Let's go. I mean, Alma's great. I mean, these guys are good. Yeah, Sounds like a skill issue. You can't read it? No. I can read mine. Oh, no, name. yours is fine. Mine, I like it's it's cut off. I have like half names. We need a P. They need a picture in picture for the players when they shoot to the players because it cuts your feet off. Have you told them that? Yeah. I told them they can't cut the player in mid-round because then we have nothing to cast. Yeah, but they need to for this, but we need to be able to see that. Yeah. That's terrifying.
Shut it down as soon as we pull up. Bang the drums, I know it's a killer. It's a killer. Bang, 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 it's a stick up. Shut it down as soon as we pull up. Bang, baby, bang, bang, stick up. Bang, baby, bang, it's a killer. Bang, 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 it's a stick up. Shut it down as soon as we pull up. Bang the drums, I know it's a killer. It's a killer. Bang, 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 it's a stick up. Shut it down as soon as we pull up.
Watch it fly by as the pendulum swings. Watch it count down to the end of the day. The clock takes life away. So unreasonable. Look down below. Watch the time go right out the window. Trying to hold on to didn't even know. I wasted it all just to watch us. I kept everything inside and even though I tried, it all fell apart. But it meant to be, will eventually be a memory of a time when I tried so hard and got so far. You got to move to the front. 
Just feels tired. Dude, let's give it up to the DJ, huh? With some hyped up music there. Oh, we're live? Yeah, yeah let's go. Not live. Oh, wow. Dude, I was just like, who's that speaking? They have an amazing phone. Oh, it's this guy. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. I think we're going to cut to a, uh, right, so technical difficulties aside, let's get the show going. I think we're going to cut to a kitty explainer, which is going to show us the map we're playing right now. It's a bit of a flyby over it, I'm hoping. In any second. Kitty. 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 So I believe it's just a graphic. So yeah, I mean, Kitty's a pretty CQB map, right? Pretty tight. Lots of tight corridors. Lots of nades. We haven't seen a lot of that yet. We've seen some nades. Oh, we've seen a lot of nades. I think you're just missing it because it's happening very frenetically. It's a skill issue. Absolutely. 100%. It's my favorite map. Like, like you look at the architecture of the, uh, of the B site. Um, I mean, like, it's a stunning view. And then, like, the left side, there's just so much going on on the map. You have mid-control, which is so important. You have counterattacks, flanks that can go through the uh, central areas. But on top of that, it's a visually creative map, right? You know, you take the high point over A on the approach on the left side. For anyone going, when the colonists go through the left side of the map, there's this beautiful, like, museum and stuff, you know? Yeah. With, like, I I'd wish it was kind of my house, because you have that beautiful grass overgrown on the top. You've got, like, the sun coming through. The it's a very kind of artistic place, which kind of suits our venue, really, Super Blue, you know? Like, a fantastic venue. Uh, that focuses on the art, just like Kitty. Like Kitty's a great CQB map as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, see, it, it's such a tight, tight map, right? And the thing about Kitty too, like tactically, the rotations are very quick. Yeah. It's a very tiny map. You can rotate within 
five seconds, five, ten seconds, right? Yep. So um, we should expect teams to be, you know, pulling those fakes and trying to pull people away. We haven't seen that a lot yet so far. No, I mean, it's early days. Lamp, what do you think? I mean, what's your, what's your take on Kitty as, as a map goes? Is more, would you say it's more a favor of the attack or the defense? I think, it, I, I think it can favor the defense more than anything, um, just because you can set up defense in the mid. Um, you can set people on both sides, obviously, but you can control the mid with the defense as well. Mm. And then the rotations can come quick, and they can come between two different lanes. You can go over the bridge through the middle, or you can go back through CT where, where the, you know, the spawn happened and cut through there. Um, it's just about how you set it up, and then it also depends, you know, obviously what the offense is going to do. If they're going to push 5 through A or they're going to push 5 through A2, it doesn't, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of different options, obviously. I, I mean, it's a very, the, the thing with pushing through the A side is there's so many nooks and crannies that the defenders can be hiding in, right? Um, yeah. That's why I think we see a lot of people th pushing through the B side of the map. You know, it's that beautiful skate park kind of, you know, and the beautiful kind of like the ribbed kind of arch architecture. But the actual attack strike, there's very few places the enemy can, like the defenders can be hiding. So you see a lot of teams favoring that push because, you know, mentally, you're having to check less corners. You know, you're having to be less wary. Right. The only downside of the B side push is the artillery strikes. Defenders can be artillery strike and people have been zeroing that stuff in. Uh, and you just see those nades flying down. Right, and I think we are about to get back into, I think, round eight? Round, round seven eight, is least. about to go back live. Wrecked versus Cobra Cartel. Let's hear it, let's hear it up, folks. Woo! Let's go. Miami Major, baby, it's been a long road. We're here and we're ready to get back into this. Yeah, Cobra Cartel still on attack here, down seven, nothing, but they've had a lot of time to talk about this and get ready for this. What do you think they're gonna change up here, Lampy? Yeah, like I think we mentioned earlier, is the communication between their utility. A lot of nades that need to be hit and, and the smokes and then cutting off the lanes. Because um, right now, uh, Rekt has every angle covered basically when they're coming through a site. And we yep. need to get some utility on that. Yep. Well, we cannot stress enough, right, that the break that Cobra Cartel had could have been what they needed to get themselves back into this game. They've had a chance to talk through what's been going wrong, hopefully come up with what should go right, what they need to change. And um, we can see right now, it is a one. Slowing down the five on the side, just waiting for those defenses, those counter frags, the utility to be used up, and they are biding their time. They've changed their approach, and they're not just going in with a cobra strike straight from the get-go. They are being slithery, quiet snakes. Yeah, they're definitely slowing down here, trying to bait some of the utility out from Wreck. They've already burned 30 seconds right off the clock there. Four setting up in the lower B skate park here, trying to work up slowly, trying to get some entries. Wreck's not overexposing, though. Here, they're, they're playing conservative positions, though. They're not really giving Cobra any free picks, which could be a difference maker here because they're going to have to force themselves onto the site in order to get anything done. Yeah, I mean, I keep saying Wrecked are a very adaptive team. They work off the intel they have, they work fast. If they don't have any intel, then they're just sitting there ambling. They're, you know, they're getting a bit antsy, and this might give Cobra the opportunity to get some free picks straight off the bat. Here we go. They're pushing in. They're going through the cave. Utility's coming out. Orzo, good bet. Michael coming up towards the alley area. Zealand's trying to go to work on Nadix. As Tarmac picks up Orzo, Michael gets Tarmac. And the Cobras go live. Hazel's Three versus four. Up. Wrecked with a four. A one player advantage, two player advantage. Nadix, the B player holder, takes down 2K, baby. Huge play from Nadix there. Only what five the heck? On the 3K, clock. brings it back for Wrecked. 8 0 right now. Nadix is so strong on that B site hold, man. Yeah, he's dominant over there. I mean, it was a great job by Cobra Cartel playing it slow, playing it quiet, you know, not allowing that early rotation to come in from Wrecked. But that one minute timer hit and Cobra Cartel took off. That was their moment, that was their time. But Nadix, with the you know defensive utility that he threw out into the cave, slowed things down. They weren't able to make that push together, and then all of a sudden he just picked up two, and then three for the win. But what do you do? What do you do? You're Cobra Cartel. You've bided your time. You've waited for the utility to be wasted. You come in at a one-minute strike, and it's. I mean, what do you do? What do you do? Like wrecked just immediately all over it. You shut it down. And we see another struck. Great grenade from Batir in the center, picking up Tarmac. Yeah, there's a big nade on them coming out middle. Wreck now is on pistol round here as they've switched sides to Colonists running a modified format today. First and nine yeah. for the couple first matches. So Basil, Chillstep, and Nadix going to be working up slowly here, trying to get into position, trying to find an entry here before they explode out. Yeah, so we've had the round swap. We should have mentioned it. So now Cobra Cartel are on the defense. They are one point away from losing map one, the map they need. They can still bring it back. It's been done before. And we see a great grenade from Clef picking up Mickle. Yeah, huge explosion here from Clef pushing out, getting the nades down. Basil's going to take down another. That was crazy. The aggression all over A side. You can see that Cobra Cartel is struggling to get back in time. Nadix taken down Patia. The scan is in. It is a two versus four situation now. Cobra Cartel is all down to just Ozo. He's the only man who can stop Wreck from taking map one. Does he have what it takes? 
The scan's going in. He's got about 25 seconds to get in there. Disable the scan. But look at Rack. They are all over the site. They are slowed down. They're covering the corners. They know this game. There's Chill Staff. Takes him down. Rack's going to take map number one here at the Miami Vale Major. Yeah, amazing job by Rack, man. They played that slow and steady right there. They were creeping through the museum side, through the. And you know, just not giving off any of that intel, not giving off any of that communication uh, beforehand, and then just the nades were released, man. It was like Tony Stark calling in for that Jericho missile. I mean, it's just nades all over the place on A. They're taking down a few kills, and it's just getting that scan. That's, uh, <laughs> I mean, we said wrecked, right? I mean, I, I gave Cobra Cartel plaudits, but end of the day, I mean, they put up a great fight, but when Rex started going, uh, they didn't stop. Uh, they just kept rolling and rolling and rolling. And, uh, man, what a match. Rex straight out of the gates destroyed that. Cobra Cartel put up a good fight, but, you know, the, the freight train that was Rex just, once yeah. it picked up momentum, there's no stopping it. You saw the pistol kills. It finished with four up yeah. on Rex. Yeah, and Cobra Cartel cut to ribbons. Yeah, it's been their, that's been their MO throughout the pistol rounds, you know, coming through the playoffs and through the online seating, and that's what's been showing on the stats, you know. Yep. Again, another, uh, another game with no pistol rounds lost, so... Uh, what, what, is it, what does that make now? 20, uh, 19, 19 out of 20? 19 out of 20. Yeah, 19 out of 20 pistol rounds there wow. for Rex. Did, uh, did you happen to see who was the top fragger on that? I didn't. No, the screen cut away, and, and uh, we didn't get to see who the top fragger was, but, I mean, it, it seemed like everybody was a part of it. You know, there was real no stragglers. No. But to join a discussion as well, but Rex absolutely dominated map number one right there. But one of the biggest plays that we saw recently, right? Nadix holding down that site. The yeah. guy is an absolute anchor. He's a tank. Yeah, I mean Nadix. I mean everybody. You know, it's new and upcomer. Uh, you know, up new and upcomer guy in the, yeah. in the game. Nobody really knows who this guy <laughs> yeah. is. Uh, uh, no, no. no, we're kidding. We're kidding. Nadix has the uh, actually has the most hours in Vale than anybody. So he's running uh, just over 800 hours in the game. So he's. I think double past the closest guy next to him, which is the guy on their team is Clev, and Clev is running about 400 and some hours in the game. So uh, Nadek's showing his experience, you know, but, you know, it, it, even though with the 800 hours, we got guys here with 60 to 100 hours as well, you know, just getting as many kills and playing just as well. So, you know, the hours can do something, but they're not doing everything. You know, it's all about the chemistry in the team and, you know, the angles that you're holding and the shots that you're making. You're right, and I definitely want to see some utility play coming as well, like you said. Now, on that Nadek's push, he was able to get a three-piece in, what, it was about four seconds in time that he could have been bombed out. A little bit of crowd control could have helped him out. Cobra Cartel, they have to find a way to attack these sites more efficiently next time. Yeah, Nix is doing a really good job slicing the pie, taking the angle, slowing it down, and fighting one-on-one. -on -one. That's really the critical aspect of his B-site hold that's getting him so many kills, right? He's taking one fight, he's re-peaking and taking another fight. He's not over-committing, he's not over-swinging, he's not exposing himself to too many players, and that's how you hold B-site. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think we're going to cut to a Mar explainer. We're going to talk about the up-and-coming map. It's another completely different map to Kitty. Not, you know, there right. are CQB aspects to it, but we're going to see it on the big screen. And... Uh, Right, there you see it, Ma, um, a much larger map. The CQP still exists when you get close to the sites, but there are a lot of long ranges, and these guys have been finding every single last angle that you can find on this map to hold from long ranges and get those picks. And again, this is one where you hold the center ground, you have the high ground, and you know what the big thing about Ma is, right? Verticality. Yep. You know, there, is, there are multiple levels across the entirety of this map, and it changes every aspect of it for the better. Yeah, Mars is going to play completely different, really, than Kiti. Uh, Mar is much larger. And it's also the rotation is going to take a lot longer. Now, the one cool thing about Mars we also going to see in the game there is we got zip lines, zip lines in the game. So you, while you're holding the zip line, it's a one-handed zip line. It can come to you across the entire map. And, you know, on that zip line, you can also shoot. Um, we are going to talk a little bit about and show the uh, main sponsor for match one, that being... Yeah, powered by Liv. Match number one is powered by Liv. Once again, if you don't know what Liv is, Liv is on a mission to empower content creators and help share their experiences in VR. Yeah. Uh, and you see a lot of content creators use this constantly. You know, you see yeah. the uh, avatars instead of the actual, you know, the characters in the game. If, I mean, if anyone has ever seen any VR content, you've probably seen Liv because it is the number one and the best tool to be using, when, especially when they're content creating. Yeah, and Liv has been working with Axelab to develop first-party integration with the game with all kinds of gun smoothing and aim in when you're sighting and all that. It's actually really cool what the team is doing over there. Yeah, I recently downloaded Liv as well, you know, for when I, you know, have my POVs going as well. 
And, you know, when you lift your gun up, Liv puts it into that first-person point of view. Yep. And once you put your gun down, it puts you in an over-shoulder cam. You know, you don't have to edit that later on. It edits yeah. for you while you're in-game. Amazing uh, product. One of my best friends is a guy called Lonely Viper. He creates a lot of content. Um, let's hear it for Lonely Viper, everyone. Lonely Viper, am I right? Um, uh, one, of the, one of the things he always does, he uses Live constantly, and he does the stupidest stuff with it, and he does it just to mess with me. When I'm watching his content, he just messes with me, brings in... Anyway, Liv. Liv, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All, All right. right. Let's get into it. Yeah, going into map number two in match number one here, once again, powered by Liv. I really want to see the players dancing on stage, because the, the thing is, um, it's the physicality, right? You can physically see the players on the stage, and you can see them on the screen at the same time. And it's all one-to-one, -one, right? When you see them moving. Uh, Wrecked, if you can hear me, can you start dancing? <laughs> <laughs> no? Would they can't so hear they me. Can I hear. That's so what we just proved the, yeah. uh, you know, the noise-canceling headphones. Exactly. They can't hear us right now. The noise-canceling headphones are that good that they can't hear my penetrating voice. And let me tell you, my wife complains about my voice going through walls and waking her up when I'm doing playing Veil at 2 a.m. All right, we're getting uh, right into it here with pistol round now. Rex starting out on colonists as they're moving towards the armory site here. Looks like a heavy push here. All four with only one in the middle, which is Clev. Again, there is uh, somebody we told about it. Rex straight into the B site. Getting the initial kill and giving the game away, you can see the rest of Cobra Cartel now collapsing as fast as they can. Now, that's one of the main things about Mar, it's a big map. Basil Mass with a pick on Orza. Orza trying to fall back there, reposition and try and play retake with his team, but Scans they get going taken in. down. Scan's going in. Scans there it is. And you know what? The, the thing I love slash hate about Rekt is they put the scanner in a, a, such a horrible location to disable. There we go, chill step. Take down another, and that is showing Rekt maintaining the dominance on pistol only rounds. Nadix picking up another and went down to just one Cobra Cartel with only 27 seconds left on the clock to not only try and push through, but to try and disable that scan. Once again, it doesn't matter if he kills all of Wrecked, he still has to get the disable in. And they are hunting him down from every angle. Patia picking up Chill Step. Clev finds him, shuts it down. Wrecked get the first point on the second map. Yeah, absolutely. Rec, beautiful job there. Beautiful job on defense, or on the offense. And, uh, you know, pushing through on that B side. They're running 4 1, 4 going through the main tunnel, 1 going through the mid. You know, chill step there in the mid, controlling anybody rotating and trying to come across the zip lines or even through the uh, the catwalks in the mid. And yeah, now we're going to be kicking it off into round number two, the first gun round that we're going to see here as Rekt is going to be working towards the uh, yellow room site here, spiral site, into A. They've got two players as well in middle right now, riding along, following Nadix as he tries to enter and he's going to have the battle. Wow, what a nade by Nadix. Picks up 270. I don't know who that is. They've, they've subbed that one in when we weren't looking. Gosh darn it. <laughs> anyway, great Nate. You see it coming out. Nate takes angrily coming through the side, but Z-Link, wow. huge two entries on Nate. and Babel <laughs> Math there. <laughs> you love to see it. Now they know where the attack is coming from. Have they identified the scanner? So we haven't met. Wow, Mickle picking up Chill Step, and they've got, for the first time on Mar, they've got the numbers advantage. You know, and scanner down. They got scanner control too. Yep. Yeah, Cobra so, in a three on two situation here. You Good control on site. Yep, you can see on the mini-map, there's a, a flashing kind of orb thing on the uh, west side of the map. That is actually the scanner. Now, it's really important to point out, when the scanner is down, that really is a disadvantage for the attackers. Time that picking up Z-Link! Now it's all up to Orzo here in a 1v2 situation. He's going to go to work on Clev, but he's not wow. going to take him. Clev's going to grab that one. That's going to be 2-0 in favor of Rex. Yeah, it was looking good there for Cobra Cartel in the beginning, man. Z-Link with that double kill right there through the main tunnel, or through the new tunnel and really controlling the scanner, but they, you know, they ran out of options by that time. There was very little defense left, and you know, good, uh, good teamwork there on the offense to retake that. Yeah, and one thing I was trying to point out was when the scanner is down, it is a huge disadvantage for the attackers because all the defenders then have to do, they don't have to defend the site. They just have to defend that scanner because once the time runs out, they win, right? It's a point for the defenders, so all they have to do at that point is hold that scanner and it means everything. Yeah, absolutely correct. You'll see a lot of teams adjust to that once they identify where that scanner is and just hold that site. Instead of the actual site, Clev, good nade entry here on Michael as Rex starts executing. Orzo oh. swings out, picks up two. Huge from Orzo. He gets three. What? Whoa. Orzo on the tear. That's the Orzo we needed to see this oh, whole yeah. time. Yeah. Just yeah. getting involved. Orzo oh, gets it four. With 4K. He's going for the ace, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody else oh, stand down. 270 steals it from it, but Cobra Cartel getting the first point on the board. They needed that. They needed to bring this game back, and they are doing it.
Wow, kind get, of. You know, I mean, there's point. nothing else to say, but Orzo, man, what an amazing job. 4K there. Let's hear it for Orzo, folks. Let him have, hear it in his headphones. Give them Woo! that, Orzo! you know, that hype that they need over there. Let's keep it up. Let's keep it going, boys. Yeah, huge round from Orzo there. Big 4K coming in as that Rex trying to entry onto that armory site. Rex is going to make an adjustment here. They're going to send, looks like, three up into the catwalk here and then one on each side. That was really worth noting. When I was speaking to Rex, they were talking about how they love to hold the middle ground. They love to hold the high ground, whereas Cobra kind of tend to stay off those main areas. Yeah, they really only have Michael here. He's going to have to fall back from this nade as Chillstep tries to put some shots down on him. Meanwhile, Z-Link's going to pick one up. He's going to take down Basil Maz, and now it's a five on four in favor of Cobra Cartel. Cobra Cartel being really smart here and falling back now, knowing that they have the numbers advantage. Yeah, I mean, Cobra Cartel... Maybe bolstered by that, like that point. I know it's only one point, but that point can be everything you need. You're breaking the seal. You're, you're reminding yourself, guys, we know how to play this. We know how to do this. What are we doing? Yeah, they're on the board now. They must be feeling good about that one. That might be the turnaround that Conver Cartel here needs to get battling back and maybe take map number two. But I mean, look at it. Wrecked have slowed down. Okay, I mean, Cobra Cartel don't know where the, initial, like the actual strike Claire picking up Z-Link. Tia on the immediate refrag. And that's teamwork, ladies and gentlemen. That's a really good refrag there from Petia and picking that one up. But look, Rekt is right now moving up very slowly towards the armory site. Orzo has no idea that he's about to come down on the... The uh, chill step's about to come down right behind him. But he's in a, he's behind the pillar. He Orzo hits the hears him, but it doesn't matter. Chill step takes him down. Good enter on the rear of the site. Now they have full site control all around. Tarmac going to take down Michael. Now it is a two-on-three situation in favor of Rekt, and they're going to be easily able to get the scanner planted here. Yeah, and again, once again, yeah, that's the thing about Mar, right? When you're on the defender and you're on the other side of the map, it's such a stressful situation to kind of cross that abyss in the middle, especially because you just don't know if there's going to be ambushes there or not. Q70 getting quickly involved here. Going to try and find Tarmac, but unable to. Sorry, Nadix. Or uh, Tarmac. They're both in the same spot. Yeah, now coming in through the hole in the wall. Cobra Cartel is going to look to make the entry right here now. they got to retake the site. They're up against three right now. A little bit awkward position. 270 taking down Nadix, but just that swinging out. That's now it's a one on one. one. 1v1 with 270 against Chill Step right now. But he's almost or out of time. It. He's got about 14 seconds to disable. He's trying to, and he's one hand in the gun, and you love to see it. He stumbles. No! no. Tarmac takes him down. Wreck now. 3 1 up. And I know I said no, but I'm always <laughs> an underdog boy. No. He, I mean, amazing job there by. Well, we're figuring out 270 is good step. Or, or, yeah. Good okay. bet. Okay. Good bet. Good bet. Good, good bet bets. coming in as 270. Let's yeah. go, folks. Let's hear it for it's good a, bet. It's a good bet. But yeah, I mean, amazing job there by good bet. And what we're seeing there at the end is he holding the scanner, trying to defuse and get the kill at the same time as he was running out of time, but still had to try to survive that seven seconds on the, on the uh, defuse there. Yeah. Um, just pre-firing that known spot that where they come over the top, but not connecting. At some point today, we're going to see someone disable a scan, have a gun in one hand, scanner in the other, and still get a kill and be a hero. I want to see it. I want to see it anyway as we go into round five. And Rex is going to be trying to execute fast on this A site right now. Good bet holding back there, trying to take down these two coming through tunnels as Clev takes down Patia, but Z-Link's going to trade that frag out. And Clev, Z-Link, another 2K here holding sight. Nadix, the monster, Nadix. picking up a 2K just like that. No delay between the two kills. You just see him. He just processes constantly, you know? He doesn't kill, stop, reload. He gets the trigger on, takes down one, takes down another. There is no delay. There's no delay in reaction from that guy. Now it's a two-on-three situation in favor of Rek now. Cobra Cartel, Orzo and Michael still left up as Rekt has some sight control here. Yeah, and they have Tarmac's the looking for Michael. He takes him down. Now it's all up to Orzo in a 1v3 yeah, situation as the scan comes out from Nadix. Right, Orzo has an opportunity, but it's one versus three. Now, something we haven't really talked about too much is the audio in this game is so important. Listen to those footsteps. He's also slowed right down. And that's because he doesn't want to give away his position. He wants to be silent on his entry. He's working against the clock, but ultimately, if he gives away his spot, he knows he's going to be played. He goes live now. He's, because he's made the first steps, he's thrown those nades. He knows he's got nothing left to lose, and he's running out of time. So swinging out here, trying to get involved, but Nadix going to take him down. Is that 3K or 4K for Nadix? I think round? that was a 3K, but Nadix. Yeah, and a lot of that uh, right there at the end was all audio. That was everybody being patient, waiting behind walls, and using that peaker's advantage, uh, which is, like Radar said, a major factor Brown in this game. Shot. You know, getting that get audio, ready. staying slow, and listening for those footsteps and peaking at the right time. Yep. And it's a game changer, and it's something I'm, like, you know, I've played a lot of this game, I've played hundreds of hours of this game, and I still don't use the audio quite enough, you know, like, you, you, when you see these other players doing it, I, I honestly, like, how do you know, if you've got like a sixth sense, how do you keep doing that? Like, and I know you're working off the audio, but I just can't do it to the degree that some of these players do, and maybe it's because I'm old, I don't know. <laughs> it's the what headphones and kids just blowing their ears, eardrums out. Right, you think with a lack of hair, I'd be able to make up for it you know, with more, like, audible senses, because the, the hair would be in the way as they push into B-Sight, wrecked. 
take going in hard, but they've lost momentum as they lose two of the players. They take down one Copa Cartel defender, and it's a four versus three situation. They know where the strike is. You can see the rest of Copa Cartel all collapsing on B side. Basil must pick down Z Link. Now chill step up in the catwalk here as Basil Mask getting the scan down. Michael's trying to look for a frag onto Basil. Basil's gonna swing out. Shots ringing both ways. Neither player can find each other. Michael switches the pistol. Basil switches the pistol. Oh my pistols! Michael what? takes him down. Now it is a one versus two. It's all up to Nadix here against Michael and Patia. Nadix takes Nadix. down Michael. Now it is a 1v1. Cobra one. One. Cartel really needs this round down four to one right now. It doesn't matter if it's a three versus one. When Nadix is that one, you're like, oh, come on, really? This challenge. might be three of us, but we're still like, kind of at a disadvantage right now. Patia really trying to find him. He gets him. And with enough time to disable the scan as well, Cobra Cartel are going to take this one. Huge clutch there from Batia in that 1v1. That's going to be 4-2 to two God, in favor yeah, of Rex. There was nothing less to say there, but Batia just really clutching things there and, yep. and, and keeping calm and, and also listening for them footsteps. But going against Nadek 1v1, Batia coming on on top, that's that's huge. That's a huge victory right there for their team. Absolutely, absolutely. One thing we haven't mentioned wow, about Mar as well is they are zip lines. It's a big map, right? So what they've done to kind of combat the fact that it's a huge map and to cross it as a defender uh, in low time, there are zip lines. The, the thing about the zip lines, though, is they are very audible. Here, the zzzz, yep. and a lot of players wait for that. You set up, a lot of players set up kind of ambush points where they wait for those zip lines to try and take them down, but it makes a huge difference, which is a huge map. Great, great technical point. Yeah, now Rex going to be setting up for an a site take here with two in the catwalk. Tarmac's trying to get involved here on Batia, but neither player able to find each other. Tarmac's going to fall back here. Chill step now getting involved in catwalk. Wrecked might rotate here. Looks like they're positioning for it. You love it. You love it. They've got enough time to do it. They've kind of faked out an A push. You can see them slowly crossing through the center area, trying to get anyone on the rotate while they rotate themselves to the B site. And it's, it's those kind of next level plays that make a team like this, that puts them to the next level, right? It puts them from an, a gold to a, to a platinum. Yeah, but they're in a little bit of an awkward spot now. As Rex rotating off, but. Cobra Cartel is rotating back to the site that Rex rotating to as Michael takes down Chill Step here. Now there's a five on four situation. And Rex really only has mid control. Z Link finds Nadix. Z Link finds Basil. Huge 2K there from Z Link. Z Link apparently is king of 2Ks on this map. <laughs> and now it is a two on five. Tarmac finding good bet. Orzo finding Clev. And now it's all up to Tarmac. Just like that, it is a 1v4 with 40 seconds left on the clock. I mean, I know we keep talking about Nadix, but there are no. Uh, well, you know, oh, Tarmac goes one handed one on the zip line. Oh, you you gotta be to kidding see me. For I, mean, Tia. I said to be a one handed kill. I didn't think it'd be a zip line one handed kill, ladies and gentlemen. What a play. Yeah, amazing job. I mean, yeah, Rex decided to go from A, you wow, know, start in A and then rotate to B yeah, midway ready. through. And you could see it in the background. Mick, Mickel was was rotating back to A, and then you heard the footsteps went back to B, and those rotations was what key. He, he made yep. those moves yep. quickly and made his decision right off the bat, and Absolutely. it paid off big time. Absolutely. Now, I know I keep going on about Nadex the monster, but there's no weak links in Rack. They are all, all top-level players, and all of them are capable of carrying. Cobra Cartel is coming out, and they're coming out firing right now. Yep. Rack is going for a fast execute on A here, though. Nadix swinging out fast, getting the nades out, trying to work on good bank, good bank, gonna fall back here. Wait for some support. Now we're seeing the rotates come out from Cobra Cartel. Orzo's pushed through as well. They know that they're not going armory. Good bet takes down Nadix. Patia what? takes down Tarbac. Patia takes down Basil. And now it's a two on five. Excellent hold here from Cobra. Chill but step, chill bringing step, it back. The monster. The what? Clef bringing this back. Wrecked with down to just two players, and they brought it to a two versus two now. And just like that, they're going to be able to get the scan out here as Michael and Orzo are in a little bit of an awkward yeah, position. Stopped. They're going to be forced to retake into the site now. Basically, the roles are now reversed. Orzo and Michael have to get into the site. Well, Chill Step and um, the other rec member have to defend it. You know, another thing we haven't mentioned? Oh, you know what? Let's focus on the action. Clive now. Point blank. Door. He goes to the What? That's... But Michael's ready for it. Tucks in. Gets the... Gets the flanker. It's chill Step versus Michael now. Michael has bomb control here, but... Chill Step is right around the corner. Chill Step here's the scan come out. Chill Step's gonna come out. Michael's one hand on gun. Takes him out, but he's still on the deep. Pros don't fake. No! He gets oh, off yeah. Oh, one oh, second away. Oh no! And Chill Step picks Michael. No. Michael fumbles. Oh, you can he knows see it the too. He look knows in his it. face. He was half a second away from getting that point. My goodness, yeah, I mean. Man, and you could watch it. You know, when they put the scan in, you should have watched Clev. I don't know if you guys caught it on, on the screen there or not. But Clev put the scan in, and he raised his hand as high as he could right before he finished the yep. scan. That puts the scanner at arm's reach. There's no way you can tuck behind the artifact and try to hide yep. when the scan is six foot above your head. I mean, there's so many little meta plays at Rec, dude. Like, oh, little things man. like that. They make it so hard to disable that. And Mikkel was one second away from a defuse. If he would have held on to that one yeah. more second, that was it. And he knew it as well. He knew it. Yeah. 
Now so one thing, like very quickly, for the people who can see the, the, the players live on stage. Oh, sorry, Ozo interrupting me with a rude grenade, taking down Bazalmaz. Yeah, we switch sides Big here. Player coming right. back with the nade on Orzo. Yeah, great nade to nade play. It. Huge hold here by Chill Step. We've switched sides and now Cobra is now on pistol here, trying to execute their first call in this round. Z Link's going to work on Tarmac, going to take him down. Now there's a two on two situation here. Cobra does have the scanner right now, and they've got lots of time on the clock. They can go anywhere on the map right now. Yep. Worth pointing again, Cobra Cartel and now the aggressors, wrecked and now the defenders. And in my opinion, Ma, as balanced as it is, it still favors, in my opinion, favors the colonists, favors the attackers. And we saw the Cobra Cartel was still able to eke out three points on the defense. Now they're on the offense, they've got the advantage, there's two versus two situation, and they want to show that they can take a pistol round against the unstoppable pistol ears, wrecked. Let's take note that Patia with the scanner is rotating all the way over to the opposite side with no defenders now. You know, you get that scan. Oh yeah, Z-Link is, is just holding this site, like baiting out. And Wrecked have no idea no. that really the scans will be going on the B side. Yeah, Z-Link's been making Wait, noise what? on the stairway there the whole time. Uh, now I'm very confused. Oh, he is coming back. back. They might be going for a double fake here. I think they've just double faked Rex themselves, not fighting, though. though. Nadix takes down Z-Link, and now it's all up to Patia in a 1v2 situation. He's in a little bit of an awkward spot here on the wrong site. He's not going to see Chill Step in the corner. He has no idea he's there. And then Chill Step finds wow. him, and that's a 3k from Chill Step. That shot. Dude, it was, it was Chill Step being extremely quiet there because the offense, they never heard any sounds on that site. Right. And they thought it was clear, and that's why he called Patia back. He called Patia right. back on that rotation. Patia was clear on the other side with yep. an easy opportunity to put that scan in, yep. but there was no sounds coming from the offense. They gave zero audio cue off there, and Patia got called back to put the scan in. That's yep. why he ran in. Didn't Rex see patience steps. paying dividends there. Rex were Absolutely. patient, they were very, quiet, very. and that just fooled. Yep. Fooled Cobra Cutler. You're absolutely on the money with that. I was confused what I was seeing, but you, you've nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. It's such a quiet approach from Cobra Cartel right now. Sneaky snakes. Sneaky snakes. snakes pushing through the B. Yeah, they're going to be working all five through Armory Refinery here. Tarmac's going to be the first to see him in Tarmac. Nice and quiet. Sneaking around himself. Or oh, 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 swing, oh, oh, oh. shots. Tarmac takes a little bit of damage, and here comes the execute. Cobra Cartel's coming in strong. Nice Tarmac swings wow. up. Tarmac no, takes down Tarmac. Takes down. Oh, no, you'll hate to see it down. But at least he took Ozo right before he took himself out. We got another Glad. trade here. Trading all over the place into a three on three now. Michael looking for Nadex, control. finds him, nice shot from Michael yeah, there. And the scan is in. Right, ladies and gentlemen, the scan, just you know, it, when you get close enough, you turn the scanner upside down, it brings up some orbs. Orbs, you have to align in order. If you get them out of order, it resets, you have to do it all over again. So it's not just a straightforward thing, it's just holding the controller there. Drop shot coming in, doesn't find anyone, Basil Maz and Clev trying to take retake the site. They've got about 20 seconds to do so. Clev's going to find good bet now, yeah. and it's a two-on-two. Two. Still have to find two members of Cobra and defuse the artifact or interrupt the scan. But is going to swing out, take down Clev. Now it's all up to no, Basil. Has, Basil oh, takes down Michael. Michael was not ready for it. He misheard the audio. Basil running out. Wow. Oh, Basil's Patia's on the going to let the... Oh, he oh, one-hands wow. him. One hand drive. There it was, ladies and wow. gentlemen. I said it was going to happen. I didn't know it was going to happen so soon. Basil Maz with the disable and the one-handed kill. You love to see it. That was intense, man. That was super intense. And what a one-handed shot. I mean, it's hard enough to hit Brown people shot. with two hands in this game, <laughs> yeah. but the fuse and one-handed while the yeah. guy's in a drop shot motion. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason these guys are on this stage, and I'm sat here talking about it rather than playing it. <laughs> I couldn't we didn't want to say that. Yeah, but thanks, man. Thank true. you. Thank you very much for that. Now it looks like Cobra is going to set up for a little bit more mid control here as they're sending two players towards the catwalk, but still going for this refinery side. Something they probably worked on here, feel confident about it. Michael's up in the catwalk right now with uh, Z Link down lower, watching outside that container area outside the A site. Slow execute here from Cobra. They're just hanging out, they're trying to bait the utility right now. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, one thing to point out. Whenever the camera shows the players on stage, and for anyone watching live, you can see that on the front they've got these li lit visors. When those visors go dark, it means they're dead. So you can actually see who's alive and dead on the stage via the visors. So you see on the right now, they're all green. Just watch. The moment any one of them dies, that will go dark. You'll know that player is out. Yeah, we're seeing a real slow approach here from Orzo and Fatia, and this is the audio cues that we keep talking about. You know, yeah. Tarmac has no idea there's anybody here. You know, he may have heard a footstep, he may have heard a little bit of gun clatter, but he has no idea how many people are here. Yeah. And this is what's going to give him that movement. Orzo making move, or some movements now going to give off the audio. Yeah, now we're seeing, starting to see some rotates out here from Rack as Nadix is using the back zip line now. Michael's heading towards the A site now, probably going to find Basil up in that catwalk area. 
Yeah, we've got a big rotation coming in here now. They, they, they fake the one side. They're moving all across the other. They're drawing in the defense. Yeah, they're in a little bit of an awkward position now. Everybody's sort of in the middle of the map here, but no sight on, no control on A site uh, right now. But look Rack. at this, though. We've got a little bit of a cheeky cross, a little cheeky, cheeky kind of That's rotate. Play. From the puck holder through to A site, they were doing a B side attack and wrecked are unsure now. They're, where is this attack coming from? Battle Mass tags on Mikkel and it's all down to two players now on Cobra Cartel. Patia and Orzo. Patia with the puck. Now wrecked are closing down on A site, but they're not giving up B site completely. Yeah, it's a four on two situation right here with limited time left on the clock. We only got five seconds. Patia's not going to be able to get the scanner set up and looks like Cobra Cartel's going to run out of time here. No time left for Orzo as he dies to Nadix after the round. Wow. And now Rekt is one point away from taking Five match points. number one and going to the finals. Cobra Cartel on the edge right now. They've been playing amazing, but Rekt have been playing slightly better. Cobra Cartel wow, on start. the edge of the abyss. Yeah. Lamp, what do they do? Uh, um, Cobra Cartel need a better communication on that one. They, the original plan was good. That they started off slow, they took over, and they faked that site. But when they rotated, Patia got way ahead of the group. He had the yep. scanner, but he had no backup. So if he got that scan in, uh, Orzo was the other member still coming through mid and not, not around to play. I mean, Cobra Cartel, again, they're on the edge of going out right now, ladies and gentlemen. They're playing for that first position, not playing for third, they're not playing for second, they're playing for first, and they're about to go out of the competition, out of the uh, striking range of that $35,000. Um, prize pool and wrecked no it wrecked a hungry wrecked want to go to the end and they are showing the skill They still haven't lost that pistol round oh, look at the angle there from chill step as he trades with good bank Clef's gonna take down Z link a lot Oh, Clef's gonna grab the as well Michael's right there though to take him down But still it's a two on three now Cobra cartel is down numbers here in a must win round if they want to compete in the finals here But look at Rex lineup. They don't give up any map control. They're still one 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 across the map They aren't panicking. They aren't crashing to either side. They're playing the game. They're playing it slow They've got points to spare and they're playing intelligent Trading shots out there with Michael Tarmac now Here's the audio. He wants to shut down anyone Tarmac's on the flank. Orzo has <laughs> to watch fire. out here. As Orzo swings out, finds Tarmac. Yep. He, nice he read there. Here's the audio. Here's the audio. Comes out firing. Now Basil trying to cut through hole in the wall. They're looking at each other through the glass. Reminder, you can't shoot through that glass. It is not bulletproof. It's a little bit awkward here for Michael and, and Basil as they say hi to each other. Exchange some shots here. Basil's yep. going to fall back, wait but, for his teammate as you see that he is rotating through the middle of the map. Scan's going out. Scan's going out. Started. There it is. 45 seconds now, ladies and gentlemen. There might have been 20 seconds left on the clock, but now it's 40 seconds left as the scan goes in. And now the the attackers become the defenders. Cobra Cartel doing everything they can to stay in this. Orzo and Michael, the only hope for them to stay one more round. Basilmas takes down Orzo and it's a two versus one. They come out firing, looking for that last player, looking for that taste of victory, looking to take map number two. And here comes the interrupt. Nadix on the site. Michael is not going to be able to see him from his angle. He has to get involved here. Come on, Michael. And then Basil finds him. And that's going to be map number one. Let's hear it for Rick, ladies and gentlemen. They Rick. take match number one. Yeah, amazing job. I mean, simply just amazing. I mean, we've seen Rex do this over and over throughout the playoffs and throughout the online seating, and they're just proving, you know, their talent and their ability to hit shots, man. It's in good communication. Let's give it up for Rex, boys. Let's give it up for Cobra Cartel as well. They put up an amazing match, ladies and gentlemen. Cobra Cartel! Yeah, well played by everybody here. Cobra Cartel just falling a little bit short, but they're still going to be competing for third place and $5,000 in match number three. Wrecked will be moving on to the final match for paying for the top prize, number one, $20,000. Oh, what an opening match. I mean, listen, we knew Wrecked were the favorite. We knew Cumber Cartel were the underdogs, but I mean, Wrecked showed what they're capable of. They really they did. did. Yeah, and it wasn't just one player. You know, we talked about Nadix, talked about Clev, but it was, everybody really participated in that. There was nobody really struggling on the kill-death ratios. Uh, just really good top talent coming through. Yeah, hopefully we're gonna see uh, we're gonna see Valley now come and talk to the winning team. I can see him over there. He's hungry to talk to them. Chill step, obviously eager to uh, discuss the victory. Meanwhile, man, that is just a taste of what's to come. I mean, we've got Vortex versus Royal Strive, which arguably two more equal teams, right? They are, you know, we, again, we saw the underdog versus the favorites. Next, we're gonna see the two floaters, right? We're gonna see Vortex, who are a very powerful team versus Royal Strife or another I'm real really, powerful team. I'm extremely hyped for this next matchup as well. Yep. I mean, this yeah. is this next matchup is, you know, your two and your three. It's, it's, I mean, either one of these teams could go number one. Yep. And they were watching that match, man. You know they were making notes. They were making notes on every single thing Wreck did because they want to be able to counterattack, counteract, and take those points. Well, anyway, I think we're ready to cut to uh, Veli right now, who's got Natix on stage. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and make some noise for Natix and Wreck.
All right, Nadix, you're coming here from Venezuela here at a professional land for Vail. $35,000 up for grabs for the prize pool. And you guys just dominated the first series of the day. How does it feel to play on land? Pretty surreal. Like, I'm so in shock that this is happening, basically. And I'm just so grateful for everyone here, my family, my friends, my teammates, everybody. So, yeah, I'm pretty freaking excited to be here. All right, so coming up next, you're going to be playing in the grand finals. All right, being on this main stage, you got a little bit of nerves going through you, or are you cooler than the other side of the pillow right now? I'm pretty, I'm pretty chill right now, but that is one side on me. It's just, just a little bit nervous, but I'm pretty confident. Hey, you know what? Your gameplay shows how confident you are. Congratulations. Can't wait to see you on the stage next time. Let's send this back over to the analyst desk. Let's go ahead and get hyped. So, Lampy, baby, what was that? That was amazing as well, that was. We saw what we always seen in Wreck in the last few weeks, month or so. Um, Wreck didn't really do anything crazy out there. They were just playing their game. They played what they know. Um, it, was, it was the same types of setups like we saw on Kitty. We saw Natix on the B side. We saw Clev in the middle. We saw Chill Step and him on the A side. Um, that's the same kind of setup we saw going through all the way through the playoffs in the seating. And really nothing. They don't need to change anything. That's it's what they working. were saying yesterday. It's working. In so. the interviews, they're like, what are we doing wrong? Nothing. nothing. What yep. are we going to change? Probably nothing. Unless things don't start working for us, we don't need to change it up. What we're doing is working. We're getting those points. We're getting those kills. We're getting the maps. Yeah. No, I mean, we saw it on Mar. They played Mar the exact same way that we saw before, mm -hmm. right? The two in the catwalk and the three to the sites. Yep. They didn't change anything. And their patience. Like, they didn't rotate quickly. You know, even though there was an action going on on one of the sites, the map is large. It's an extremely large map, and it takes a lot of time to rotate. So people get nervous. Players get nervous, and they want to move across to, because they're afraid they're going to yep. mess up. Yep. But they were calm. They were collective. They didn't rotate until they absolutely needed to. And I think that communication probably came through the headsets. No, was it that Cobra Cartel were better on Ma? Or was it the Wrecked were a better team on Kitty? Which was it? Was it, was it Cobra Cartel better on one? I think. Or think, Wrecked less good on one? I mean, they still won by a fair margin, but. I think Cobra Cartel's style just played better on Ma. They were able to take their time and rotate through. Yeah. Um, what do yeah. you think? Well, I think that that was a fantastic match, and that was match number one, which was powered by Live. Right? Once again, if you don't know what Live is, Live is a tool for content creators in VR to do all kinds of cool stuff, to make cool videos, to do cool streaming stuff. Tons of first-party integrations with a ton of games. And I think right now we're going to roll into a little bit of a, uh, a video feed about that. Oh, awesome. Okay. Fair enough. Here we go. Ah, oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a beautiful map. Dodge, you can't pass me. Bring up scum. You surprised me. Surprised you? I'm impressed you arrived so quickly. Why? You got somewhere to be, princess? <laughs> I did have somewhere to be. I'll blow your fucking brains on the wall. Out of the ghost. What about him? Would you like to meet him? Stock up. What the fuck have you done? Rest in backup. We need everyone here protecting the FOB. Now! What the fuck is going on? Bring them! All right, ladies and gentlemen, are you loving your time here right now? Let's go ahead and make some noise. We got match number two. Underway very soon. We just got off of a phenomenal series. Wrecked lived up to their name and they dominated Crowbar Cartel in a big 2 0 win. But coming up right now, it's my pleasure to announce to the main stage, let's bring out Vortex. And now it is a three on four. Samachi grabbing Clem. Are they going to be ready for Samachi? Little Troll comes out live. They're not ready for him. He gets both of them. Ooh, play from that guy. Walker looking for that strike. But Thief on a long line. Sell my P. Also taken by Thief. That position <laughs> from Thief. Paying off dividends. Frig. Favor now 3 3. Frig picking up Quark's block. Of scan going in from Esco 27. Frig looking for that line. The scan comes in. Frig's going to punish him though. 
Frig finds another one. Frig on fire right now. Yellow hat. Sets Yellow hat up for a great engage. They're not ready for him. He steps out, gets two. C. Coach pushing B side. Now C comes out firing. Takes down soldiers. Takes down shreds. Takes down coach. Let's team. put our hands together for Vortex as they come to the stage, ladies and gentlemen. Samachi, always bringing me a smile for that hat. All right, all Have right. Been. Ladies and gentlemen, right here, my man, Thief. Hey, How's it going today? Pretty good. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing well, man, here at the MVM. It's a lot of fun. By any chance, did you just catch that first series today? Dude, it was great. All right, so my question to you is, are you guys looking to dominate the same way Rec did or even better? Man, that's the plan, but they're a great team, so we'll see how it goes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking forward to an amazing matchup right now. Now let's bring out Royal Strive. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and have a round of applause for Royal Strive as they take the main stage. Woo! Here in presence of royalty, ladies and gentlemen. One of the top four teams in the road to be out here in Miami today with that $35,000 prize pool. They're looking to go big in the first matchup of the day. All right, Cooley, Cooley, let me get you for just a second. I know you're running around. I know you're excited to get the game in right now, but I have to ask you, how are you nervous going into this matchup against some great opponents over there? Honestly, um, the adrenaline's kicked in, right? I'm nervous, but hopefully that acts in a good way. We'll get the end. You're going to be all right now. You guys are the only European team here in this event right now. My man, there we go. We got some noise out there. Woo! I have to ask you. Are you going to put on for your region right now? We're going to get the dub for Europe. Let's go. Woo. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time. Let's get this match underway. Let's send it right over to the analyst desk. All right, we were already talking about it. Royal Strive, heck of a team. Vortex, known dominators. I mean, there is a lot on the line here. and We've got two great teams to show us what they're capable of. Yeah, yeah. super exciting match that we have coming up here for match number two, which is... Um, sponsored by Smash Drums. Um, Lampy, what do you think we can expect out of this match? Obviously, these two teams have played each other twice before, if I think. Yeah, right? I, I think we're going to see quite the matchup. It's going to be quite an equal matchup as well. I mean, their, their stats are not identical, but we're, we're seeing a lot of the same stuff. We got number two and number three. Um, we got the fact that, you know, Vortex, you know, coming here to land, all the teams had to switch, you know, all their headsets. Everybody was went to indexes, right? You know, we went indexes across the board for everybody. Vortex is the only team that were strictly indexed beforehand. So they do possibly have a slight advantage coming into that. But we sent out indexes to every, every member of the finals, you know, a good three weeks advance, you know, for everybody to get used to it. But that could show a little bit of favoritism, you know, not favoritism, but a little bit of a confidence in their side as well. Um, you know, 
Royal Strive being a team that's been together for, oh man, I think it's been like four years or something like that, and they're coming through with many championships. They're, they're royal, they're, they have two teams coming in together. They're, they're Strive from contractors and they're royalty and from Pavlov, and you know, they understand the big stage is all I'm trying to get at here. They have the championships behind them from both sides. They, they understand what it takes to be uh, on the stage and hold up against a team like Vortex. Yeah, no, sure. no lack of confidence. No lack of Absolutely confidence not. from either teams. I mean, they're both. When I spoke to them, I was like, "Hey, are you going to take? Uh, you know, when I spoke to Royal Strife, are you going to take Vortex? Yeah, heck yeah, no, no doubt about it. When I spoke to Vortex, you can take Royal Strife. Heck yeah, no doubt about it. So these are two very confident teams. And it's worth noting, the only times we've seen them face each other sooner. Right. And when I spoke to Royal Strive, least favorite map. That's the map they're least good on. So they've been facing Vortex on a Here's map that time. Vortex are very renowned for being very good at yeah. against Royal Strive, who claim. It isn't one of the strong maps. So we're going to see that as a decider if they each take a map. So I think Royal Strife, even though they're kind of the underdogs going into this, the two and zero in previous uh, you know matchups, I think we're in for a shock. And also, they're playing on a stage with zero latency. You know, there is this is you know they're not playing the EU to US. There's no latency for either team. This is the most equal stage it could possibly be, right. and I think these guys are hungry for it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, no doubt about it. Um, the number two and number three going at it, it, it I'm excited. <laughs> this is going to be a back and forth battle, I guarantee. Yeah, absolutely. It's not, it's not I mean, both it. these teams are, are really, really, really strong teams. This should be an absolute slugfest. And like you said, they've never played PD against each other. They've never played Mark. I'm sure they have maybe in a scrim or two, but never on a match. And certainly not on a stage like this today. Um, so it's super, super exciting. Yeah, I mean, you know, look at both these teams. You look at uh, Vortex, they're such characters. I mean, again, Sumachi, if you, you know, if you catch him on camera, he's got those great ears. If you ever see him casting, he's always casting with a great avatar, again, probably powered by Liv. Um, and you look at Yellow Hat, first thing I saw, right? I see a guy walk past with a yellow hat. Oh, yellow hat. Oh, yellow hat. He's like, yeah, it's me. I was like, oh, okay, a bit on the nose, but I gotta respect that. That's, uh, you know, no, I don't have a radar on my head, but I'm thinking about it. Um, looking at the stats, when I was looking at the uh, talking to both teams, um, Vortex were telling me their favorite map uh, is Kitty, right? Okay, cool. And when I talked to Royal Strife, they said Ma. And those are the first two maps we're gonna see, right? So I think we're in for a heck of a match. I really, I honestly, I want to see Royal Strive take Mar, and I want to see Vortex take Kitty, and I want this to go to Sooner, even if you know it, it puts Royal Strive on a, on, a, on a defensive and being the EU guy here. I don't know. I know. Yeah, I, your I, your, your yeah. vote don't count. I'm rooting. My vote, vote doesn't count. count. No, it doesn't count. Well, you're showing favoritism. Miami, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and the stats are showing. You know, especially when we get into round number one, which is going to be that pistol round. It's no eco, right? So we're, we're doing a pistol. It doesn't matter what we, you know. There's no eco. So pistol round. You know, both teams going through the playoffs and through the online seating, you know, 12 and 13 wins out of 18. Mm. So they're right there neck and neck with each other. There's, there's no dominant favorite, you know, coming into this in that first round and that pistol round. And then, you know, throughout the hours that they have in Vail as well, you know, we're looking at both of these teams having nowhere, nobody's over 240 hours on, on either side. So, right. you know, 100 to 200 hours, pretty average on the team. You yeah. know, we're, like we didn't see in, or like we've seen in Rec, you know, with Clev and with Natix over 400, over 800 hours. Now we're very equal here once again between these two teams on the 100 to 200 hours. Oh, yeah. And I was speaking to both teams, right? We're playing on a beautiful stage, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, come on, it looks amazing. But it's a bit high, um, perfectly safe. I mean, we've even got leaves here to cushion someone's fall if they, they, they fall off. Yeah, they had dropping the rainforest. But cr uh, see, we can see on the corner, the cracker, on the corner, yeah, he's the most likely. The teams, all the teams voted him most likely to fall off the stage. Apparently, he's a very fumbly player, right? And they put him on the edge. Very I energetic. Kinda, I kind of feel like they want him to fall off the stage. <laughs> I, and and, and I, I may have slipped them some money to try and make it happen. He's a practiced <laughs> faller. He's practiced many times. He's a stuntman. If you do see him fall off, don't try it at home. Um, he knows right. what he's doing. He's a professional. Yeah, yeah. He'll be fine. Don't worry about Stake, him. It's he'll be fine. He's shots to the next level, right? Yeah. <laughs> really drop shot. Get drop below shot. the floor for the drop shot. We love to see that. Oh, absolutely. A um, few other uh, tidbits. Both of these teams, when I say, what's your biggest strength? They say adaptability, adaptability, adaptability. Both teams are keying that as the big strong point. The ability to adapt to the situation and evolve on the fly, a defense or an attack, um, th to bring themselves back into it. Yeah, uh, I think you have to because, you know, the fact that the, you know, the maps have two artifacts, right? So you, you don't know whether it's, you know, you're not just protecting one side of the map. You're not protecting over and over the same side. It changes and you've got to protect both sides and not the middle as well. So the adaptability is a huge factor, yeah. um, especially going into Mar as we've realized how big and how large that map is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
Also, you know, one thing to point out, which is interesting, is that we see that everyone on stage is using the excellent uh, Valve uh, Index headset. Um, now, Royal Strive, up until about a month ago, not one of those players owned that headset. So they've been playing on a different headset, different controllers being the most important uh, yeah. aspect there. That could come into play here. Yep. I mean, yep. you're used to holding a certain way. Right. It might seem like a little thing, but it's a huge deal in virtual reality. I mean, that is how you translate your actions into the game yep. with these controllers. So <laughs> and the index controllers could not be more different to any other controller out there, in my opinion. Okay, I think the closest match would be uh, Matt H, who does use an index, but he uses Vive Wands, right? So right. Um, other than that, I mean, these players have been practicing and putting the hours in on the headset, but there is definitely an adjustment period there. When we spoke to them yesterday, they were feeling, you know, 75, 80% kind of confident. Um, so, you know, you mix in the stage and the kind of the atmosphere here, it'll be really interesting to see how they did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've, they've, they've had time. They were sent indexes, right? They were sent right. indexes to get them up to speed. I mean, we want this to be as fair a playing field as, as possible. IVRL, Axe Labs did everything in the power to make sure that that was the case. Absolutely. And, you know. Yeah, that's that's huge. I mean, you know, giving them enough time to to get used, like you said, the controllers. The controllers are the biggest thing. The headset, everybody, you know, there's very little difference between the headsets and actual visuality of right. it. You know, right? So it's it's all about the controllers and the feel and your speed. And you know, when you go to the index controllers, it it's it's watching every finger. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. You know, when I come, I came from the Quest and I tried the indexes. The Quest, you know, was a a grip button yeah. and there's a trigger button so yep. you are you know you got two but the index is you only have one which is the trigger but it it works the grip off all your fingers uh, which is really good like you know you love it when a game makes full use of it and, and uh you know veil does and it's really important to note there's one finger in particular on both hand that i see a lot of players uh use at me um when uh, <laughs> after they 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 defeat me after they kill me yeah um, they, they let you know how they feel yeah they get the thumbs up right yeah absolutely that's what, they put what the what thumbs up yeah. well done it's well their played middle thumb. It's yeah. their middle <laughs> no sir that's inappropriate <laughs> that is inappropriate anyway i believe we have a uh, artifact uh, explainer which is going to explain the game mode i did explain it myself before but i didn't use pretty graphics so uh, it would be uh, ace to see that on the stage on these beautiful screens and streamed to you people at home Kind of visually explaining the artifact game mode. Don't you think? Yeah, we'll get that explainer going before we get into match number two, which once again is brought to you by Smash Drums. Yep. Artifact, five versus five, all about that scan. Two artifacts, one puck, the colonists with the puck versus the Rayab players, the defenders who've got to defend either one of the artifacts. They don't have to defend both. But if you only defend one, you're opening yourself up to an attack on the other, obviously. So you're trying to hold both, which obviously puts the defenders on a tactical disadvantage because they have to play the entire map and play map control, whereas the colonists can choose just one side to attack. Of course, the defenders have the advantage of being able to set up those defenses, set up those ambushes, and you know, feed the colonists into the grinder. So right. that's how it always balances out, right? I mean, it sounds really one-sided. Oh, yeah, colonists only have to go one way. But that means the defenders can sit back and let the enemies come to them. The right. other thing to really point out is a two minute round, right? That is two minutes, doesn't, it sounds like a lot. When you're playing colonists and you're pushing up, you're pushing up, you look at the time, you've got 30 seconds left, yeah. right? When you start making those slow plays, you, yeah. you really run out of time quickly and you look down and you, know, you look at the time and oh, we've only got one minute left, right? And now, then you have no time to rotate out. At that point, you commit to a site. You're stuck with the site. You have to go to it. You don't have time to play around anymore. But the challenge is, especially on Kiti, right, with all those nades and stuff like that, if you go too fast, you get caught by nades. <laughs> so it's a, it's a balancing act of where you want to be with yep. using that two minutes effectively, but not getting yourself into too many situations where you run out of time. Yep. Yeah. You, you know one of the things I love most about Veil, vale, like how the take on this double site attack is, right? It's that puck. It's not just a case of just getting that, you know, the scan in and chasing up the marbles. We saw Rekt do it really well, right? It's about where you place that puck right. at the end. It doesn't sound like much, but if, I, if they place it like this, right, and I'm the guy, you can't see it, if you can see it, yes, I'm on camera, brilliant. If I place the puck here, right, and it's floating there, and, right, what, what, how do they do to defend? All the defenders have to do is see the, you know, the puck. So if they see a hand reaching up, like the guy could be 100% behind cover. If that hand reaches up to disable, all they have to do is shoot that hand and they'll get the kill. Right. So that, you know, that's, that's the little meta plays that people are doing. You know, they're setting up the puck in locations that make it easier for them to stop the disable. Not necessarily kill the player, but stop that disable. And that's what I love about Veil. Vale. They put thought into it. It's a graphical, like, you know, really nice thing to look at. But also, the, it adds to the competitive play. 
Yeah, and like you mentioned, the location of the scanner after it is scanned is, is key because on both of the sites, they're very cluttered. You know, there's, there's different angles, there's different holes that can be shot at. You know, if you, if you focus on one side, you know, like you, you're coming through Skate Park on Keedy, um, through the cave, there's an angle into the artifact from one side. You can see part of it, you know. Right. So, you know, thinking about where you put that scan in is huge because it could be completely undercover where, you know, as the offense comes in and they try to defuse and you retake it back, um, or the defense comes in to refuse, and you try to retake it back and kill that defender. If he's hiding behind cover, it's harder yeah. to kill him. Yeah, you're giving them advantage. Exactly. So it's yeah. those little meta plays. It, it, it doesn't sound like much, but it can decide the entire journey, the entire like path a match takes. Yeah, yeah those, those can definitely be huge. I think we're getting pretty close to being into match number two. Once again, match number two is brought to you by Smash Drums. It's actually a, it's kind of like rock band for like drums. I don't know how else to explain it, but it's an epic drumming arcade VA game. It, VR game. It is available on Quest. They've got a really, really, really cool update coming out this fall. I was actually watching someone play it on these screens uh, yesterday. Looks pretty good. I'm probably going to have to pick it up myself. Yeah. I yeah. think we're going to get a show of that today, aren't we? I believe so. It's going to, yeah. Really? I think so. Awesome. I think that's what that was for. I was watching oh, some stuff. They don't tell me yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. I can't <laughs> we'll wait. We'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah. Nice. Nice. I'm super psyched for this match, guys. I mean, this is, we, we are, I mean, we've already seen Rekt play. We know they're through. We know potentially seeing, well, we've already seen one of the finalists. So they're through to the final. Mm -hmm. We are seeing potentially one of the winners of the day here. Either of these teams have the capability to take on Rekt in that final. Right. Um, it is, it is going to be the best of the best. Obviously, right now we've got potentially the best of the best playing already. This is a final quality match we're getting as match two, and that's amazing. Yeah, one of these teams is going to be going and fighting for 5,000 as the third place, and the other team is going to be going to the final. So you're looking at one of our finalist teams yet, but we don't know who it's going to be. Is it going to be Vortex? Is it going to be Roll Strive? We'll find out soon enough. Absolutely. Lamp. Yeah, I mean, I, you know what I'm most excited about is trying is going to see if Cracker can hold up to his stats. You think? Tell me about his stats. Cracker is the only player so far in all of the playoffs in the online seating who is over two on the KD on the ratio. Two, two point. I think he's at two point one on the KD wow, ratio. Shot. Right. So, so to break that down for you know the viewers and stuff, that means basically he's he's always consistently killing twice, more than he gets killed. Yeah, by he's killing twice 100%. as much. As we go now into, oh. Uh, technical difficulty, I guess. The defending team are eliminating themselves, which <laughs> I don't think is a confidence move. I don't think they're being that uh, cocky about maybe it. Maybe they are that arrogant. They're really feeling good going into it right away with a three on five. Don't believe that's the case, though, as a uh, Vortex is there. So this is some kind of technical issue going on here. Yep. So we'll cut out of the game now for a little bit and, and go back to... <laughs> and it cuts the Vortex, and they are hungry to start. I see Thief there. He's disappointed. He was ready to go. He was on his momentum, and he's like, oh, come on, guys. I'm so eager to put some bullets into Royal Stride players. Yeah, you finally get on that stage, and I mean, you're nervous already, right? Yep. You, you, your adrenaline's pumping, and you don't want to ruin that. You want to no, get in no. there. You want to get going. Um, the longer they're on there, you know, obviously, the more... Uh, you know, the more injury is going to be wasted out. Yeah. And the key thing about virtual reality, I keep going on about the, you know, the physicality, you know, the aiming, the reloading, the grenades. But when they're on the stage, right, I kept, like, so I was, these, this is the first time that most of these guys have ever been doing this live on stage. Yeah. I was trying to, like, coach them, right? When you get on that stage, you're going to be nervous. You know what you're playing for. You're playing in front of a live crowd. You're being televised. Um, you know, you got your, your jerseys on. But forget about that. Yeah. The moment you put that helmet on, you're yeah. in virtual reality. And that's the great thing about virtual reality. You're in that reality. Focus on that. Play that game. Yep. Take yourself away from the stage. Just remember, you're playing a game you know with your teammates in virtual reality. Forget about the outside world. You've got br brilliant, like, noise-canceling headphones yep. on. Focus on the game. Yeah, and that, that, that's a huge factor is when, like you said, when you put that headset on, you're on a different world, right? You can't, hear this, you can't hear the crowd as much, right? You can't hear what's going on. It's like you put yourself back in your own home in that comfort level, and that's what their mindset has to get to. Um, I know last night when we got in here and we were doing some tech issues and we were trading stuff out, we were, I get in, the state, you know, I get in there and instantly I forget that I'm here on yep. in land. Yeah, I mean, that's the big sell in virtual reality is the immersiveness, right? right. So on a stage like this with, with those noise-canceling headphones with the index in front of you, you can't see the crowd. You have no idea. It's easy to put yourself in a different place, right? Yeah. Zuck, you were playing in this tournament, right? You played in this tournament. What was your team? Dark Matter. Right. And how did they do? Uh, we lost to those guys. Oh, which they? Oh, they these guys up here? Oh, literally those guys. Yeah. 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 You they, lost they, they beat us. They beat oh, us. Oh, you didn't mention that. I don't know why you didn't mention that. It's almost like you were embarrassed or maybe... He really bit. wanted to they be up here us. I mean, he why would I talk about that? He wanted to be up here. 
Okay, what was just just remind us, what was the point uh, what was the point differential between both teams? Uh, they beat us 22-9. 22-9, ladies and gentlemen. Zuck. Mm. Played well though, I gotta give it to you. I, you know. <laughs> we appreciate you losing so you could join us here. Let's hear it for Doc Matter. They didn't make it here, but Zuck is. <laughs> <laughs> A tepid, yeah. round of, a tepid round of applause for the... Uh, what team did you play? I don't want to talk about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> are they here? Uh, no. Yes, right. they are in spirit. I'm here. Nice. Lonely nice. Viper's here. A couple of them are physically here. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Right. Okay, it we are like into it now, in ladies and gentlemen. Vortex versus Royal Strive. Map number one. We're going to see one of the finalists coming out of this. All right, it's a two-on-three situation, I guess. Uh... Wow, okay, so we are very heavily into it. It is uh, Scan is in, two-on-three situation. Vortex on defense, Royal Strive have got the Scan in. Oh no, Frick dropped his gun! And it's taken down immediately by Longwind. Longwind taken down by Yellow Hat. Yellow Hat taking down two, and his one versus one now as he's going in for the disable. But we still have... Nero was the last guy and he's taken down! By Yellow Hat on the 3K pistol round, gonna have time to disable. What an end to a match we barely saw. Interrupted. Yeah, what a clutch there. I mean, Yellow Hat with a dab at the end, folks. Give it up for Yellow Hat on that clutch. I mean, great pistol round for Vortex as, yeah. you know, he got, oh, it was a two piece there at the end. 3K, three he got three a 3K. Three yeah. He was one versus end. three and brought it Dang. home. I mean, it's that kind of play. It's the individual heroes. You've got a great team, but you still need individual heroes. Even at this level, you have to have the heroes. And, and that Yellow Hat was the hero. Yeah, that the round, Yellow had four kills total. What? What? Yeah. Really? Wow, 4K clutch through. Yellow Hat carrying his team into the opening round on Kitty. Vortex versus Royal Strive. Yeah, it looks like Royal Strive here are going to be setting up for a slow B push. All five in lower B here right now, waiting for nades. Not seeing anything right now, but they're burning valuable seconds off the clock. We talked about this before. You have to balance the two minutes in slow play and not get caught by too many nades. And here comes the execute now. They're moving up. No utility out yet. Well, watch. They went in slow and quiet. Now they're going live. Nades, utilities, aggression. Watch for the counter nades here from Vortex, though, as we see them ringing out left, right, and center. They're gonna wow, Matt H dodging Mad two H. nades. Get taken down by bullets, though, by Thief. He takes down Matt H. Samachi takes down Cool A9. Crackers taking down Yellow Hat and Thief taking down Crackers, and now it is a two on four situation in favor wow. of Vortex. Nice shot there from Lon Wick, but Cracker J is going to take down Lon, and now it's all up to Nero. We've seen him in these situations before in 1v3s, and he's clutched before, but never on this kind of stage. Let's see what he can do. Nero is a cracked player, though. He's very good at this game. When he gets going, he is that guy who can do a one versus three clutch. You know, we've seen him do it before in multiple matches where it's just on Nero's shoulders at this level, and we've seen him bring it back against all odds. He's only a little bit of health, though. He has probably, what, 10% health right now, so he's in a challenging position and doesn't have the scanner. Not only does he have to take down three members of Vortex, he has to find the scanner, and he's got no health to do it as he goes to work there on v site and Frig's going to find him and take him down, and that's going to be another round in favor of Vortex. 2 nothing right now, out early with a lead. Yeah, great defense. Amazing defense there as they, they crashed just perfectly, and they surrounded... Uh, you know, the, the, the skate Roush park there. Uh, they knew the scanner was down in cave, and all they had to do was wait patiently for, you know, for Nero to come and try to uh, pick up that scanner, and just great protection overall. Again, really good point. You know, once that scanner is down, it, for the defenders, if they identify it, it doesn't become a game about defending the artifact. It can, becomes a game about defending that the scanner, scanner, because yes. they, you know, if the attackers don't have the scanner, they can't do anything apart from look for those picks, and you're making them have to play into your defense again, and you get to choose where that defense is. We've got another slow setup here from Royal Strive as they have three working towards a one in middle and one in lower skate park here. Crackers throwing a little bit of utility, trying to sell a little bit of fake. But look at the minimap, not really biting much from Vortex's side as one is rotating out of eight right now into the middle area. So, so much is going to find Crackers. But we've got a quiet Matt H in the center, holding that center ground, hoping he's going to catch someone on a rotate once they go live on their attack path to A. But you know, Royal Strive giving it away the game now. They've got the utility out. They trade one out. Nero taken down. Cooley taking down Yellow Hat immediately in a refrag. And we've got Vortex crashing back in on the defense. It's two versus two. Three versus one, sorry, now in Vortex's favor and on Cooley Nine's shoulders to try and bring this back for Royal Strive. Two points down already. Yeah, Cooley's in a little bit of trouble here. Does not have the scanner. Once again, they've dropped the scanner here on the outside of long A as he's working his way around, trying to find a pick in the middle here, but Vortex isn't overexposing. They must know that they have scanner control right now, and time is ticking down. Only 35 seconds left on the clock here. Schoolie's going to be trying to rotate through middle here. Oh, Samachi's Samachi on the out, wide line, though. Down. 
We saw him coming. We know. Cooley might have heard him, but you've got two different sets of stairs, and the audio, as good as it is, it's hard to identify which two of those sets of stairs is coming. He chose one, so much came down from the other. Vortex with a very, very patient defense there. No rotations. They still kept one guy on, on, B, on the uh, B site while the attack was on the A. They kept one guy in mid who was Smachi, and it, it really paid off because that rotation that they needed to come through mid and try to go through arches, and Sumachi was there to shut it down. Yeah, absolutely. Now it looks like Royal Strive kind of fig trying to figure out what do we do different right now. We are 3-0 down against Vortex, and nothing we're doing is working. How do we change this up? So... I mean, they're doing another quiet push. They seem to very much like these stealthy pushes on Kitty. You see them early nades, early utility. Not really coming out. Nade taking down Crackers from long range. Matt H finding some action in the middle ground, though. Very important pack pickup. Find the grenade came out and has stalled the push for Royal Strive. But Matt H now holds the middle ground, and that's ever so important on a map like Kitty. Yeah, now we're in a four on four, a minute 10 left on the clock here. Matt H, yeah, like you said, has some mid control here, but really they don't have any site controls. Royal Strive is slowly working up to B site, but Vortex is kind of making a read here. They're rotating over a little bit now towards the B site. Possibly Royal Strive going to rotate here. Matt H going to work down the alley position. They're in a little bit of an awkward spot right now. They don't really have any map control. They're just stuck in middle trying to rotate around. But they've got 50 seconds left on the clock, and the defenders, you know, they, they aren't falling for any traps. They think the attack's coming to B, but we have a slow rotate coming through the center ground, which is shut down by Yellow Hat, immediately taken down Matt H's head. Yeah, Yellow Hat has a really good angle there, and Kool-Aid and I knows that he's going to fall back. He's not going to deal with Yellow there. And now they're worried about getting flanked. They're stuck in the middle. They've got 30 seconds left on the clock. They still have the puck, but they're down on numbers, down on time. And they now have to re-rotate back, and the flank comes through the middle, and they weren't ready for it. Thief picks up one, taken down by Cooley 9, but they should have been watching their back. Cooley 9 now looking for more. It's all on Cooley 9's shoulders. Again, oh, actually, no, Lundwick still alive with the puck, but taken down by Cracker J, and he takes them both down, bringing Matt Point 4 to Vortex. Yeah, I mean, wow, Cracker's there with a two-piece kill right at the end there. Amazing job, but, I mean, offensively, uh, Royal Strive, what I'm seeing here, is struggling to decide where they want to go. Rock like like, like you guys mentioned, that they were just stuck in the middle. They were trying to, oh, let's go A. No, it's not working. Let's go B. Yep. And you sit there, you're just going to have to commit. You only got two minutes for the full round. You got to make that commitment. Absolutely. And you got to push. Absolutely. And what we saw then was perfect timing from Cracker J, because at the end of the day, the flank attack came in. So they were looking behind them, worried. Meanwhile, he pushes in straight on top of them, takes him down. Look at this five-man aggressive push through B now. There is no subtly. Subtly has gone out the door. They've tried the subtle approach. Now they're going to try the full-on aggressive approach. And Vortex aren't responding quickly enough. They could run off this momentum right now. Royal Strife could really do some damage. Yeah, when in doubt, rush B. It's always the fallback strategy here, but they're smoked off. They're not able to get in through here. Good. Vortex with some good defensive utility. Look at those smokes preventing them from executing. Now here come 404 Royal Strive members coming in. Cracker J is going to take down Crackers. Cracker J going to grab Kool-A9, but Nero's going to grab Cracker J, and then Thief's going to trade with Longwick. Nero taking out Thief as well, so he gets the quick 2K. They hold B side now. Matt H takes a match. He's some freak taking down Matt H, and it's all on Nero's shoulders. Again, it's a player who can. He's got a yeah, scan in, and it's a one versus two situation, which means he needs to draw the Vortex into his defense. He knows what he's doing. He knows he's against the numbers, but he has the advantage of having to force them to come to him. He takes down one. It's a one versus one. Pick pick up. Up. He gets he gets up, Nero. Nero taking the first point on the board for Royal Strive. Wow. What a play from what a player. Wow, what a... I mean, my goodness, Nero. Amazing job there. It, the positioning of the scan where it put himself behind wow, that concrete wall and just listening for footsteps. Here's the footsteps in the yard, just takes that one pick. Here's the footsteps coming through cave and just immediately taking that headshot. What yeah. a shooter. And that's what we wanted to see, ladies and gentlemen. We wanted to see Royal Strike make that comeback. We want to see close games and both teams want us to show the best they can. Yeah, that could be a huge momentum boost here for Royal Strive, though. I mean, the 1v2 clutch there, that's got to be huge for Royal Strive. Sumachi, though, getting aggressive, <laughs> takes down Nero on Kool-A9. And then falls back. He's got the kills, and he's like, well, I've, I've made my point. Yeah, I'm done here. Yep. I'm getting out. Now it's a three on five. Good couple of entries there from Sumachi, leaving Royal Strive in an awkward position. Oh, but runs Lonwick. out and grabs him. You know what? He took him out on a long angle. Look, he's in the top right corner of the map. Sumachi fell all the way back, but Longwick was just waiting for him. He stepped into his line of sight and was immediately taken down by Longwick. Great pick up there, Matt H. Quietly taking down Thief in the center ground, and it's now three versus three. Sumachi's work being undone in the early side of the game as Matt H takes down Yellow Hat. 
Matt H getting involved here now in a three on two situation. This was a five on three in favor of Vortex and Rawl Strive has really done a good job to come back here as they're rotating around, but Freak's gonna spot that going through the glass. They know now they're rotating over to A. Here come the nades. Watch out, Frig. He's fine for now, but now here comes Vor or Rawl Strive attacking the A site. Nice pick from Frig. Two on two now. 40 seconds left on the clock. Frig still holding the back side. Oh. Here's Cracker J picks Again, up Cracker. Again, the one Cracker takes out the other Cracker is Cracker J punishing Crackers. Lom Wick now all on his shoulder. We saw him make an excellent pick up in Sumachi. He's got the puck. He can play his whatever he wants to do right now, but he's got 25 seconds left to do a B side push. Cracker J has the angle and knows he's there now. Is he going to wait for his teammate or is he going to try and get involved to block the scan? Doesn't matter. Lon's already set it up. Now he's in a one on two situation. He swings out. He grabs one. He saw the second one as swings well. Swings out. Cracker J now, the only hope for Vortex to take this. The time is working against him. Oh, and he gets the trade! The trade doesn't the trade. matter though, because the scan had gone in and it's gonna complete! Royal Strive getting a second point on the board, much needed. Wow, I mean, you can see the emotion coming over there from Royal Strive. as another amazing job. I mean, what a rotation by Lonwick. Wow. You know, last up against two, was in center and rotated all the way back to Skate Park, back to the B site. Getting that scan in and listening for footsteps once again, Peeker's advantage. Right, 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 right. And the key thing is he identified that second attacker. He took out yep. one and saw the shoulder of the second guy yep. was Try able to, get to rotate round and play off that visual. Yeah, and with the scan still going, the trade goes into the favor of that scan. Yeah, it looks like Royal Strive's going to try for a little bit of a fast execute once again. That worked decently for them last time. Getting involved, some nades going back and out, but now they're setting up. They're just waiting for some more additional utility, trying to bait the utility from Vortex. Vortex, we've seen before, is a pretty strong utility team on Kitty. Cracker J again taking out Crackers. Crackers just can't. It's not, it's, can't this time it was with a man. nade. It was artillery this time. He's like, you can't even see me and you're killing me? What's going on with this? But watch out. Matt H has full alley control now, getting involved, but Thief is waiting for him, takes him down. Now there's a five on three in favor of Vortex with a minute 10 left on the clock. Royal Strive has some B control here, but they're not quite in sight, and Vortex is rotated all over them right now. Absolutely. Vortex with a five versus three and full map control. And if you can see the line that Vortex have taken, they've crossed the entire map. I mean, they've shut down every approach vector that Royal Strive can take at the moment. They know what they're doing. Nice nade from Yellow Hat <laughs> takes down Nero. Nade. We're seeing so many nade kills at the moment. Nice pick up there from Kool-Aid 9. Takes down Frigg. But it's still a four on two in favor of Vortex here. Kool-Aid 9 and Lawn have their work cut out for them as they try to execute. Thief's waiting, takes down Lawn. And and all it, could on it be? Shoulders. It's on Kool-Aid 9's shoulders again. This guy is the last man standing for Royal Strive continually. And he's feeling that pressure. He's on 3-6-0. He's getting the kills. Not getting quite as many kills as Death so at the moment. So Machi loses his main pistol, his main gun, switches the pistol. Nice pick up there from Cooley. Now still a 1v3. He's only got 10 seconds left here. He grabs the scanner, he needs to quickly get this kill. But Thief's waiting for him and takes him down, and that's gonna be another round in favor of Vortex, five to two. Yeah, the slow push there on the offense coming through Skate Park, you, it's, it's one thing to push slow through Skate Park, but when you give away your positioning by throwing utility and making a lot of noise, you're, you're now coming through Skate Park and you have to work uphill. Yep. And working uphill through a match like that, through lanes, you just get funneled and, and they can find you very easily. Yeah, and Vortex aren't wasting the utilities. No. They're saving them until they identify the location. So the moment the Royal Strive go live, Vortex, uh, you know, they're, they're a seasoned team. They aren't yep. throwing those early nades. They aren't throwing the early smokes. They're waiting until they know where Royal Strive is coming from. Skate and they are punishing them with that artillery. Yeah, Skate Park is basically a tunnel. You yep. know, I mean, you're coming through up like that, and you're going to get caught with a lot of utility. So yeah. now we've got, uh, we've got Royal Strive setting up a little bit differently here with the slow push through A and, and Matt H working through B. And they talked about this yesterday. They knew that Matt H was going to try and throw some fakes for them here. So let's see if he's able to get Vortex to bite. It's quite approach. Very we slow here, waiting it. to bust out. Watch out, the oh, nade's coming in. Oh, look at this nade! Catches crackers. Down, crackers again! The guy just can't get a break! Boom, he is a grenade dragon. You can see it in him on stage. He is frustrated. <laughs> he's like, come on! He was even on the other side of the map this time. I didn't make any noise. How did you know? At least it wasn't Cracker J this time who took him down. Okay, here the comes the execute respite. from Rolls Drive. They're coming out, they're working out, they're trying to find these entries here. Frig this long angle is going to go to work here. Not able to find anybody. Royal that Strive. long angle that Frick is taking is the angle that you hold A from. And it's the most powerful situation. People pre-fire it, nade it. Matt H taking some action in the middle ground. We've seen that before. We've seen it again. Longwick taking down Frigg. And now it's a four versus three situation in Royal Strife's favor. They have sight control. Yellow Hat still on sight, though, and takes down Longwick. Yellow Hat still here getting involved, but Nero's going to find him. Cooley's going to grab Thief. And now it's all up to Cracker J in a 1v3 situation here. 
They're going to get the scan set up. They've got good Scout tight control here. Cooley's going to have to try and rotate through the middle here. And unfortunately for Cracker J, Crackers isn't up, but it doesn't matter. Cracker J takes down Cooley. It's two versus one, and he's got about 30 seconds left on the clock to get in there and disable the scan. And again, once again, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter if he takes down both of the, the uh, colonists. All that matters is he gets to that scanner and disables it. Of course, the colonists might have something to say that with the bullets. Yeah, Royal Stripe playing really smart here, though. No, not overexposing, not giving any free picks, and Nero takes down Cracker J, and that's going to be the third round on the board in favor of Royal Strive 5-3. Yeah, amazing job there. You know, as, as Royal Strive got that scan in, and then, then you know, just setting things up as in a def you went from offense to round defense and, and split themselves up, took different angles, took different alleyways, and once you, you know, figure out where that one player is, you can really uh, wait patiently and wait for the footsteps. And we're going to go right in here to the side swap now. We have uh, Roll Strive now on defense. Defense. Yep. Yeah, the uh, graphic not showing the correct information right now. We have Vortex on the D. Oh, sorry, the attack. attack. They're yeah. on colonists <laughs> now. All right, but we saw what Royal Strive was capable of in their attacks. They still got three points on the board. Would you say this map favors defenders or attackers, Lampy? Yes. I think it's defenders. Yeah, obvious. A absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you do? Yeah. Yep. All right, well, in that case, Royal Stripe getting three points on the board. They're now in defense. Will we see them claw back those two points they need to even up, uh, to, to even up, sorry, and then take it further? It's possible. I mean, right now, they're, they're pretty even, you know, getting five on the on the defense. Well, well, the Samachi. execute's coming out from Vortex now. Samachi getting crackers. Lon's going to find Frick now, but Vortex is overwhelming the site. Nero and Lon Wick have to do a lot of work here to hold this site. Lon Wick grabbing one. Kuli, Kuli grabbing another. Cracker is going to flank around and take down Lon. Now, Vortex has sight control here yep. in a two-on-two -two situation. The retake is so hard to do, especially when you know the enemy team have got time to set up the defense. Fortunately for, that, uh, for the attackers, uh, Cooley 9 was able to get in there, so didn't really let the defenders get out too far. Cracker J taking on Matt H, and now, once again, it's on Cooley 9 to try and make the difference. Cooley unable to come up there as Steve takes him down. That's going to be the first colonist round in favor of Vortex now, 6-3. to three. Yeah, Vortex just put the pressure on. They came straight through Skate Park. They didn't waste any time. Came straight through the cave and just put the pressure on the defense. They didn't allow them to set up. They didn't allow them to rotate. Yeah. Just making that quick movements. Okay, once again, I mean, pistol round is completely different to everything else. Now they're back into the real guns. I mean, you can't stress enough the importance of knowing how to play the pistol rounds, but this changes everything. And they've got set defenses. Royal Strife has set defenses for every kind of attack the Vortex are going to throw at them. They've been putting in the homework constantly on this team. Uh, and hopefully, for Royal Strife's sake, we're going to see that come through. Yes, they lost the pistol round, but pistol round is a different creature. Yeah, and Vortex is going to be setting up with a slow B push here with one in the middle. They're waiting for this utility. It's so dangerous coming through this little choke point here where Frigg is right now. That might be dangerous for a nade, but here come the nades. They're going to try and grab anybody they can for free with nades before they execute here. But Royal Strive's not biting on that. They're set up now with three on B. This could be significant. And Royal Strive's just letting the mid go. As you can tell, there's no defenders in the mid. They're letting them have the mid. They're letting Crackers. them make them fake that, you know, Can we point out, choice. sorry to interrupt you, but can no. we point out Crackers keeps Getting these nade kills. He keeps getting these nade kills time and time and time again, just based off practiced nades in certain locations he expects people to be at certain times. And it is paying off again and again, even on attack. And here comes the execute from Vortex, but the hold from Royal Strive is very strong as Lon and Nero both gonna grab one. Nero gonna grab another one. Nero gonna grab a third. That's a 3K from Nero. And that's gonna be a round in favor of Royal Strive, six to four now. That was very dangerous Royal Strive, though, because they lined up in defense. They were both yes. so eager to go in that they actually lined up, and that could have easily have gone against them as the same bullet that kills one that kills a second. Yeah, and, all, and offensively, they had a smoke there on the B on the B side. It cut off, you know, their their look to the left, the look to Archer. So all they had to uh, focus on was the, the guy in the back. When, yeah. I think that was Lonwick, and when he finally did peek, there was two of them there to make sure he died as well. I mean, we haven't really talked about smokes, but the smokes are so important. They cut off the, the sight lines, but also they limit the, the, you know, the defense line factor. And that, you know, right. people can hold that because they expect people to peek the tiny gap. They, people create these gaps on purpose. We've seen a very yeah. aggressive push. One, you know, one way right smokes. Here comes the fast execute from Vortex. Nade's getting involved. Sumachi can take down Nero. The rotates are coming up for Royal Stride, but it's too late. Cracker Jay's already on site. It's all up to Lon Wick here. He's going to grab a yellow hat. He's going to turn around. He's going to look for another one. Can he find it? He does. He gets Cracker Jay. But Frick's there to trade the frag out. Now it is three on one. Matt H Matt is H. the last man standing. Shot. He is doing everything right now, but he has only got 40 seconds left on the clock. He is against three players. He's in a is, good position now, though. Is he capable? You know, he's got... 
What I love is you can look at the UI at the bottom, you can see he's got no utility. And that nade right on top of him takes him out. Wow. Faith wow. with a hunter killer missile taking out Matt H. That's about saving that utility. A lot of players want to get rid of that utility in the beginning and try to get them spicy kills and, and try to slow down the plays. But, you know, saving that utility at the end. No, and so when you know someone's coming through cave and you can't see them, yeah. there's one spot that they're going to be at is behind that, you know, wooden wall there. <laughs> yeah, you come out pre-firing. You know the people are going to be hiding in there. You've got no choice. It might be a meta spot, but it's meta for a reason right. because where else can they be? And we're going to see a change up here from Vortex. They're going to head towards A. I'm not sure if they're going to fast execute. Looks like they are. They're probably going to come out here hot with grenades and smokes. So Yellow Hat just running right out there looking for anybody he can get for free. Finds Matt H. Good entry there. Now it's all up to Cooley alone on site here. Ball He's in trouble. Cracker J takes him down. Wow. Five on three just like that. What an execute from Vortex. And Yellow Hats, this is my house. Say the, ne the color of my hat. This is, we've yeah. taken this side. Come into my defense now. We are now the defenders. It is three versus five. Royal Strive have got a heck of a work against them now to try and take this site. And look at the offense playing defense now. I mean, they're, they're holding mid down. They're not allowing the defense to even to rotate in. Yeah, keep with Nero a good nade there on Crackers. Now it's a two on five. Nero and Lonwick got their work cut out for them. Nero grabs Thief, but he's still got to find four more with the assistance of Lon here. Lon finds another one. This is wow. doable now. It's a two on three, but they're running out of time. Lon, Lon grabs Wick. another one. What is happening? He's on a tear right now. He's jumping, taken yep. down by Yellow Hat. Say the color of my hat. I Nero's going to tap the defuse, but Crack a J is there to put him down, and that's going to be match point now in favor wow. of Vortex. Eight to four. Vortex only needs one more to take map number one. Yeah, Vortex's game plan right now is aggression. It's, it's absolute aggression. They are just pushing right Round through. They're not allowing that utility to catch them off guard. They're pushing through, they're overtaking, and then they're switching their mindset to defense. So they're overtaking the site, taking the two or three players that are there, and just holding things down and not allowing them rotators to come through. I'm having a premonition right now. I reckon Vortex are going to fake out. I think they've conditioned Royal Strive enough to think they're going to do another, like, Alpha strike, and they're going to hold back. And it looks like I'm going to be completely wrong as they're flying in super fast. They have Utility to going no live. Fear. Yep, absolutely. Crack a chain. Another nade again. Boom, this he's done. guy is on Zimachi fire. grabbing crackers. We're all striving in trouble here as Nero grabs one, but Yellow Hat's going to trade that frag out. Now it's going to be a two on four. And Royal Strive needs to win this round to keep this map and this dream alive yeah, of getting the map at, number one. Look at this. Cracker J's ready. He's tucked in. He's working off the auto. He's not stepping out. There's Free one. kill for me. Mix Thank you Matt very H. much. And that's there it. it is. Map number one presented by Smash Drums. Going to go to Vortex here. Vortex taking that in very stylish manner. Nine to four. Lampy, what do you have for us? Man, it's just the aggression of Vortex. They are not wasting any time. Um, I mean, what, how much time we still have left there? Like 45 seconds in a two-minute round they had there almost at the end. Um, the aggression is just overtaking them big time. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, some real high frag is coming out. We saw Cracker J with those Hunter Killer missile strikes again and again and again and again and again. And usually it was on Crackers. You know, he was like, listen, <laughs> you've got a very similar name to me. That means we have beef. Yeah. Um, and this is my way of showing that I don't approve. This yeah, time it, it's personal. Only, there's only <laughs> one time. Cracker that can live. Yes, <laughs> there can be only one. <laughs> this game ain't big enough for the both of us. <laughs> yeah. No, but you can see the uh, you can see the frustration in the crackers actually on you know on stage there every time a nade did hit him about thirty I think it was about thirty times probably. yeah yeah was about at least thirty times that sounds accurate <laughs> but yeah sounds accurate. <laughs> the correct stat line for sure and that's what we love to see you know you see the aggression you see the hands in the air you know and, and that's the beautiful part about VR you see the frustration you see the oh. Again? You literally saw right. him like throw his hands up yeah. like, again, this is happening again. What is going on? And it's in the avatar as well. You know, you're not only seeing it on yep. stage, but you're seeing it through the avatar. Absolutely, so. absolutely. So, as we previously pointed out, um, Royal Strive prefer Ma, which is the next map we're going to see. Yeah. Vortex prefer Kitty, which right. is the map we just saw. And the, the points kind of reflect that, didn't they? They did. Yeah, yeah. they really did. Um, it, like we mentioned before, I mean, the maps play completely different, right? Yeah. The aggression can work on Kitty. The aggression can similar work on Mar, but there are so many other rotations that the, the defense can make to get back to the other site that you, you can't keep that core group of people protecting no. everything, right? No. You've got to spread out thin once again. And then if you have the defense rotating two or three guys through the same tunnel, it's a two to three on one again. It you know what was super interesting, though, was that Vortex went super aggressive like four times in a row, and the strength of that is you just you get momentum. You get there before the defenders get there, right? You, they, before they have time to react, you're already off sight. Win or lose, you've got the aggression and the momentum, which if you've got the kills, it means you hold the site and the, the defenders are nowhere. You know, the, the defenders who aren't on site have a long journey to make into the teeth of the enemy. 
Yeah, I mean, it was it was an interesting development to watch Vortex play out that call on the side. They started all of their rounds quite slowly until the later half of the game. They identified that Royal Strive wasn't using much utility at the beginning of the game. They weren't at much risk to lose those early bodies early on. And they said, screw it, let's just get in there, right? right. And then they saw the overwhelm on A, the overwhelm on B, and all three of those rounds that we saw that, it worked great for them. So it'll be interesting to see if they try to mix that into their Mar play a little bit. Because yep. we know that just due to the size of Mar and kind of the way the corridors work out and using the zip lines and stuff like mm. that, you can overwhelm a site five on two pretty easily right. if you do it quickly enough, right? And you don't telegraph that play let the enemy start reading it. Yep. But Roll Strive was already kind of making some of those plays and those adjustments. They were playing three towards B on a couple of rounds, knowing that Vortex was very likely to take B. But Vortex didn't really telegraph those takes with the nades that they traditionally do. No. So it was kind of interesting to watch that half develop and the switch up in the plays that they were making. And yeah. there's nothing, as, as Royal Strive, there's nothing you can do about Vortex's aggression because you don't know if it's going to come to A or B. Right. It's all well and good to say, hey, we're going to stack Can't everyone. Stack. We're going to try and cut down this aggression. We're going to intercept it with numbers because you don't know where the numbers are going to be. Right. And you have to react as quickly as possible. Then what's really Really interesting coming into uh, Mar the sight lines, right? You've got long sight lines. Um, but what else is really interesting is that Royal Strive are starting on colonists. Now, colonists, I still believe, have the advantage on Mar. Do you agree? Gents? I do. Yeah. I, I agree. Yep. 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 Yeah. So because it's so big and the rotations take so long. Exactly. So they're coming in with an advantage on the map they prefer. So this could be real, real hot for Royal Strive. They right. could, you know, make a. They need to get as many points, obviously, on Hollands as they can. But they're going to feel good about it. This is what they want. This is the setup they needed to play to the advantage. Right. Yeah, and one big factor we're seeing right now. We talked about Crackers getting just obliterated by grenades on the last round, and now we have him subbing out. So really? Omi has come in um, and subbing out for Crackers that round. And it could be a part of a mental thing. You yep. know, maybe you're not feeling it. You know, the frustration of dying. I mean, there's nothing more frustrating than dying behind cover by grenades. Yeah, I mean, you're not technically doing anything wrong. No. They're just doing things right on that the other side. That can get in your head, right? You it, feel unlucky. You feel like you're in the wrong absolutely. place at the wrong time. You feel like you're making the wrong plays. And it just, it's just unlucky, right? Yeah. You're in the wrong place, wrong time, literally. But it starts to weigh on you, round in, round out. It's perpetual motion. You doubt yourself, so you play a little bit, you know, the moment you start to doubt yourself, you play a little bit more defensive. Right. You're a bit more cramped in, you know, your, your mentality isn't there. You're holding the gun a bit tighter. You're not making the attack play you would normally play because you're worried about letting the team down. And then you, uh, because of that, you get killed a bit qu quicker and easier without actually producing any results. And you can For get sure. in that, that spiral that, like, takes you out. So I don't blame him for wanting to sub out. Um, a lot of teams, a lot of players would you know, be like, right, I'm going to have an opportunity to bounce back. I'm going to prove myself. But on this stage, when you're mapped down and if you lose this map, you're out of, you know, you're out of the, the, the final. You're not playing for the final anymore. I can understand the mentality. Look, look guys, I'm not feeling it. If he's hot, let's bring him in. I'm going to step out. Right. Yeah. And it, it's big on the team and on Crackers himself to say, it's time for me to step down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, to say that and, and do that for your team. Right. That shows that shows a lot of uh, you know maturity, maturity yeah. in his team. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it'll be interesting too because Omi is a newer player on the team, right? Like yeah. joined recently after the qualifiers actually ended. So mm -hmm. let's see if he has any impact here. I know he's you know he's a very very strong player. So yeah. maybe Mar just might be his map too. I don't know, right? So it could be. You'll mm. never yeah. know. Uh, he's a tight player. He's played for many teams before. He's he's got the skill to back up uh, you know to back up the woods. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's going to make a difference. Right. And one big difference that we saw from matchup number one and matchup number two is so far is, is the utility. You know, the nades, the accuracy, and the way they're using them together. And we didn't see that in map number one. No, no you know, we didn't. And now we're seeing a much tighter battle. And, you know, the favorites, not the favorites, but the team that favored Kiti won. Now let's find out if the team that favors Mars is going to win. Listen, Royal Strike put up a heck of a fight. All right? They didn't go down without a fight, but now we are going to go into map number two. This is the map, this is the one they wanted to play, and on the side that suits them, ladies and gentlemen, we're in for a heck of a fight, and it begins now. Match number two, Sponsored brought to you by, by Smash Drums. Exactly. <laughs> Smash Drums, cool drumming VR game available on Quest. They got a really cool update coming this fall. I recommend you all check it out. And we're going to go live here with map number two for match two very, very shortly here. Again, for those who've never seen Mar, if you missed my original explainer, um, a lot of verticality in this. The center ground is so important. You have, especially if you take the center ground, the verticality you have, you have so much control over the entire map. You can see from every angle. You can shut down approaches. You'll see it in this, like, you'll see it between these two teams. They will fight heavy for that middle ground. Yeah. Or they'll give it up completely and make sure to avoid it. The key thing is, if you hold it, you can hold down a lot of the map. If you don't hold it, you're aware of it. You have to, that means you have to add on this huge amount of lag as you have to rotate around these, these crevice areas around the outside of the map and try and hide from the center areas. 
Yeah, and the center ground is not only verticality, but it also has that lower level. You got the ground level and you got the uh, the catwalk, right? So you know, holding down the catwalk, you know, you, if you're on the catwalk and you're you're holding it down and you're holding defensively, you can not only hear footsteps that are coming at you. If you're you're hearing footsteps that are near you, but you're not seeing anybody, then you know somebody's underneath on the ground level too. Right, right, right. And you can call that out to your teammates. Let them know that hey, someone's someone's on ground level heading to B. Someone's on ground level heading to A, going through Glow Cave or or wherever they're going through, right? Yeah. Um, one thing that we haven't talked about on the zip lines as well is, and we mentioned it earlier where people, you know, you can stage yourself at the end of a zip line knowing if someone's going to be coming down that. But one key factor on the zip line is not only the sound, but the handle disappears on the other side. Right. When the, hand, when right, the zip right, line's right. being used. So, yep. you know, if you got that one long zip line that goes from all the way from A to B, right, on the ground side, on the back side, and you see that handle disappear from the distance. You, they're so far away, you can't hear the audio, but you see yeah. the handle disappear, and you can set yourself up. I, again, it sounds like a silly thing, but if you're the guy standing there, and you just see the zip line disappear, it's like, oh, oh okay, I'm ready. I'm yeah, ready. Somebody's ready. coming. I'm going to get a free kill right now. Yeah, but you know that a lot of players now, they'll hop off beforehand, yeah. right? Yeah. So they'll hop off, spots. they'll go somewhere else. There's a lot of there's a lot of metagaming to that back catwalk or right. back zip line that we see now. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, just because the handle disappears doesn't mean you're going to get a free kill on someone no, no, coming no. through there. I mean, that's my mentality, and that's why someone will be like, you like fool me. They'll drop off halfway through, come around a corner, be like, I'm ready, I'm ready, ready. Someone shoots me in the side of the head. I was like, oh. Are they, are they one hand zip on you? Yeah, they're one hand zip on you. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, we saw great. in Wrecked versus uh, Cobra Cartel, we saw the zip line one hand kill. We also saw the disable one hand kill. I, I mean, I'm putting it out to both teams. You need to one up that somehow. Hey, I don't know how you're going to do it. As we're going Rush, into match number two, map number two, Royal Strive versus Vortex. Let's go. Yeah, Vortex starting out here on pistol round. Let's make some noise for these two teams right now. This is map number two. The Vortex is able to get this one. They're going to be going into the finals. Royal Strive is going to try and battle back to bring this to a third map. Now, interesting, Vortex are on uh, Colonists, which I did not expect, which really threw me through a loop. I really thought we were going to see Royal Strive playing the attackers. Instead, they are potentially opting to play the defenders. Oh, early nades coming out. B-side push is unequivocally happening. This means that the rest of Royal Strike defenders have got a long journey ahead of them to get back. Omi swapped in, taken down by Kraken J. Kraken J getting the second on Nuro. That's two heavy players taken down from Royal Strike's side. Just like that, Vortex has full sight control, and the rest of uh, Royal Strive here is going to have to rotate in and retake as the scan gets set up. Now we've got about 40 seconds left on the clock. Royal Strive in a little bit of trouble now. They're going to make re entry on the site now. Vortex has full control here. Full control and full health. I mean, all five of Vortex members, zero damage. They've got no utility. Wow, so Matt actually taking out Matt H. Putting it more in the favor, and again, Lomwick. We've seen him in the, the, final uh, the final defender a few times, but one versus five, potentially um, a little bit too much to ask any player in this level of game. Yeah, this is going to definitely be tough for him there. Let's see what he can do. He's just trying to go to work on Frigg here. He's not able to find anyone. Time's are running out. He's only got eight seconds left anyways, and then Frigg's <laughs> going to pick him up, and that's going to be round number one in favor of Vortex here. Honestly, that felt like watching chickens pecking away at someone, really. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, um, my that shot, I'm gonna, my turn, my turn, my turn. That was the most amazing uh, you know, uh, laser tag shot. moment that I've ever seen right there yeah. without anybody connecting there. Absolutely. But great job by Vortex, really taking over that site and then turning themselves from offense to defense. You know, all spreading out, taking different areas where they had to defend any kind of rotations coming through. So we uh, see early smokes coming out from Thief there. That just blocks off a line, uh, allows his teammates to push up through the center while he peels off to the left-hand side. It looks like it's going to be an A-side strike for Vortex. We saw them doing unmitigated aggression on Kitty when they were on, on the attacking team, uh, and they're doing that right now, it looks again. A bit more control. They're not just charging straight into the site, but we are definitely seeing that kind of aggression again. But they're opting to hold some middle control here. Yeah, they're in a good position right now. They have some lower site control. They have some outside the double door area, and they still have some control in the, um, the upper catwalk as Matt H is going to try to swing out and take down Kraka, but Kraka says no way, man. Takes him down. Nero's going to grab Thief here. Frick's going to grab Lon Wick. Frick firing into the smoke. Again, when you're in the smoke, you give away a little... <coughs> about every four seconds, people firing. Nero, Nero. huge Nero. with the 3K. And now it's just on Samachi. He's one versus three. He's a heck of a player, but... I mean, <laughs> three Royal Strive players. If it were a different team, if it were a, loyal, a lesser team, maybe. But another key thing that my friend Lampy just pointed out is that the puck is down. They're aware of it, and they don't hold, have to hold the artifact. You can see it. They're giving up on the artifact and holding the puck. That's all they have to do. But Samachi's on the flank here, and Royal Strive does not know that. But they don't need to know it because they're on the puck, baby, and that's all that matters. I mean, the puck is the game. The moment the colonists drop it, the moment they don't have control of it, it switches the game completely. And that's the thing I love about this game. It's not about just holding those artifacts. When the, when the puck is down, he sees it's not them holding. through the wall. 
Yeah, he's clipping just a little bit there. Oh, cool. he sees him clipping through the wall. But he doesn't see Nero. He knows he who know he Nero's there. there. Doesn't want to give away his shot. Well, you know, Nero's if he shoots him, really awkward position. Here's and the there steps. He peeks out, takes him down. It's almost like I knew it was going to happen. Nero was there. He's ready for the audience. Like, you know, so what? We've got each other covered. Yeah. And that was the biggest thing is the defense had, you know, they had alternating lines that they could watch. You know, watching through the main tunnel and they were watching through the comm center Round tunnel starting. and just listening for Sumachi to come around and peek. They knew Sumachi had to come to them. Yep. And that's the beautiful thing about the scanner being down and the time ticking down. I mean, know. you know, he was on a flank. Right. My thing to, to uh, Zuck was so what? You know, it, 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 you can flank from whatever direction you want. You still have to get that puck to make it happen. Yeah, and Royal Strive had good control there. They were both looking opposite ways. They played that really smartly. Now Vortex, you're going to try and kick it off with a fast armory push as Yellow Hat finds Mad H, takes him down, gets him with some level of empty control, but Nero and Omi are still on the armory site here, and Vortex yeah, has no control over that area. Look at this from Vortex. They've, they've put their initial aggression in, and now they're holding the mid-ground, wanting to pick up any rotation that will happen. But Royal Strive aren't biting. They're like, you know what? You can, you, you've got an initial pick on that side, you know, over there. We're, we're not, we're not going to give you free kills. Prove to me you're pushing site B, then I'll come and attack you. Yeah, Lonwick and Coolio just not moving. They're, they're still sitting on A. They're still guarding that. They're not, they're not baiting yet. And there's not a lot of movement, a lot of, com you know, communication coming through on this side yet. Yeah, all Vorte or all Royal Strive has really lost here is their mid control. Um, unless Vortex tries to go for the Rayab uh, back spawn area, not sure it's going to be useful for them. Samachi comes out, <laughs> trades with Omi, and Nero takes down Kraken Jade. Nero with a 2K now. Nero is on fire right now, literally, as a yellow hat puts a bullet through him. And now it is oh, a 2 on Sonic. 2 with 40 seconds left on the clock here. Yeah, but Lon Thief and Yellow Hat have got almost no health, dude. Right, right. They're going to get the scan set up here. Lon's probably going to wait for his teammate here, Cooley, who's all the way on the other side of the map. Thief and Yellow throwing a little bit of utility here on, on Lon Wick, but not going to catch him. Lon's going to trade some shots there with Frigg, as, or sorry, Thief, as he falls back. Here comes Cooley on the zip line. Thief, Thief finds was ready him. For it. Again, they saw the zip line thing disappear and he shot. I was right. Yellow Hat taking out Lon Wick, and they take the point. Vortex 2 1 up. Both players doing what they needed to hold the site. Lampy. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, we're seeing the same type of thing. Vortex just really, you know, rushing in there, taking control in site, wow, playing, you know, in. turning their offense yeah, into defense and controlling the light lines. You know, they sent one back there on the zip line, waiting for him to come, yeah. you know, finding that guy coming around on the flank on the zip line and taking him down. Right. And that's what, you know, they're doing that early game. They got the puck in and they switched up the defense. They're yeah. watch, watching for those both lines. The thing is, you know, especially on the B side, there's so many different attack angles. I've got to give plaudits to uh, Vortex for figuring out where the counterattack was going to come from, and they shut down both approaches. Right. Yeah, now Vortex setting up very similarly towards the refinery side, but very slowly trying to pick up anything that they can for free right now. Samachi quietly moving in here, but Omi and Nero not really giving Samachi any pick here, right? They're playing very conservative. Everybody right now is playing extremely conservative. Yeah, I mean, we saw Vortex on such aggressive pushes on Kitty, and they've changed that up so, so much now. You, 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 you said the right word, conservative. Yeah, well, if we go back to the beginning of Kitty, right, they were playing conservatively. They realized that they could get away with some aggression. So I would expect as the half starts to expire here, we'll see some, some, some switch up and some more aggression coming out of the No, out of the no, whoa, 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 whoa. Look at Cooley 9. Uh, his position now, he's kind of pushing oh, yeah. through the, you know, the south side behind Vortex. Not really going to be expecting it. Meanwhile, Frigg taking some, someone all the way in the north. Yellow yeah, had taken Omi down on the site. And that guy who was... I said was going to make a big play difference. Cooley, taken down by Thief, and now there's only two Royal Strike players left on defense. And the uh, scan hasn't even gone in. Yeah, but Vortex has full site control here. And, and I mean, yeah, you saw what they did. They, they came outside, they surrounded the site. There wasn't any pressure from Royal Strive. They just executed all at once, and, and that was it. Say goodnight. Scan goes in, and it's all on Nero and Longwick. But we've seen both these players playing amazing today. If there's any two players that can do it, it is these two right now on Royal Strive. However, Vortex has got five players up. Longwick takes down one, eager to prove me wrong. They got to get involved here, but now as they get wow. involved, they're going to get swing, swung on, and Vortex can pick up that round. That's going to be three to one in favor of Royal Strive. Now, right now, I mean, you can't hear it, but that audio, the players would be talking constantly with each other. They would be shouting at each other, like, you know, cover the angle, cover the angle. They'll make sure the communication is on point, makes a heck of a difference in this level of play. Yeah, one thing I think we're seeing from Royal Strive is what we need to see a change of is Lonwick and Matt H. You know, both of them together only have one kill so far in this map. You know, and we're four rounds in, right. and, and only one kill amongst the two of them. You know, usually they're some of the top shooters, and we need to see, you know, a little bit of aggression come from them. Well, you know, ultimately we see Nero is picking up that slack with 6-3. Right. Uh, and, uh, Big nade there from Cracker J as Vortex gets some aggressive outside control here. Cracker J going directly into the site. Going to have to deal with Omi, takes him down. 
Ferg's gonna find Nero, no. Now it's a four on three in favor of Vortex. Vortex has a lot of map control outside. Omi, the last one around on Armory Sight, gonna get taken down by Yellow Hat. So much. He's taking down Cooling Nine. The scan yeah, is going stopped. in from Thief. But it's it all up to Lawn. You see, the, you see Thief put that scan up high and in yes. the middle. And that's that, that's that line where no one on the other side, when they try to defuse, they can't hide behind that barrier. They can't hide behind the concrete barrier there. You know, they have to stay in line of sight from the shooter. That just feels mean, though. I mean, Lomwick's all by himself. You know, <laughs> like you're just adding insult to injury right now, Lomwick. Uh, one, you know, one of the best players, but... Samachi so finds him, and that's going to be another round in favor of Vortex. Four to one for Vortex. Vortex is five rounds away for playing in the grand finals here. Yeah, Rawls. they're just they're just doing what they have to do right now. I mean, there's yeah. nothing fancy coming out. It's just the aggression of taking over Round one side starting. and then defending against the rotations. Absolutely. Royal Strive have to do something different, though, because initially it looked like they had this. You know, it looked like they were going to make a big play. They had the numbers. They took the round they took very confidently. Since then, Vortex have upped, it, upped the game. And, it, you know, it, it's not one versus ones. This isn't two versus ones. This is five versus ones. This is four versus ones. Vortex are shutting down Royal Strive hard. Oh, watch out, Vortex, with a quick execute from the double doors. Wow. Samachi early entry at Alon. Going to grab Cooley, too. Huge entries from Samachi here. And just like that, it's a five on three. Samachi grabs a third. My gosh, this guy's just kicking into gear right now. The flick coming out of him twice. He works off the audio. His fire pre-firing as he comes around the angle, picks up the three K. Hey. Oh, we go. Down the two. Omi working his way through data here. Gonna have to find his teammate here. Nero's are both at the double doors right now. Two Heroes. on three situation. Scan time. Taken down. Nero grabs Steve. Now it's a two-on-two two situation here. Again, planted up top, so there's no cover on the site here for him. Nero's going to tap that defuse. Vortex not buying it, though. Here comes Spring oh. and Samachi. They close it out, and that's going to be another round in favor of Vortex. Five there's to the one. Dab, there's the dab. <laughs> there's the dab. Caught on camera. It was live. you got to kind of love hate it. Love hate it, yeah. I love hate it. <laughs> Excellent plays from both sides, honestly. I mean, Sumachi with the three-piece coming out, and then Omi coming back with that double. I mean, really just taking it back to a 3v2. Nero getting that kill, you know, tying it up 2-2. Two two. Um, but again, the defenders against everything there is. They are in a wide open circle zone there, you know, having to defend. The defend, you know, when you try to or defuse, I'm sorry, it, it sends off that audio cue. Right, absolutely. And that kicks in the offense to try to take them down. A little bit of a different setup here from Vortex as they're sending some towards Refinery, but they still have fast aggression going outside right now. Long angle here from Cooley. Not able to find anyone. Trying to get a little bit of damage, but Thief takes him down instead. That's unfortunate for Cooley. He overstayed his welcome there. He got some damage. He got some nice damage there, but like the moment he given himself away, someone else was ready to take out that spot. They were ready for that position. It's a known spot. Um, and he should have known better, quite frankly. Once he got that initial damage, he should have been falling off it. And the, you know, the, the refrag, even though he didn't get a frag, was, was going to come in very quickly, and it did. And now we're seeing the rotate from Vortex as the scanner following, riding along with Thief right now. He's rotating back to the A site here, and Vortex is slowly working their way through the outside, positioning themselves so they can execute on the site. Samachi's going to find Matt H. He heard him a while ago and located him, and now it's all up to Lon on the site here. Lon's going to be battling with Lon, or Samachi here. Not able to find him, though, as Vortex is now executing on the site. Cracker Jay is going to take down Omi on the lurk. He's in the middle of Catwalk as Nero is now rotating through that back spawn zip line. Lon's going to find Frigg here, and now it is a two on four. We're all striving a little bit of trouble here. Vortex showing dominance in full control right now. What you call a little bit of trouble, I call a lot of trouble. They're in a lot of trouble right now. They're down on numbers. The time is ticking away. They don't have control. Nero picks up one, but it's still a one versus three, and Thief makes it a three versus nothing as Vortex are now six one up on Royal Stripe's pick. Yeah, I don't know if it was their pick, but it might be their favorite, right? You yeah, know I mean, yeah, we're playing this map regardless, you know, obviously. But yes, Rouch Vortex running take. away with things right yeah, now. Ready. They're just not doing anything wrong, and nope. that's the big thing right now. No, no, no. They Vortex completely. There's no, there's no like, there's no gaps in that armor. They are just shutting down everything that Royal Strife trying to throw at them in defense. And Vortex six one up, and the map swap, you know, the round swap isn't for another round. So Royal Strive, even when they go to the attackers, have got such an uphill struggle to stay in this. Yeah, Royal Strive really needs to get something here. They need to win this last round. Matt H getting aggressive there, finding Crack J. That's what they need here. They need to get some early picks. This will be the last round on this half. So they'll be going into Colonist, but if they can pick up this round and go in 6-2, they'll be in a lot better shape than if they're in 7-1. Yeah. Cracker J, can I just point out Cracker J? Here comes Omi swinging out. Picks up two. two Huge from Omi. That was kind of rude, Omi, interrupting my point. <laughs> Nero picking up one. This is what Royal Strive need is now five versus one in the corner as this is the last round of 
Rayab, this is exactly how they need to finish it off. you all had in a clutch or kick moment right now. <laughs> a clutch or <laughs> kick moment. And literally, ladies and gentlemen, we may have to kick him off the stage. He's only got a sliver of health. He is <laughs> going to find Matt matter. H. He still has both nades left, but look, he's got no health. Maybe 5% at best, and he's in a yep. one-on-four situation with 50 seconds left. Without the scanner. He does not have the scanner. That's right. Oh. Yellow has his work cut out for him. Statistically improbable for him to win this round, but we've seen crazy things happen before, right? Get don't the... don't tell me the odds. Don't tell me the odds. Here Never he comes. Tell me the he odds. gets the puck. He sneaks out. Managed to survive the play. Like there was one, a defender who had eyes on it. Meanwhile, Cooley Nine on the back line. Oh, Mike catches rotate. Cooley has to hear him though. They have to Did know he he hear him. He's rotated for free, and Royal Strife had no idea. Vortex with only 20 seconds left on the clock. Yellow Hat has time against him. He's going to come in with about five, six seconds to spare to get 15. in a very fast scan. And then there's another 45 seconds added yep. on after the scan goes through. There so he's got to hold seconds. it down for 40 seconds. And now Rolls Drive is starting eight, to realize that something's seven, amiss at the other six. site and they're rotating out. He's able and to get it set up. here we go! The scan is in! And now the attacker becomes the defender. He's one guy versus four. Can he do it? Here we go. Yeah, he's going to have to deal with Omi first. Omi trying to bait the shots here. He knows he has time. He can wait for his teammates. He doesn't have too much time throwing a grenade. Yellow Hat's now in a sandwich position, and Lonwick's going to take him down. Royal Strive should be able to get this interrupted and take this round. That'll be 6-2 going into the half. <laughs> Royal Strive needs to do a bit more, though. That was a great way to finish yeah, that off, but they need so much more if they're going to stay in this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Royal Strive just played it perfectly. I mean, yep. very good defense. They held things down only with that two-piece kill. It really shut that down and forced them to move. Um, they're not out of it by any means, no. no. But, I mean, that was a great play. One against four. He gets the sneak pick up. Yeah. He manages to get the rotate. Almost keeps them in it. Amazing work. And, that, and that's the uh, the 1v4 when you got too many lanes to watch and too yeah, many lines yeah, to watch. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you're going to get pounced on. Yeah, but you they had eyes on the puck as well. How he managed to sneak out of there? I have no idea. Yeah, he grabbed it and ran. <laughs> <laughs> Pistol rounds, again, we're seeing the absolute aggression, and I love to see it, hate to play it. Yeah, here comes Royal Strive, getting aggressive on the armory site. Omi, nice shot on the frig. Maddie's gonna grab Thief, and now it's a five on three. And Great they entries by Royal Strive. Complete Omi, site another control one. confirmed, ladies and gentlemen. That's five versus two. They have complete site dominance right here. This is what Royal Strive need to stay in this. Now it is a two on five in favor of Royal Strive. Sumachi, yellow hat. <laughs> Cool, I'm going to grab Sumachi, Omi going to grab Yellow Hat. That's wow. a huge pistol round from Royal Strive. Six to three. Wow, what aggression. I mean, the aggression came through. They didn't wait for nothing. They just ran. And that's really what you got to do with pistols. You know, you're not going to get that super good accuracy with the pistols. It's really tough. You need to put people together, you know, guns together, and just run for it and Don't and say that them. kind of language to someone like Natix or some of these other, like, top-level players. You can't get that kind of accuracy with a pistol. They'll prove you wrong every time. They'll prove me wrong, especially. Well, well, I mean, yeah. we saw Omi with the quick one-tap on the guy coming from yep. balcony. You definitely can. Yeah, well, some of these oh, guys yeah. are cracked with pistols, man. Here comes another fast execute on the armory site. They're looking to overwhelm Matt H with the entry. Takes down the oh! huge nade. Double and a single. The nades coming out. Crack a J with these nades. What is going on? Somebody needs to keep track of them. They're insane. Crack That's a J. I was warned his grenades were good, but I did not realize they were going to be insane. Yeah, that was crazy. Two from Cracker J, one from Thief. Matt H, though, still in here, still getting kills. Picks up Cracker J, and now it is a two on two situation. We've got a minute 10 left on the clock here. But look of Omi's health. I mean, he doesn't have any. I mean, what you, health? You could throw yeah. a piece of dust at him. He'd be like, ow, and then fall over dead. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, a, that's a one HP type of moment. Unlucky for Omi. That's going to be difficult to deal with. Yellow Hat sees him. <laughs> takes him oh, down. Oh, shot. Through the fence. Now it's Matt all H. up to Matt H. He's getting pressure from all kinds of utility. Sumachi pushing one way. Yellow pushing another. And Yellow's going to take him down. Sable on the scan. There it is. Look at that. I love seeing camera in camera. You can see his little, he put it, he put it my fingers. We did it, we did it, the two of us. These guys are out here. These guys are having fun. These guys are playing. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah I mean, amazing job there by Omi. But they're having again. fun with it as well, Ampy. They're, Come they're on. loving it. They're having fun, and that's the whole point of this, right? I mean, you know, what you want to say about Royal Strive, and let's talk about Krakas jumping out on the rotation and Omi jumping in, and now Omi is top fragger so far. Right, on this right, right. You know, right, there I mean, you go. Things like that you know, play a big impact. And they may be down seven or three to seven, but, you know, they got momentum right now. Yeah. yeah and I just want to go, I want to revisit Cracker Jay's grenades. I, I, again and again, it almost feels like every round he's picking up grenade kills. I just don't know how he does Leaf it. Leaf has been really good too with the nades, but here comes another fast execute with Roll Strive, getting involved in the armory site. Thief's going to grab Matt Ace. Cracker going to grab Omi. 
Cooley gonna grab Frig, and Deet's gonna grab Cooley, and just like that, it's a two on four. Lon, though, gonna grab Cracker J, still battling up here as Lon gets two, picks up Thief as well, and now it is a two on two. Wow, can you keep up with that? Yeah, no. but the scout hasn't got in. They don't have the puck. They're gonna have to locate it. Meanwhile, Yellow Hat slowly pushing in, waiting for his backup. The scan hasn't got in, which means they've got time to do a slow retake. They don't have to rush this until the scan goes in. And even then, they'll have 45 seconds to do it in. Yeah, Yellow is a sneaky yeah, boy right now, just waiting for his teammates to launch to get set up. The scan comes out. But they're not in great positions right now. Lon's already identified where Samachi's coming from, but Yellow Hat sneaking in, picks up Nero, and that's a one on one. Lon knows he's there. Yellow also knows he's there. This is extremely hard. What, what, what just happened? happened? Did you just see that, ladies and gentlemen? Flip that two nades, one in each hand. <laughs> Didn't even have a gun in his hand. We that don't... is what we, you know, they heard me say, I want to see someone one up what we saw in Wrecked wow. versus Cobra Cartel. And that's exactly what you saw. No guns in hand, two nades around the corner. Boom, boom. Thank you very much. Yeah, we don't need guns Goodbye. where we're going, folks. Just a couple of nades and we'll be all right. And just like the that, compass. Vortex is on the cusp wow. of going to the grand finals. Eight wow. points in his match point. Royal Strive need to dig deep here and get something going. Absolutely. Well, Matt <laughs> H with two nades in his hand once nades. again. Akimbo nades, ladies and gentlemen. You'd love to see it happen. Wild. Royal Strive, though, switching it up. They're going to forget about Armory. They're going to send Matt H over there to do some utility work. I saw on spawn there. They dropped him a couple nades. It'll be interesting to see how he uses that as the rest of the team now slowly working towards the A site. Right, but he picks up Nero. But we just saw, like I was quietly saw, um, all of Vortex st rotating straight out. The moment the aggression didn't come out on B side, about five seconds later, they were moving. They were like, listen, they're not doing a fully aggressive play. They're going to be doing something else. Well, Thief pushed up and knew that there was no aggression coming in. Right. That's what happened, right? Yep. So as soon as he knew that, he let his teammates know. They rotated some over. Now they have three towards the A site. So Roll Strive looking to back up here. Look like they might be going back to A or back to B. They've got the time to do it. A minute 10 left on the clock. Looking for those picks. It's four versus four right now. Royal Strive again on the edge of the abyss. We saw this Cobra Cartel versus Wright. We're seeing it from Royal Strive. They are on the edge. Oh, good, good pick up. Cooley taking some damage though as he did so. The main thing is, he lived to tell the tale. Yeah, here's Matt H working the way to catwalk here. Royal Strive has all kinds of mid control right now, but just not set up to execute on the site. They only have 45 seconds left here. They need to make a play, and they need to make a play soon. They gotta be feeling the pressure here too. If Vortex only needs one more round to go to the grand finals. Thing is, I'm Vortex watching them. I just Matt saw H. Matt H's uh, visor turn remaining. off. I'm not seeing them talking to each other right now. Like they're clamping up. Oh, me find Samachi. They two see. versus two now. Three versus two actually oh. in favor of oh, Royal right. Strive as they execute on the A site. Yellow Hat though, gonna find Cooley. And now he's gonna fall back. He's gonna let his teammate know he's in a little bit of trouble. He has to hear them. Lon's looking for Yellow. Yellow's not going to let him find him. He's going to wait for his teammate, and Lon's going to go for the scan. There's yeah, only seven, seven seconds left on the clock, clock here. Yeah, Yellow takes him down. It's all up to Lon now. The scan gets set up. Frank's going to take down Lon, and that's going to be it. Good night, Royal Strike. You put up a great match, but you're not going to the finals. And Vortex are in what a lot of people said was gonna, what we're going to be seeing today. Rex versus Vortex Lappy. Yeah, just aggression. I mean, it was aggression and hitting the shots, watching the angles, and, you know, the ability to turn on, off, to, you know, go from offense to defense and defense to offense and be able Absolutely. to flip that back and forth. You know, I mean, we, we saw, you know, amazing job from, obviously, from Royal Stride. You know, some amazing utility, great work, right. great teamwork, right. but we just saw Vortex not do much amazing. wrong. And that, Ladies and gentlemen, can we get a round of applause for Yellow Hat and that ridiculous double knee round the corner? Yellow Hat, what a play! Yeah, that was crazy. I've never seen anything like that. He doesn't need guns where he's going. Just grabs both the nades and picks that up. That was wild. It's like guns, guns are for, you kept saying about how Cracker J is with them, but listen, I'm the guy with the nades right here. You keep telling me Cracker J is the one doing it. I've got two of these. <laughs> yeah, big plays from Vortex. Really well played by Strive, but unable to come and beat right. Vortex today. Anyway, it looks like we're going to cut across the valley now. We're talking to Cracker J, and I can't wait to hear it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and make some noise for Vortex. <laughs> All right, I'm here with the Nade Specialist. You guys know his name already. What's up, Cracker? How does it feel to be in the finals? Uh, it's crazy. I'm, I'm surprised, like, I don't know. Everything's just insane that we're here. And I don't know. There's no, like, words I can say to even explain how I feel at all. I know exactly what you mean. Being on land for the first time and also making it to the finals is absolutely phenomenal, right? But now you're going against Nadix and his squad. My question is, are you guys ready for that? you have any words to say about that matchup? Uh, I think we're ready. We, we already know him from uh, Pavlov League as well. So I think there's still like a rivalry. 
Well, I think we can do it for sure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the rivalry continues as you hear it now. One more time, let's give it up for Vortex and also my man Cracker. Good job. Let's send this right back over to the analyst desk. Fellas, how I do mean, you feel about that? Cracker needs to work on his smack talk. Cracker, that was, that was you know, <laughs> was very, re very respectful. But come on, where was, the, where was like, you know, we're going to destroy you. We've been ready for this. We're going to take you down. I'm a little bit disappointed. Vortex, you can hear me. Work on that smack talk. Yeah, we're going to need to see a little bit better out of Vortex on the Smack Talk game for sure. Yep. But that was a wild match. I mean, Vortex, super good aggression. Royal Strive had some crazy plays too. Really, really, really exciting stuff. And I guess that means that Vortex and Rack will be facing off for the grand finals match and $20,000 <laughs> live wow. in the Miami Vale Major. Wow. That's crazy. I mean, these, these guys, I was about to say kids, some kids, some guys, some men, you know, you know, playing video games for money on a stage live in front of everybody here in Miami from all across the world. You couldn't ask for something better than this. No, no, especially, you know, VR esports, it's coming alive. Vale is doing it, Ibrial is doing it, with all the sporting sponsors, etc. It is coming alive, and you know, we're at the grassroots again. This is the grassroots of something amazing. Yep. All right, you've seen the setup here, you've seen the quality of everything we've seen, certainly the quality of the teams, the quality of play, and this is the future. If you ask me, this is, this, we're seeing the start of something that's gonna be beautiful. I'm not saying like other games are gonna go away, but I'm saying VR is gonna find its momentum from events like this, specifically this event, yep. done by IVRL, done by Axe Labs, in games like this, like Vale, which is yeah. going to be like just trailblazing the way. And I think, I think we're going to cut over to Belly now for another interview with Strive. Oh, you got that right. So once again, we're back here for an interview. And you came here with your family. You had a good time in Miami, OK? Playing on land, what was that experience like for you, especially for a first time? Uh, you got to react fast and like hit those headshots. Like all these guys are insane. Like you have to be fast. Oh, definitely. Now, when I asked your teammates about who the player to watch is, it was definitely you. You didn't disappoint, even despite the loss. My question to you is, did you guys learn anything as a team to come back better next time you're on this main stage? Yeah, we got to make some, you know, maybe new strats, adapt faster. All right, definitely. And also dodge those grenades because Cracker was everywhere with those. But also, I want to say congratulations again for being here. You're going to play in the third game relegation game. And also, we'll catch you next time, all right? All right, let's send this back over to the analyst desk. Fellas, we're halfway through. We are wow. indeed halfway through. We are. And I mean, Wrecked versus Vortex. I mean, some, some people could have saw it coming. And, uh, you know, you're talking about uh, Wrecked, number one, ranked number one, have not lost a game yet. Right. They have not lost a map. Right, they've not lost a map? They have not they've lost, lost a, a map. map? They have not lost a kidding? map. <laughs> coming undefeated throughout. But listen, this. if there's going to get a team that can do it, who's it going to be? It, it's going to be Vortex. It Probably could be Vortex. Vortex. Yeah, it's going to be Vortex. Yeah, like, like, I mean, this is written in the stars. People expected Wrecked versus Vortex is what we're going to get. It's what people wanted to see. Right. And I want to let you know the, the, the customer is always right. Yeah. Yeah, Vortex being the one team that came here knowing the index, you know, they were more familiar with the index than anybody else. You know, yeah. having the, you know, playing, they're more of an index team. They played with an index longer. Uh, Wrecked coming in only having, you know, less than a month time trying to figure out that index. So that could be the other deciding factor. You got Rex, who's just an amazing talent. You know, they got a ton of talent. Um, not saying that Vortex doesn't either. They do, but we've seen Vec, Vort, uh, Rex just dominate, right? right? So now we're going to see that against the people who can dominate on the index. But we've seen Vortex dominate as well. Like, like don't take that away from them. We've seen them no, dominate equally, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think the, 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 the playing field is kind of even now with, you know, low latency on land. And these guys know each other because they've been yeah. playing PAV together for a long time. There's, right. you know, some rivalry there. I don't know how much they want to let on, but it definitely exists mm -hmm. in some capacity. Capacity, right, so it's going to be really an exciting match, and let's not forget about our third place match, right? We have Cobra Cartel and uh, Roll Strive, which will be happening after our quick halftime show, where we have Dahota and Thrill Seeker uh, DJing. Man, that, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm, I'm sorry, that, I'm, I'm we're going to see some pumped, VR but. DJing, and that's that's just next level. Yeah, I was yeah, watching yeah. some of it From last Smash. night, and it was sick. It was. Yeah. The sounds were amazing. I thought it was. I thought it literally was a DJ until yeah, we yeah. saw the guy in the corner with a headset on. And someone pointed out. I was like, "No, that guy's just playing on his quest. He's not. He's not making the music." Yeah, and they're like, "No, dude, dude, he's playing. He's making the music." It's like, "What? what? Yeah. Really? That's a thing? Cool, cool." I tried something like that, but I'm, I've got no like rhythm. No rhythm. I've got no hair, and no. I think you need to have hair to have rhythm. That guy know, had some impressive hair. Yes, <laughs> and very. He does have very. You'll see for yourself, ladies and gentlemen. He has very some a very uh, impressive hair. Uh, and speaking of which, um, you saw Veli has a nice head of hair. You saw these guys do. I did before this event. I thought we all had like a like a pack that we were all going to shave off. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. For the event. Yeah, I must have missed the memo on that one. Yeah. No. Um, oh, you took the free haircut outside. <laughs> yes. yes. We did do right, that. That's right. <laughs> right. Well, we're going to be cutting to a uh, halftime. 
Um, after we talk about the prize pool coming up. Yeah. Um, which is what? 20,000 for the winner? Yeah. 20,000 20, for the winner. Yeah. 10,000 for... 10,000 for second place. 5,000 for uh, third place. And then there's, I believe, some, some merch and Yeah, there's some merch for fourth place. You all fourth place also stuff. get like a high five. Yep. I get a high five. I, I will give from everybody radar, a high five. From radar. Yeah, yeah, for me. I give great yeah. high fives. I mean... One thing I will say is it makes me, like, having no hair makes me streamlined, which makes my high fives much more intense. So, once again, $35,000 to play for. The biggest portion of that going to go to the winner of the finalist, $20,000. Now, that is a great amount of money for playing a game you love with the people you love to play with. All right, so we're going to, uh, I think, take a little bit of a break for lunch, do the halftime show and all of that. And then after that, we'll have our third place match, Cobra. Roll Strive, and then Stay. we will have our grand finals, Racked and Vortex. So don't go anywhere, folks. The, the halftime show is actually going to be awesome. It's going to be pretty amazing. Yeah, and then if you are looking for food, there is, for those of us that are here, food trucks outside catering the event. Stay tuned.
tell me, tell me on talkback when you want him, and I'll cue him in. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to start our halftime show. If you can, come on down to the main stage.
Okay, excuse me. How's it going? Sorry. Stay here, I'm gonna walk to you. So, and then afterwards, I'm gonna get out of here. Type in and I'll take a picture. left, right? Stage left, right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the $35,000 Miami Vale Major. And right now, we already know who's going to be in the grand finals. We've all been having a good time so far. But before that, I have a special treat for you. We have two amazing guests in the building right now. But first off, coming straight from Venezuela and read by none other than Warner Music. It's my man, Dehoda. And you guys might know him behind his hits, Fria and El Cuarto. Let's go ahead and bring him on to the stage.
Hey, hello. Uh, my name is the Hotel 2021. Um, I'm from Venezuela. I live in in, in Colombia, Medellin. Uh, VR desde the the de December. Um, I love this. Um, uh, hago música, reggaeton, Afrobeat. Uh, welcome to my world, uh, music, VR, Latin, Eva. Dice. Ey, suele volumen. Suele, suele. Dice. Tú no tienes idea. Ya. Yeah. De lo que estoy sintiendo. A lo Ese. que me despierto. Ya me tienes envuelto. Estoy en una burbuja. Donde todo es perfecto. Mami, es que tú me gustas, ey, con todo y tú de... ¡Sube! Te juro, que esto no es solo por bellaquera, yeah. Ya yo no quiero estar con cualquiera, mami. Por ti yo dejé toda la loquera, la loquera, yeah. Te juro, ya, yeah. que esto no es solo por bellaquera, epa. Ya yo no quiero estar con cualquiera, mami. Por ti yo dejé toda la loquera, la loquera, yeah. Quiere Cristina, na, que tú me das más, no te quedes la tema, que no me importa nada, a mí no me importa nada de eso. La medicina, tu peso, ya para atrás no hay regreso, ya pasé ese proceso, ya no quiero exceso, a menos que sea de sexo, contigo por eso, por eso, epa, guau, guau. Te juro que yo dejé el algareteo contigo, monté el y el fumeteo, yo estoy firme, ya ni volteo, a la otra ni tan buena la veo. Todas tirando al perfil pa' bellaquear a mí, mí Rehabilitaste un camino Ya, yeah, ya yeah. Te juro, epa Que esto no es solo por bellaquera Uy Ya yo no quiero estar con cualquiera Mami Por ti yo dejé toda la loquera Busta 
Lo que la Lady le gusta ya te juro Que eso no es solo por bella pera Ya yo no quiero estar con cualquiera Mami, por ti yo de esto a la loquera La loquera, yeah Uy. Es para que lo que es, estoy muy feliz de estar acá con todos ustedes. Uy. La próxima canción se llama El Cuarto. The Next Music. El Cuarto. Es para que lo que es. Venezuela. Uy. Yo no te busqué. Eh. Tú no me buscaste. Yeah. No nos conocemos. Pero qué desastre. Hicimos en el cuarto, oh, oh, oh. Qué locura y el arrebato, oh, oh, oh. Yo no te busqué, tú no me buscaste. No nos conocemos, pero qué desastre. Hicimos en el cuarto, oh, oh, oh. Qué locura y el arrebato, oh. Epa, hoy, ya. Yeah. Yo no sabía que iba a encontrarme una mami como tú, mami como tú, yeah. Perreo pegadito de frente a poca luz, eh, a poca luz, eh. Sé que sería porque de primera no se compromete, no se compromete. Ah, me tienen una nota loca, lo duro que le mete, y si le mete. No sé ni quién es, pero le invité. No digo que no, digo claro que sí. Vámonos derecho, porque ya es un hecho. Afuera está el mercho, dime que lo que es. Ya, estoy seguro que nos vamos a volver a comer. Ya, epa, ya, ya no te busqué. Tú no me buscaste, ya. No nos conocemos, pero que desastre. Hicimos en el cuarto, oh, oh, oh. Qué locura y el arrebato, oh, oh, oh. Yo no te busqué, eh. Esto tampoco me buscaste, ay, qué desastre. Hicimos en el cuarto, oh, oh, oh. Qué locura y el arrebato, oh. Oh, 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 epa, epa, eh. Hey, thank you, muchísimas gracias. El de Jota, ta, ta. Hey, follow, follow me en Instagram, de Jota 2021. Thank you. Hey, sigan disfrutando, epa. Te lo Pásate buena, dulce como la avena, pero ahora pórtate mal y deja la pena.
right. The cleanest jacket in the game right now. I know. Where's the light? Fuck it. You guys, you guys are screwed up. Go ahead. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time for the second treat of the day. You guys already know the deal. We are about to see a performance by the one and only in you guys already know his name. It's going to be Thrill, one of the largest VR YouTubers out there, and also a longtime friend, Avell in X Labs. Let's go ahead and give it up. Miami, make some noise. Yo, so this is pretty much um, an ode to VR. Obviously, this is something that I love, something I'm very passionate about. I think everybody that's here is equally passionate. So hopefully you enjoy. Let's just throw it down. I love VR because it's a place where anything is possible and everything can be done. What it really means to me or what it has become to me has been like way more than I ever thought that it could be. And I, and I think that the main reason is because of the people that I've met. I just find it absolutely phenomenal how so many people come and work together on this crazy passion that literally is our entire future. For one, it's a different experience, but that's not really why I love it. Like, I love the VR games, I love everything VR related in terms of the hardware, the software, the games, right? But that's not really why I love VR. I love VR because of the community. My favorite part is being part of the community. I mean, you guys and coming to events like this, uh, the fight event in Miami. And being here with the community and seeing what they can do with this tech is amazing.
You guys are killing it, holy crap. My favorite part about VR is this. It's all of us. We can make this anything we want it to be, and we're making it pretty awesome. So uh, there's one thing I always say. It's we are VR, and I stand by that. We are VR. 
Now, let's go kill the finals. Let's go. Just signal me. You guys all right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and give it up for our two performers of the day, Dehoda and also Thrill. Make some noise. <laughs> Love the energy is very Miami in here right now. But as soon as we continue on with our $35,000 Miami Vale major, first we're going to send this over to an intermission and also the second part of Liv's video. Let's go ahead and check it out.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time to get the third place game started right now. But before we do, I'm going to go ahead and give a shout out to all of y'all for the beautiful stock as well. But we're going to send this over to the commentator desk right now. And fellas, my question is, are you guys ready for this matchup between Royal Strive and also it's going to be Cobra Cartel. Baby. Cobra Cartel. There we go. How are you guys feeling about that? I'm I mean, fire. Like, I mean, listen. These are both the underdogs now. They've got something to prove. You want to walk out of here with your held, head held high, right? It is not just about the third place prize. It is about the pride. All right, you got that right now. It's time to bring the teams to the stage. Let's go ahead and bring out Royal Strive. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before the teams comes out to the stage right now, let's go ahead and discuss what's been going on in the day just for a small moment. Fellas, in this matchup, what are we expecting, really? Well, I think we need to recap. And Lampy's the statistics guy, so Lampy, <laughs> who won, who lost? Yeah, well, uh, Royal Strive, I mean, they did, they did have a hard time against Vortex there, but they did put up a good fight. Yeah, right? they were no so, pushovers. So Vortex, or, uh, Royal Strive is going to have, you know, going into this match, they got to feel pretty good. Right, they're not, they're not sitting there sulking. Everybody's feeling pretty good still. Um, same, you know, same with Cobra Cartel. You know, they had a tough time against what, what is the number one team or coming in today was number one seeded yeah. team as in rec. You know, more or less the favorites of winning. So they were going up knowing they were underdogs. So we got two teams that, you know, lost their first match but still very hyped, very ready to go. Got great strats. Um, I think we're going to see an amazing match you know, for third place. You know, going in, we're going to be playing for, what, $5,000 for third place? Yes. Yep. I mean, there's a lot on the line. Yeah, but it's not about the money. It's about it's the not about You want to walk out of here not. with your head held high saying, we, look, we, we lost the, the main matchup, but we, we still won. You know, we still won the third place. And that's a big deal. Like, we have to reiterate, over, what is it, 70 teams entered this. This isn't just about the top four. Like, 70 teams right. entered this. And, you, and they made it. So there's a reason why all four of these teams have made it here, right? Right. But you came to Miami, you want to leave with some money in your pocket, right? Now, that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> you also want to go home, you know, feeling like you left it all on the table. You left right. it all on the stage, right? You don't want to right. go home feeling like you didn't perform, you didn't do well, you didn't give it your all, right? So both these teams are going to come out swinging. This is going to be the last match that they play here in Miami, the last match of this whole tournament, right? So For them, we still have the final. That's correct. Like, don't miss me. That is deal. correct. That's kind of a big deal. This is a big deal. Yeah, I agree actually. with you, Radar. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, Cobra Cartel, you know where you're at. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. They, they've got something to prove, right? They wrecked, right. by nature, wrecked by name. They wrecked Cobra Cartel. Cobra Cartel have to come out here swinging, show they are here for a reason. Give Royal Strive a hell of a game. I don't want to say I want them to win. I don't want them to lose. I want Royal Strive to win as well. There's no, you know, I want everyone to be a winner. I'm just like equal opportunities winners. But the point is, both teams have someone to prove. Yeah, and I had a chance to actually speak with Matt H. over lunch, and they're ready for this. They're ready for this. Ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time. Let's go ahead and bring out Royal Strive. This team was able to do it earlier on today, but job's not done yet. Let's go ahead and give them a round of applause once more, ladies and gentlemen. Tom, just a second here in the middle of the stage. So it's going to be our second time talking right here on the main stage. Are you guys ready to really pop off? Oh, we're ready. Yeah? All right, so the team that you're going against right now, my question to you is, is there anybody you guys have your eyes set on to really shut down to win this game? Orzo. He's been very scary in the previous game, so. All right, well, I wish you guys the best of luck. And when it comes to Orzo and the rest of Cobra Cartel, let's bring him out to the stage.
Cobra Cartel just hiding like silly these snakes. There they are. There they are. Coming there through are. the middle. Get, come Give on, guys. Where's the, Where's the walkout? Where's the walkout? Where's the walkout? Where's the walkout? Denied. Den Get off the stage. They had so much steez Get earlier. Up. Yeah. Maybe that was their downfall. Too much steez coming into it. This time they know, you know. Cobra, I believe in you if you don't, even if you don't believe in yourself. Look at me. <laughs> Cobra, look at me. You got this. Hey, let me, let me grab you. Up. Let me grab you, bring you to the middle of the stage right Good. now. I haven't had a chance to talk to you today for an interview, but my question is, are you ready for this matchup? We saw what happened earlier today on, but I feel like the job's not done with your squad yet. How do you feel? I feel like we're going to win this round. We're going to take third place. There you go. And nice. you especially, are we going to see a pop-off today? We're going to see at least two 5Ks today. Nice. At least two 5Ks. Nice. Best of luck. Make okay. us proud, all right? Live up to those promises. Let's send us back to the commentator desk. Let's get this game started. Yeah, I mean, we'd love to see the confidence, right? You got to come into this. You have to have confidence, right? You got to yeah. pump yourself up, get confidence. You know, it's been a long day. These guys, you know, went down to a loss in the first round, but it's not over, right? They're, no. still, they're still playing for something here. They still got a lot ahead of them, and it's going to be a great two matches coming up. Absolutely. Vortex. Uh, over there. Royal Strive. Lon. Guys, I know I gave Cobra some plaudits there, but you've got something to prove as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think? Who's going to... Uh, Lampy? Yeah. Already know, you've already made your thoughts known. Zuck. So I'm looking for Royal Strive to come out swinging here. Like I said, I had a chance to catch up with Matt H over lunch there, and uh, I think they've identified where they went wrong in their previous match of the day, so... Look for them to make some adjustments and come out swinging here. I mean, it's all well and good to make uh, adjustments for a match that's been. This is a different, completely creature. Like over here, we got Cobra. Well, specifically, I think that what they had practiced wasn't executed so well earlier. Right. So it's about refining that, talking to everyone, make sure everyone's on the same page. So. So they think their weakness was in the execution, not necessarily yes. in the enemy that we're facing. Yes. Okay, I get that. I get that. What about you, Lumpy? Yeah, I think they're going to collect themselves and, and figure out what went wrong on the first map and the first uh, or the first matchup itself. Right. Um, you know, they went against a very powerful team with a lot of, um, you know, it, you know, gathered themselves. They had the time to figure it out and right. and come back and figure out their strats. So um, we saw Wrecked versus Copa Cartel, right? We, that was the opening bracket. That was the favorite versus the underdog. Right. And Rex lived up to the name. They were a favorite for a reason, right? Yep. Came in number one for a reason. Yeah, absolutely. 17, well, now 21? 19 and 20. 19, sorry, they pistols. played 20 pistol rounds. They've won 19 pistol rounds. They've dropped one pistol Only round. Only one. But that's crazy to me. That is like, that is a stat that is, you know, even, even if it they drop, out, right? it stands out. It right. stands out. And it says something about their skill, about their aptitude with pistols. Right. Um, and they're here for a reason, and they're number one for a reason. They're the favorite for a reason. Vortex, if you're out there, you know you're up against. You're a hot team, there's no doubt about it. And you need to bring it in the final. However. Yeah. But, you know, coming in today, you know, we've got Cobra Cartel, and we've got Royal Strive. And none of these teams, none of these players, you know, they don't, they understand, I should say. They don't understand what it's like to play in the big game. You know, Cobra Cartel comes from a different game, a different FPS game. They come from Population 1, you know, very popular, you know, game <laughs> very one popular population but anyway they have won championships in that game so right, yeah. they they've been on the big game they they understand the pressure but you know it's different when you get in land yeah. right it's different when you get in front of everybody when you're playing for money like this it's different that all adds up but it's different when you're playing veil vale, cuz veil vale is much oh, more yeah. esports like centric it's a more like a, a more in it game i mean pop one's a fun game it's, it's a, a fun, fun game, game. This is esports. Competitive. It's this still competitive. Is, it, you're not like Veil. Vale. Veil vale right. is like killer. Veil vale right. is the game you play if you come it is to the VR ultimate. and you want to play esports. Veil vale is the game you come to play. Veil's the ultimate. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's a the game one. designed for esports, right? right? right. Like, it's the, that's why we're here. That's why we're on a stage like this because it's designed for esports. That's what it was for. It's so. fire to play. It's, it's, and the most important for me is fire to play. But because I'm not that great at playing, I'm casting. And it is 10 times better than any other VR game to cast than any other VR game because nothing else has this. The, like the, the, the maps are designed about being able to play and see. Like everything is open, the beautiful maps. The, the, the guys are taking back all the feedback from the players, from the casters, redesigning the maps, make them much more enjoyable to watch. And that is so important to me. Yeah, that can't be understated, the involvement of the development team, like making this game and, and tailoring it to the competitive players and right. getting that feedback and really, you know, listening to what these top level players want to see in a game and building it towards that direction. We've seen that over the course of this tournament, how many improvements we've seen to the game. Um, so, you know, hats off to them. My hat's still on, but literally hats off. Um, so, I mean, like, yeah, this is a, a VR esports game. It's designed, it has one purpose, to be played on a stage like this. So, um, and these guys are ready to play. They're they are fired up, and I love to see it. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the other bracket, of course, was uh, 
Vortex right. versus Royal Strive. A closer game. We thought Royal Strive were going to be more dominant on the second map, Mar. Mar yeah. um, and they showed some of that. You know, there were so many close rounds. In Kitty, it was 4-1, 5-1, 4-1. You know, a lot right. of, like, when Vortex won, they won hard. On Mar, it was close all the way through. We, you know, we saw so many opportunities for Royal Strive to get away. They just weren't able to make that, uh, you yeah. know, that translation to victory. Yeah, Vortex just showed a lot of aggression. I mean, it was just a ton of aggression the whole time. Um, they just, they put the pressure onto Royal Strive like right. I don't think Royal Strive was ready for. You know, they had to react fast, they had to move fast, and yeah, yeah, by absolutely. the time that the aggression came through and uh, Vortex made that aggression work, they took over the site, they turned their offense into defense, and now, you know, they were able to cut off all the rotation lanes. Absolutely, absolutely. So, going into this, what can Cobra Cartel do? They're still the underdogs in this match. I mean, there's no mistake about it. Cobra Cartel are still the underdogs. What are they going to do? What can we expect to see from them to bring this back? Well, I think where Cobra Cartel struggled in the first match is that they were kind of forcing them onto sites. They weren't getting good effective entries before getting onto the site, and that's so critical, right? You, you start to delete one or two guys on that site, it's a lot easier to take it, where they were, right. you know, running into 5v5 situations, trying to take a site over and over again, that's very difficult. So they got to find a way to pick off some of the more aggressive players from uh, Royal Strive or anybody that's kind of straggling around or find where they can you know, probe a weakness and be successful and then punish them for that. That's what Cobra Cartel needs to do here is find those early round picks. Well, how about this, right? On Kitty, we saw Vortex with super aggression being super successful against Royal Strive. You think Cobra Cartel will be making notes going, you know what, it was working for them. It's aggression. We know aggression. Why don't we just emulate and make it our own? It's possible. I mean, I've played with all these players before. They all have the capability to do it, right? So it just depends on how cohesively they can mix that into their game and how effective they can make that. Right. Yeah, right. And I think Cobra Cartel is going to have to figure out their utility. We, we saw a real lack of utility from them against Rec. Um, uh, maybe they used utility, but it wasn't used in a dominant fashion to where it worked, right? And it was, you know, the kills came out. Now listen, we weren't seeing any crackers on that team. And I'm we sorry, Cracker J, crackers. wherever you are, Cracker J, those nades were fire. Uh, and I believe in you. I can't wait to see. I, I, someone's pointing him over there. Cracker J with the nades. If you didn't see it, go back and watch it. Those yeah. nades were insane. And, and we need to see that from both teams. We need to see that kind of level of confidence. So many times we see people just throw the nade. It's a bit of utility. You don't want to die with utility on you. I right. get it. I've been yeah. there. We've all been there, right? Yeah. Um, the you got to make them count. Yeah. And what we saw in the second match, too, is a lot of utility that was saved towards the end. Right. You know, with the Royal Stride match. You know, you're saving that utility to the end where, you know, you can start pinpointing where these players are. And you can use that audio cue to understand where the players are rotating from. And then you can use them smokes on defensively, uh, blocking their line of sight. Also uh, pushing through for uh, they can put, you know, those flashes on them, you know, push with the flash. You've got the audio cues and the flash. Um, and, those, and those nades, you know, in the pinpoint spots where you, the meta spots that people are going to be sitting. Right, but it's not just about the time, right? I mean, Zuck, it's about the timing. It's yeah. not about just hearing the audio. It's about going, right, uh, I know that a team will be there by now. You know, specifically, um, it's about knowing that that team will tend to have a player around that area at about 130 mark, right? right. And they, they do that kind of level of, like, homework. These teams at that high level, they're looking at, like, right, at 120, I expect to be, uh, you know, a Royal Strife player to be around about there. You throw that nade, and, man, when you get that kill off that intel, and it's the player you expected to be there, Crackers, for instance, who was kept getting those nades from Crackerjack. Such a grenade like, magnet. Exactly. <laughs> like, you know that they put in the homework. It's paying off. And, man, what a vibe when you get that, like, kill current, like, correspondence yeah. saying, like, the nade has done its job. Yeah. yeah. A yeah. blind kill, a 100 killer missile sent out. Yeah, and that's, that's an amazing feature in the game. When you know you got the kill, like, when you pre-fire through smoke or, you right. know, you throw a nade from a distance. And, you know, in some, some games you're like, I don't know if I got anybody. I'm not sure. Hopefully I did. But in this game, you can tell instantly in your, in your feed, in your headset that you know you got that kill. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, all these players are going to be studying those timings, too. And let's not forget that both of these matches were casted on Twitch. They were live here. These players have been here. Oh, yeah. They're going to have some opportunity to do a little bit of homework prior to these matches. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, both, every team that's come has come with more than five players. All right, yep. we saw, we've seen some, like, tag outs. We've seen other players come in. We saw Omi come in in, in the place of uh, Crackers. Crackers. Crackers, because he can't be any native. Because he's a grenade magnet. So those other players are making those notes. They're doing the homework. They're like adding it all up. And when the team is finished, they, you know, they're saying, right, we need to, this is what we need to watch out for, especially in the case of Vortex versus Rex. You know, those yeah. are the two winning teams. They've done the homework. They're going to be going into this live, knowing they're doing. But both of these teams have been doing that same homework as well. Let's not count them out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's not forget about, you know, we talked about uh, Cobra Cartel and their past history in Population 1, but let's not forget about Strive. You know, Strive is a combination of two different teams. They're royal, royalty and they're Strive. Right, royalty comes from uh, the Pavlov side, 
And, you know, Strive comes from the contractors, both two FPS games in VR, you know, lots of, you know, previous um, talent coming from there. You know, they got a lot of experience in uh, VR, P or, uh, VR shooters. Um, so it's not only just Veil, but they're rolling over that, that game into this and, and the understanding of it. Pavlov, you know, is a real close type game here to Veil. So, you know, the multiple championships between them as well. Um, and but ultimately, I mean, again, Veil is a different creature. Veil is the esports game Vail. you want to see online. Yes. Right. This is, this is where you see this, this thing coming down. When you look at Rex, they've got Nadix and other players. But Nadix predominantly was born in the fires of Veil. And it shows. Yeah. Like, he's, he's, right. he's a creature born for Veil. Uh, and it comes true. Has he got the best KD today? I don't know. I didn't see. I mean, he was he was up there at the top. Yes. Yeah, he's like definitely but top three. I think Clev actually was actually uh, oh, really? over top of him. Okay. You know, his teammate. Oh really? And what but about Clev? Is... We, we definitely definitely saw like Crackers and uh, Yellow Hat yeah. and other players going popping off. Uh, my point is that Vale is like the apex when it Vail, comes oh, to yeah. you know Vale's the ultimate. To the, right? to the e -sport shooter. And, and Zuck, you've been there. You've done it. Yeah. I mean, I played games in VR before. I played, you know, onward contractors and stuff. But Vale is you know the top dog for competitive oh, yeah. VR first-person shooters. But all right. Here we are going live with uh, match number three, which is brought to you by Rezel, which is a sports trainer available on Quest now. All right, and I'm no offense, but it's a game you should play. Wow. Yeah, I'm well, with that. Thank wow. you for that. Um, we are going live into match three. Cobra Cartel versus Royal Strive for the third place prize. 5K on the line, ladies and gentlemen. Get hyped, because this is going to be live. All right, we can see right now Cobra Cartel on the aggression. They are the colonists right now, pushing through the center area. They got one, three, one split. Oh, wait, we are actually seeing one player is already down. So one, two, one split. They're going quite through the middle. It is the pistol round, like I keep saying. It's the round like no other. Pistols is its own sub game in this, and I love it. Good bet, getting out aggressive there. Not able to find anyone. Roll Strive falling back here and rotating towards the B site now defensively, whereas Cobra Cartel really hasn't committed here. Just trying to work some nades, try to get an entry here. Um, it looks like Orza was uh, unfortunately may have fallen into the water. I hate to see it. Cool line nine trying to work on Patia, but oh. Patia's gonna take him down. I mean, we were talking about like lack of accuracy from pistol, and I gave into someone. That was accuracy. That was a pinpoint shot. There was nothing accidental about that. Good guy getting that mat. Patia getting Omi, and it looks like Cobra Cartel are going in hot on this opening round with four two advantage in the favor. Yeah, and Michael gonna get Nero there, and Lon Wick, the last member standing for it. Royal Strive gonna take down Michael, trying to go to work here on Patia. Gonna grab him here. Z-Link's gonna take down Sophia, and that's gonna be the first round in favor of Cobra <laughs> Cartel. And yeah. you love to see it. Look at that camaraderie between those two players. They're shooting each other friendly. Friendly fire. I mean, that was literally the epitome of friendly fire, Lampy. It was, and uh, you know, we we want to joke a little bit. Orzo right off the bat, you can't even team kill, but yet he's at negative one because he fell in the water <laughs> right off a of spawn, it seemed like. So <laughs> you hate to see it. You hate to you see hate it. You hate to see it, but it happens. Uh, yeah, excellent job there by Cobra Cartel. I'm going live into here for round number two, our first gun round here. Cobra Cartel setting up with four into the lower skate park area with Good Bet trying to work his way through middle. It looks like they're going to go aggressive here. Nades ringing out. Might catch someone rotating to B. Not quite. A couple more nades coming in here. Patia getting aggressive. Orzo trying to get involved here on the grass area. Look at this aggression on side B, though. I mean, fine. Orzo's already taken out. Mike taking out Matt Hake on the refrag. Nero taking out Zed Lake. Guys, slow down. I can't keep up. Patia taking down Nero. Frag to frag to frag, back to back. It's happening on side B. And the aggression of the Cobra Cartel is very, very reminiscent of what we saw from Wrecked against Royal Strive in our map, match two. Patia, last one here, standing for Cobra Cartel on the B site here. It's going to take down Lon, but he's going to still have to deal with Omi and Cooley, who are rotating through the grass area now, looking for Patia. He goes the scan. He does have the scan set up now in a 1v2 situation. And it's really interesting. When there's a minute left, when you see that, you know, that means it's against the colonists. When it goes to 45 seconds after the scan, it's against Royal Strive. It's against the defenders because then that clock is against you. Here, Patia's in a little bit of an awkward spot here, caught by two members of Strive moving in, but he's able to take down Obi, and now it's just a 1v1 with Cooley rotating we around. He hears him. Look, he's using his time here. And we can see camera in camera right now. We can see Patia one to one with what's happening on the screen. And I love this. I love to see like VR here. with the actual actual person playing the game. Patia wow. huge. Wow, huge by Patia. Wins that 1v2 to take the second round for Cobra Cartel. Amazing two nothing. work. Amazing work. Yeah, amazing work by Cobra Cartel. They got the scan in and then he went to switch the defensive mode. You could see the ring, you know, the ring around the rosy type of thing. You know, he was playing with the time. He had 45 seconds. He had to burn that time without dying. 
So he heard the footsteps moving closer. He rotates around the outside. Ro rotates, 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 and just kept that ring around the rosy yep. going until he found the perfect. And kill. the thing is, you're not wrong. The moment you're making the like the defenders play against the time, right. they're putting themselves under pressure. They, they can't take the time looking for that kill. Nope. It gets down to a certain point. You're like, you got, have to rush in to try and get that kill. And we're straight off the bat here. Again, that aggression from Cobra Cartel, they are reminiscent of what we saw from Ranked. Yeah, they're getting involved quickly on B-Site now. I think they've identified their weakness. Horzo's going to take down Mad H, but Nero's there to turn the frag, actually pick up Z-Link. They've got control on grass. Now Nero with the 3K oh. takes wow. down Michael and Horzo. And that's going to leave it into a three-on-two situation here. Good bet. And Patia, the last one standing for Cobra Cartel. However, Patia does have the uh, the scanner here, rotating through. Omi's going to hear him swing out. Wow, take him down. did you see the speed of that play? He comes out, he ducks, he gets the shot. Patia fires, but it's over Omi's head. Now good bets in a one-on-three situation here. Trying to get the pop. One-handed, one-handed. Oh. Stop it. Just stop it. That's going to be the first round that on the board so for Wall Street. That is so How disrespectful. That is so disrespectful. How dare you? I don't you? even need two hands for this <laughs> shot. You can be the other one that's just waving at you goodbye. No, that's, you know, that's the enjoyment of it. Great job by Omi there as you're just using those audio cues, listening for that guide coming up, the footsteps coming up, and just the quick flick and the quick peek. One-handed to show off a little bit here. Right, right. There was no. <laughs> that was just so much confidence. I couldn't do that. Even if I know I could do it in one hand, I would <laughs> never dare. Are you kidding me? Especially in a live audience like this. Crazy. Yeah. We can see a 4-1 uh, split with a quiet push through the middle. They're going live, aggressive on the A side right now, though. Yeah, Cobra Cartel definitely picking up the pace here. Mad Age going to pick up. Good bet here, but Cobra Cartel steaming onto the site here. Omi's still in the back here. Sorry, Cooley, trying to find Michael here. Yeah, Look at those reactions. You just, I love the first person shoot. Did you just see them like flicking up that shot? Yeah, Longwick's gonna take down Michael. Cooley still holding the back here. Double oh, kill from Longwick. Matt H with two himself, and now Nero Boom. gonna take down Z Link, and that's gonna be the second round in favor of Royal Strive. That was a very quick round. And over to an analyst over that here. That was the a guy very with good the numbers. Round. No, I mean, just amazing defense there, obviously. I mean, you know, they held, they rotated quickly. They held the angles that they needed to get, and they hit the get shots ready. they needed to get. I mean, there, it was simple as that. Oh, yeah. One thing we keep, like, we, we haven't really, like, dug into is the fact that, right, mouse versus keyboard game, you know, mouse and keyboard games versus, you know, something like VR, a, a competitive shooter like this, you know, you, it's all about muscle memory and, you know, the, the movement of your hands when you're in mouse and keyboard. When it's in VR, it's your entire body. You're using a yeah. complete su different subset of muscle. Your entire body's in use, right? So it's not just a case of training your hands. You're training, like, every last bit of your twist on those shots. And we're seeing, like, the epitome of the top at this point. Nades ringing out here. Big sight hold, 3K right away. Royal Strive taking down three members of Cobra Cartel on the A hold here. Cobra has some ability to hold the site here. Z-Link's already out. Orzo also standing with him. Orzo's going to take down Matt H. And Z-Link and Orzo are going to try and rotate out here. They have the scanner. They can go wherever they want. They have a minute 20 here. They're going to have to deal with three members of Royal Strive here as they're rotating through middle. Longwick definitely smelling them a little bit. Omi's going to take down Z-Link. Longwick's going to take down Orzo on the trade. And wow. now that is three rounds for Royal Strive. Three to two now. Back Blink to and you miss it. Back. Blink and you miss it. You do. You know, and then A, the A defense is really dominant here for uh, Royal Strive. I mean. They're, they're, they're showing their exactly what they need to be doing. I mean, they've adapted quickly. Cobra Cartel with a quick two points, and we've seen Royal Strive now with a three-point sprint yeah. as they're figuring out Cobra Cartel. Cobra Cartel were out, fast out of the gate, but Royal Strive showing that adaptability, figuring out what their enemy are doing, reacting, and we're seeing them with three points on the board now. And Cobra Cartel going to set up for a B-take here. Looks like they're going to go quickly through Orzo and Michael, trying to get some nades on that grass area. Matt A's going to catch Batia with a nade. Nice wow. deep nade there. And that's the scanner down, so that's going to that's gonna cause some issues here for Cobra as Orzo takes down Matt H. And a four on four now. Nero holding back here on B site. Omi's going to take down good bet. Orzo with a 3K now on Omi and Cooley. Now we're in a two, two, on two versus two. two. But look at Longwing's health. Again, I love the UI at the bottom of this. You can see all of the utility they've got. But look at Longwing's health. He doesn't have any. Like, He's there is nothing. nothing there to show. Look at Nero, his teammate, full health. Yeah. You can also see Longwick, 6-3-1, Nero, 5-2-1. If you want two players live in Royal Strive and Defense, these are the two you want left. These guys are cracked right now. They're on fire. They've got something to prove. Yeah, Orzo, though, 50% health himself. And once again, look at So they have picked up the scanner. Zeglink has it now. Nero's going to be holding down the B site here on the grass area. Lawn chilling at the back of B site. But Cobra Cartel's going to read that. And they're going to try to rotate over here to A, which is a smart play. they got 50 seconds left on the clock here. Yeah, they're playing it quiet, they're playing it stealthy, but at some point, wow, Z-Link with a pickup on Nero, unexpected, Nero feeling that. I mean, Z-Link was the guy to say he's going to get at least two 5Ks, so he's <laughs> feeling it, he's <laughs> he, feeling it. He threw out the, uh, he threw out the, the, the that is smack talk, and the he's confidence. living up to it right now. 
Lonwick now, the only one on Earl's drive remaining, but they're going that way, and Zeeling's gonna take him down. That's gonna wow. be a third round on the board for Cobra Cartel. These teams are trading rounds right now. Zeeling said it was gonna happen, and he's, getting, he's trying to he's make it a reality. Close. He's trying, he's oh, trying, yeah. like, you know, I mean, with everything he's got there, you know, getting a couple kills at the end, and right now it's, it's just a battle back and forth. I mean, three to three. I mean, everything is working out just right here. Good pushes, good holds, um, and, and man, these guys are hitting their shots. Absolutely. The, uh, the key thing right here is Cobra Cartel has brought that momentum back. They had the momentum, they lost the momentum. Royal Stripe was on a three-point sprint. Cobra Cartel, like, right, we need to reassess. We need to change it up a little bit. And Z-Link's like, you know what? I'll just get some more kills. How about that? That's an easy solution, definitely. <laughs> easy solution, right? I'll just get more kills. Guys, that work? Nice that, that, that does. There. Good bet taken out by an amazing nade from Omi in the mid-ground. Again, that's the timing. He knows about this time, if I throw an eight there, I'm gonna get a kill, and guess what? He's rewarded by that kill confirmation. Yeah, it's a big play from over there on the bridge stairs position as Michael's coming out here to support Z-Link fighting. Matt Age at the end of the alley. Omi's still here though at bridge, not gonna let them cross over. Cobra's in kind of an awkward position. They've got two at aim, two in middle, but they're not able to get out of middle right now. No. Uh, you hate to be trapped in that position, but it doesn't matter. It's just one player, and meanwhile, the real push is coming out from A. Also picking up Omi, big pick, but now they're sprinting through the middle, actually faking an A push, moving into B. Yeah, two players from Cobra Cartel are moving up towards B. Patia, though, with the with the uh, scanner, still over on the bridge stairs in a two on four situation. Nero's gonna Nero grab Zeeling. Nero, angry about getting picked up cool, by Zeeling previously. Patia. Boom, wow, there it is, Royal Strive. Yeah, that was, that was something there from uh, Cobra Cartel. They started on the B push. They tried to make the fake going to A, and then they ran into a little bit of a wall going that way, and then they tried to go back to B. You know, sometimes in long rotations and then back and forth do work out, but when you still got two or three guys left up, you know, they can still stay on A and B together and guard both sides, and it's really hard to rotate back and forth. You know, oh. if there's only one defender up, you know, they could make that fake and go back and forth. But yeah, but that defenders. rotate is amazing. Whenever you get yes. that rotate and it, and, and, and it works, and it works. Off, yeah, when you, it works. you draw yeah. the defenders to A, you go to B, you, you make it convincing by throwing bodies out of Matt Man. H with these amazing nades on the skate park. You love to see from Matt H. It's exactly what we expect from him. I just expect to see him doing a double nade. He gets a kill in the middle of a good bet with the bullets. Michael and Orzo in kind of an awkward position. Now Omi's going to take down Michael and Orzo. Big 2K from him. Now it's all up to Z-Link in a 1v4 situation. It's not quite a 5K, but now he's got an opportunity to get it. <laughs> he's got no teammates to get in the way right now. It doesn't matter. Neuro's like, you know what, Z-Link? How about I get the 5K? Yeah, what a shutdown on the defense there. I mean, they saw the rotation coming quick. They tried to push through, and you know, the offense tried to push through the skate park quickly, but they picked up on it. The good rotations, and the rotations were fast. Analyst, as always, on point. Zuck, Cobra losing momentum. They got a point in, but Royal Strive have found the groove. They lost one point in the last six rounds. Yeah, Royal Strive has clearly made some adjustments here. I think Cobra needs to slow it down. They're reading their fast, aggressive pushes, and it's not really working out for them anymore. Right. A slow round, feel it out, grab some picks. Yeah, and we are on the round swap right now. Royal Strive, now the aggressors against Cobra Cartel's defense. It's the pistol round. You hate to play it, you love to see it. In my case, I'm so bad at the pistol rounds. Finding Matt H, a big one because Matt H is so good on the pistols. But look, Royal Strive is rotating over, but Cobra Cartel wow. is not going A. They're going to try and hit B here. Orzo. Matt H sold it. He sold the push on A, and the real push is coming out on B. It's coming in hot, heavy, hard. There's only one defender on it, but the rest of Cobra Cartel realize the fake out. They're coming in hard. They're trying to rotate back on B site here. Orzo's going to die to Nero. Royal Strive has some site control now in a two on three, but. Cobra Cartel rotating in fast and watch the flank. They've got another member of Cobra Cartel coming in behind him. Healy's trying to, trying to do everything he can, but he's overwhelmed <laughs> with two players wow, there. Wow, did you see the disrespect that Good Bets puts him down, stands over because you know what? You double, triple tap just to make sure these Royal Strives taste dead. Yeah, Royal Strive with the aggression, man. They played it just right, and they got B control very, very quickly. Round but one thing they forgot to do when they got the B control is they forgot to spread out and guard yep. the lanes. They all went straight to the artifact, and they all got in that little circle. Right, and then they all got pounced down from the defense. They should have spread out. They should have covered archers. They should have covered, you know, a little bit more ankles. It you is need easier that said concentrated than done. aggression to take but, the site. But that's, you know, that's that's the next step. That's the next level. That's what the team communication has to come in. Yeah, you maybe, have to figure maybe, maybe, out, maybe, hey, maybe. we got site. We need to split up. All right. Okay. I can see it. I can see. It. Trust me. Well, all sorry, right. I'm slowing it down here. <laughs> Watching for those nades early now. They're gonna try and explode out of B. Mad H running up into the alley position here. Trying to get involved with Omi, it's supporting. Patia with a nade. That's dangerous. Almost gets Matt H. 
Now we're seeing like unmitigated aggression from Royal Strive. I mean, we saw it from Cobra Cartel. It worked down the patty on the double. Takes down Cooley, takes down Omi. One shot for both, two for one. And now it's just down to one Royal Strive player. Nero's left. If there's any Royal Strive player who get cracked, get that 5K. It's Nero as he tries to prove it. He's got a 2K straight away. He's got three more to go though, ladies and gents. And let's not forget Nero's above double digits already. I mean, he has the, the possibility of doing this. Wow. Yeah, Nero's definitely playing really, really well right oh, now. But Orzo oh, says oh, no oh. way, shuts him down. And that's going to be a tie game, 5-5 to five here. Brilliant. Yeah, Brilliant. To, beautiful job. I mean, the only thing Royal Strive did is it looked like they all lined up coming up through Skate Park. They took that second left, basically, Brown going up towards game. Arches. Yeah, right. And they were all lined up. The defense swung on them and got a couple kills. Yeah, I mean, that 2K as well. One yeah. shot, two deaths. Right. You'd love to see it. And when you're the guy doing it, trust me, I've been there. Feels when good. I, when I get that 2K <laughs> for, like, hey, pulling thanks. the trigger once, you're like, sweet, thank thanks. you. Do that again more, please. Right. Yeah, it looks like Royal Strive going to go for an A push here, nice and silently with uh, what looks like Matt H. Let's see if he can sell it again. Sell that fake, yep. yep. They talked about this before in the interview that we did with them. They wanted to sell that fake. You sell the fake, though. The problem is the moment they see Matt H die, these guys are clever. They know if Matt H dies, that's a fake push. Guys, go the other side. The, all of the four other players will be there. They neither need to condition Cobra Cartel. So actually, if Matt H dies, the real strike's behind him. That would be the next level play. Well, look at the defense. The defense is rotating. Four of them moved over to B. Yeah, it's only going to be Michael here as four members of Strive are trying to battle with him. Now, Cobra Cartel stra scrambling to rotate back here. Nate takes down Cooley. He's done. <laughs> ah, good Nate. Good Nate, Patia. Now, Strive does have some sight control here. Michael trying to battle back. Omi takes down Patia. Michael's in a really awkward position <laughs> here. Matt, Matt H, H just waiting for him. Swings oh, out oh, in the trade. Michael still gets that. That's insane. Matt H was quiet and ready for him, but the reaction speed on Michael means that he gets the trade. Good bet. Picking up Lomwick. Nero and Omi, the two members of Royal Strive, remaining to hold this against three members of Cobra Cartel. They're in the backside position here. They're not in a bad place. They've got 30 seconds left on the scan that they've set up. Omi's going to trade with Good Bet. Wow. Now it is a one on two. Nero versus Orzo and Z-Link. Nero's trying to play time in the smoke here. Swings out and Z-Link's going to take him down. And they got time to disable the scan. Yeah, Plenty let's, of time. Let's give that round to Matt H. I mean, he did sell it. He sold it enough to make yep. the, the defense yeah. move. He had four of them shift over, right? And then what he did is he went through mid, he went over the bridge, and he held that rotation, that lane, right? At the bridge lane and through pond. And even though he did trade out, but he stopped that rotation and also sold it. Are you legally allowed round to give the shot. round to the side Get that ready. lost? I can say that he did his job. All right, the other analyst, I'm not going to question your uh, your advisorship. I do believe that uh, I'm very excited what I'm about to see. Cobra Cartel, now 6-5 up. Uh, yeah. Royal Strive, I said Royal Strive have got the momentum. What could Cobra Cartel need to do? Turns out they need to do a side swap, and now they're back in the driver's seat. Yeah, Royal Strive here needs to figure out how they can get something going on calling a side. We, we know this is a Ray upsided map. Yes. That is that is a fact. You talk to anybody who plays this game, it's a Ray upsided map, right? So. Now that Cobra Cartel is on the Rayab team and they're winning rounds, they're, they're really in the driver's seat. Now it's up to Royal Strive to make the adjustment and, and get something figured out here. Yep. But if there's a team that do it, I mean, Royal Strive are known for adaptability. It's one of the strengths. They, you know, they were keen to tell me about it yesterday. Um, but I mean, Cobra Cartel have got, what, three, four rounds now in a row? Uh, I don't know. Royal Strive, they're trying the quiet approach, and I kind of respect that, but... There's only so many times yeah. that I hate you. Oh, oh my oh, goodness! Down. That nade! Just dirty toss. from Michael. How, How dare toss. you? Z-Link with Matt Hage. Z-Link's still trying to prove he can get those two 5Ks. <laughs> Omi swinging out now. Nero's going to take down Z-Link. Omi looking for Michael, but Nero's going to grab him as well. Big 2K there. And now it's in a three-on-three -three situation, but Royal Strive has full sight control here. Yeah, Cobra Cartel do. trying to rotate around. Nuro, just to point out, his dad is in the audience. His dad is also a VR gamer, and you'd love to see that. Good pet takes down Nuro. Patia takes down Omi. Lon Wick dies to Orzo. And now Cobra oh, Cartel should be able to get this, uh, this interrupt. He's got a clean 30 seconds to get that. Oh, oh you love to see They're it. fired Again, up. We love this. friendship. Come on. VR is amazing. Can't do that on Pancake. No, you can't. No, but then I kind of <laughs> said friendship's amazing. Then he poked his friend in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Love-hate relationship, I guess. Yeah, yeah good, do what you got to do. Yeah, yeah, good defense, man. I mean, overall, good retake on the on the side. They let up side on the A side, but the, the retake was there. Absolutely. I mean, Royal Strive came in strong. They had the numbers advantage, but Cobra, very quick to answer, took it back to the corner and took the advantage again. Now they're 7-5 up. They are two points away from taking map one. Yeah, Cobra looking really, really strong right now, but watch out for Royal Strive to make an adjustment here, and here comes the adjustment. There looks like they're going to hit B with aggression, with speed, with nades. Oh, the nade from Goodbet takes two down. It's a double, double. nade! 
Hey, do you love to see it? I think that might be the second of the day, but man, I love those. Matt Hage trying to takes down Goodback, gets the revenge for his team. Yeah, at this point, Ralph Drive needs to make another pick here. Shot and through the smoke. Only getting taken down by Michael is not what you need. No. Z-Link and taking or taking down Matt Hage. Now it's all up to Lon Wick, just like that in a 1v3 situation. I'm getting deja vu. Oh, We've seen Lon Wick, the last guy standing so many times today, and he is last man standing for a reason. This guy is oh, a great player. what a shot by Patia. Long uh, distance, man. That's going to be a round win for Cobra, and now they're on match point. Match yeah, it's the retakes right now. I mean, they're, they're not afraid to let up the site. They're not afraid yep. to give up the site, but it's the retakes that they're really, they're really dominating on. Oh, absolutely. Well, absolutely. Yeah, really. And I, I, listen. Both teams have noise-canceling headsets. They can't hear me, but I, I'm sure they can, because every time I make a point about something they're not doing, they turn around and slap me in the face with it and do that exact thing. So, yeah. I don't know. These are top players, right? They're going to make those adjustments. They're going to recognize where they're going wrong and figure it out. Once again, you are watching the Miami Vale Major, match number three, sponsored by Rezzle. The world's leading XR sports trainer. Now again, available I don't, on MetaQuest. I don't want to, you know. I don't sport. You know that. <laughs> I do. I need to get cut. That's one of the reasons. VR is an amazing way to do it, especially when you're doing sports trainer games. Anyway, we are into round number numbers 14. And again, quiet push on the A side with Matt H quietly going through the center. We've seen this exact play. It's not been working for Royal Strife. I'm really surprised to see them play it again. Maybe they think they can fake it out because it didn't work last time. Maybe yeah. they think they can fool Cobra Cartel and think this is a double fake out. Yeah, dangerous nade there. It goes on the roof, though. Matt H slowly pushing across bridge. Going to try and find Michael here. Michael's in a really awkward spot. <laughs> swings out, grabs Omi. Swings out, grabs Nero. Big 2K wow. from Michael there. So Orzo important grabbing cool well. with the nade. But Nero getting the kill. Matt H taken out by Petir, and it's looking like Cobra Cartel have taken it. They take Matt Boy. Take Matt Boy. Woo! And you can see the excitement over there. You can see the excitement from those guys. I mean, Again, excellent, excellent job by Cobra Cartel, and it was it was the patience there, and they're, they're not afraid to give up the mid. No. You know, they played back in CT a little bit. Their main focus was the retakes. They were not scared to give up that initial push into the site. It was all about the retakes. Uh, the retakes, you know what the key thing for me for Cobra Cartel? It was the lack of hesitation. The moment they knew where the strike was coming, they didn't wait to see it was a fake out. They went all in every time, and it worked. Yep. Even when Matt H fooled them into an A side, it fooled them into a B side, they rotated with full aggression, full power every time. Yep. Yeah. Kiri's a uh, very rotate heavy map, right? Do the yep. small size in the middle. You can get across the other site right away. So, you know, Matt H is out there throwing those smokes and, and getting them fooled many times. They were rotating at least two players over to that site, but then Cole would be like, oh, that's not happening, and they would just go back, right? right. So, Royal Stride wasn't able to capitalize on the fakes that Ma Matt H was throwing. Yeah, I mean, Matt H was not throwing too many fakes as he was just moving through barrel room, right? It would be different if he was all the way over on the opposite side right, of the map right. trying to throw a fake, but he wanted to stay close yeah, to his team, time. keep the numbers yeah. advantage there. Yeah, 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 and they were giving it to him, so I can see why you would want to take it, because Matt H was walking through there every time but that was less, there. less of a fake out and more of him trying to take mid control. I think it was just more mid control. And against other teams, that would have worked. Yes. They would have charged through the middle. Matt H would have picked up those kills. But Cobra were just like, yeah, you can have it. We and don't they stayed, want it. Yeah, Cobra stayed back in the CT in the pond area yeah. away from Matt H. Right. And they rotated through there and they were to, to push all five onto the site without running into anybody. Which is a great lesson, right? Because to rotate through that middle area, if you don't have control of it, it's super dangerous. And they were happy to give control of it. And how they mitigated that was just by staying nowhere near it. Yeah, sometimes you just got to kind of get out of there and, and let them fall into your trap, take a step back and make them come to you. Then you can take all the angles that you want, right? So, right. Um, you know, that was a good adjustment by Cobra Cartel. And their retakes were really, really strong. They were waiting for their teammates. They were getting involved together. They were using their angles correctly, slicing out the pie, and then getting, you know, the two people on the back of the site, drawing them out to them, yeah. forcing them in the fight, and winning those battles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was working time and time again. Again, we saw Riles drive on a sprint, and then Cobra cut it down. Let Robert, R Royal Strive get the five points. Hey, get comfortable with those five points. Because those are the last five points you're getting on Kitty. We might be two points behind, but the rest of the points, I think we're going to take back now. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, yeah. we're going we're gonna to run into a uh, quick sponsored ad by Smash Drums. A quick video on what this does. Let's go.
So I know what I'm going to be buying on November. Yeah, I know, guys. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm spending so much money in VR already. Yep. I don't still need these amazing Absolutely. games to keep popping up. Another reason for my wife to hate me, I'm just going to be sitting there. <laughs> I'm not going to be just having like in my headset. That is the kind of game that you, you want to be get piping ex out. You got to right, external definitely. speakers, yes. some base, you know, yes. some subs. If the neighbors aren't knocking on your door complaining, you're right. doing it wrong. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So map one, Cobra. Bit of an upset, some would say, but. <laughs> But I just want to remind everyone that Royal Strive's favorite map? Mar. 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 Right. Yeah, they talked about this before, right? And that's a map that they feel really, really confident on. Not so much Kiti, right? They still stole six rounds, though, on a map that they don't feel too great about. So should be really interesting watching these guys play Mar. Yeah, uh, I can see all the headsets are on Royal Strive, so I can say this. But I got a shocker for you. <laughs> Cobra Cartel's favorite map, also Mar. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that pick. twist. Yep. Mic drop. Yeah, Mar. <laughs> <Mic drop. laughs> it's stuck to my face. Oh, yeah, I gotta do a mic drop, but thank you for that. Um, so, I mean, I would say Royal Strive have an advantage here, but Cobra are ready for this. This yeah. is their pick as well. They love this map. And we've said it before. It's just Kiti and Mar play completely different, right? Right. There, there's, some, you know, the size difference is, is what probably two times at least. Yes. About? I mean, if and you added the verticality, probably yeah, the four verticality times. and the different, you know, the different angles and different routes that you can take to go from site to site, and the different ways you can get there. There's two to three times more alleys and and ways to go, right? Yes. So, um, having that verticality as well makes a big difference. Um, you can shoot down on people, or actually shoot up on people, um, but it's the audio cues that you get from both the ground floor and also, you know, the the top side, the catwalk. So. You can sit on the catwalk and you can hear people running below you. You know, audio cues you can give away without putting yourself in danger and finding the location. Yeah, when you say uh, Mars twice as big, would you believe me if I told you that the distance to Rayab spawn to Colonist spawn is actually bigger on Kitty? Really? No, I would say you're a liar. I would tell you, get out of my house. I got straight facts. All right, well, this is straight from the you source. You got inside. You're yeah. the analyst. Why aren't you telling me that? Because they don't tell me these things. Uh, maybe we should swap seats. Switch on. I don't know, maybe man. Should be I don't one. know. I don't think I can replace you. <laughs> Not a chance. Oh, who could? Anyway, so Royal Strive, one map down. They've got something to prove coming into map two. They've lost. They, they haven't won a map today. All right, at least Cobra right now can walk out with their heads high. Right. They've won a map. No yeah. matter what happened today, they've, they've come to the Miami Major, right? It's been a long road. They've deserved every step of it. They've fought every step of it. They've come here. They've taken a map against Royal Strive. Royal Strive yet to get a map on the board today. I believe it's going to happen, this one. Yeah. I, I think, think they're going to be... Yeah. They're going to be definitely uh, having that in their mind, and they're going to want to show off on that. Yeah, so once again, you know how we got here, right? So Cobra Cartel faced off against Rec to start the day, bracket behind us. Um, they dropped the, that game to Rec, so they end up here in the loser bracket against uh, Vortex, or sorry, Royal Strive, who lost to Vortex, right? So this is this third place match. So whoever wins this map, or match, uh, is going to walk away with $5,000 in cash, and Cobra Cartel is only one map away from that. Yeah, I mean, we haven't seen a map three yet. It's still a I nice chunk it. of change, and I kind of want Royal Strike to take this map because I want to see sooner. We, I want to see these two teams yep, go to match three. Out. We all want to see that. We all want to see this hype game. We all want to see match three, the decider. <laughs> right, so we are going into map two, match three, the not winner's bracket. I don't want to call it the loser's bracket, the not winner's bracket. How about that? Third place match. I like that even more. That's concise. By who? Sponsored by Rezzle. Rezzle. Something I'm going to be doing when I get home to uh, get more cut. Yeah, I probably should, actually. Well, when I say get more should. cut, I just mean, like, any kind of cut. Because you're already cut. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. We're sharing a room, oh, so he knows. Yeah. Anyway, we are going into <laughs> round one, map two, Royal Strive versus Cobra Cartel. Cobra Cartel starting on the Rayab, starting as the defenders, and it, it is the pistol-only round. What I always do when it's a pistol-only round is give my pistol to someone else, because I'm really bad with pistols. Do they give you their nades, at least? You can run double. You can run double the guns here. So I know exactly. Run you go. Pistols. You can go with Kimbo, and that's better for someone else rather than me with a pistol. Trust me. Cool. Anyway, a couple nades at Armory there. Possibly look, he's making as much fake. noise as he can on B side. Well, yeah. really, the quiet push is coming on A side. Love to see it. Looks like they are going to sell one rotate out of Cobra Cartel now. It's only really up. No, to two. It's going to be no, a full match. Still here. Wow. Look Mad H is going to find him. <laughs> what a fake. Came in quiet, executed from behind, and now they're going to full man control. But also, not even that. We also. See Good bet oh, up in the red room, bet. takes down Mad H. But doesn't matter, Royal Strife has sight control now. They should be able to get the scan. Yeah, but set they don't know they have sight control. I mean, we have that God's eye view, but they don't they don't think how lucky they don't realize how lucky they are. They can't appreciate it. Uh Long Week with the puck still hasn't got the uplift going in. Still a scanning. Yeah, good bet just hiding in the red room here. Zeeling's gonna fight with Cooley. 
rotating back from his fake and taking him down. Scan's gonna get set up here now. It doesn't matter. Cobra Cartel's here trying to retake. Omi's gonna pick up two. Z Link's gonna get take down Nero. And it's a two versus two with Z Link with two kills. Omi's gonna oh, swing out, oh. pick up the third kill wow. on Z Link. That is a 1v1 Omi versus Michael. But look at Michael's health. He has nothing. He's just one tap away. Omi needs to delay here, buy a little bit of time. Michael's gotta come and defuse. Yeah, but look at Michael. He's got no health no at all. Health. No health. Omi, no health. Michael, no health. Michael. Michael's gonna go for the. The interrupt here. Omi's going to swing oh, out, take him wow. down. That's a oh, what a shot. Pistol. Confident shots. Cobra Cartel on the floor. You love to see it. Yeah, Royal Strive going to take that first round. Big round from Omi there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just a reminder, Lampy. I know you're going to yeah, do you're good. stuff. You're good. But if you look at the stage, yeah, you can ready. see the light uh, on the front of the visors, the indexes. Uh, right now, they're all lit up. As they die, those visors blink off. They go dark. And that means that those players are dead, right? So you can identify by looking at the stage who's still active. And I love that. That's so important for the people viewing, but also for the cameraman. It makes it easier for them to focus on the players that are still alive. Yeah, it's a pretty cool, pretty cool thing that's been made here. The fast take from Royal Strike coming out. So I was talking to Matt H about this. They need to adjust who's doing what, but Orzo, the double <laughs> nade. Oh, Omi oh, swinging oh, out. Oh, grabbing to himself. Z-Link gonna grab Lon Wick now. It's a two on three situation in favor of Cobra Cartel here. Z-Link. Good bet, and Patia all need to rotate out. Omi and uh, Cooley have sight control here. Again, but they don't know it. Like, again, we're seeing Royal Strive take sight control and not realize they've taken sight control. Like, they think there's a third defender here, and they can't appreciate that they are the only ones here. I think we're going to see the uh, scan going in. Now, oh, no, they don't have Cooley's the... Uh, drop the, the scanner on the site. He hears footsteps. He panics. He drops the scanner. He doesn't get the scan in. We've all been there. Yeah, Cobra is just waiting for the scan to come out here. Now Z-Link swinging out, gonna try and fight Cooley, doesn't get him. Patia trying to work on Omi. Good bet's gonna get taken down by Cooley, now it's all up to Omi. Patia's gonna find him. Yep. And they've got plenty of time to disable the scan. Now what we saw there was uh, really easy to misinterpret. We saw a player coming out and firing at nothing. All he was doing was making noise, drawing attention to himself so his fellow defenders could get in position and attack from both flanks, and it worked exactly as planned. Yeah, the offense, they had time to put the scan in early on, and I think what they were trying to do is they were trying to bait the, def the, the possible third defender, the, the other defender that was nearby to come out of hiding, right. basically, to get that kill. And it never happened, right? right? There was nobody else there, so the rotations were still working in, but the offense, they took too much time. The defense got reset back up, and we're able to get that retake. Yeah, it looks like Royal Strive's going to switch it up here and try and go for a hard eight. Nope, sorry, not hard eight take, slow eight take, <laughs> as they are crouching down, trying to minimize the amount of noise that they're going to make. Well, Matt H., the faker. They're gonna do the same thing they did for Pistol around here. Many maids coming out. Nero's gonna pick down Z-Link. Meanwhile, on the other side of the world. But what this means is that Matt H is gonna be free to do whatever he wants. And in that case, he's to come over and support his teammates. He's not going to hold the uh, attack B. He's going to charge in and support. And yeah, Patia peeking up up top there, recognizing that he's in trouble, gonna fall back as Good Bet picks up Omi. Doesn't matter, Matt H flanking in from the double doors to pick up Patia. Now they have some semblance of sight control, but Cobra Cartel is rotating all three members in the data side. Good bet takes down Nero. Michael takes down Lonwick. Cooley 9 takes down Michael, and Orzo grabs Matt H, and now it is a 1v2 situation. Cooley is all alone here. Doesn't have the scanner. Doesn't have very much health against two members of Cobra Cartel. Yeah, and are they, are they aware of the scanner? Are they defending the scanner? I can't see. Yeah, Cobra Cartel. <laughs> yeah, they know what they're doing. Yeah, they're just hiding back and waiting for the sound cues. They're waiting for the scanner to be picked up. When the scanner's picked up, it gives off a sound cue, right? And when right. it's also being put in. So they're trying to stay hidden. They know that that's what their game plan is here. But they we saw, But don't forget, we saw Cooley do a very clever play, I'm pretty sure before, where he grabbed the uh, puck and did a complete sight rotate. 30 rotator. seconds remaining. Yeah, no, Cooley needs to get something going here. He doesn't have time to go back to the other site, so he has to try and force a setup here on the Again, scan. And we see him drop the scan halfway through because of his footsteps. He's a bit too edgy right now. I think what he's trying to do there is get the scan noise set up, get right. the team to peek into him, let them make a mistake there and pick off one. But he's going to set the scan up, and now he's going to fall back. But he's got no health here. This is going to be really, really difficult. The scan going in. He's holding it. He's got the one hand on the gun. He's going to swing out here. Cooley looking for it. Good bet. Single-handedly. Yeah, baby. I love to see one-handers. I love to see the disable with one hand, the gun in the other, and see that work. Yeah, it looks very cool. It can, looks very can cool. Can you say that was a good bet, that it was a single-handedly one, Matt? Can I say that's a good bet? <laughs> <laughs> Lampy, I love hate you.
I love Hayden. No, amazing job by Goodbed as he got the defuse and a one-handed kill there. Amazing. Uh, knowing from on some of them popular spots that are going to come from, you know, you know, Cooley Nine was sitting in that in a meta spot basically right. to to defend his own uplink, right? So knowing that that was going to come through, you know, had that that rifle ready one-handedly. But not just that, he had a teammate covering him as well. So even if he failed, right. the teammate was ready to jump out and get the refresh. Right. Alternating lines. A little bit of an interesting setup here from Royal Strive as all five players are going into the catwalk. Hey, that's all right. You need to change things up. You know, you're down 2 1 right now. You know, figure out what the defense is doing here. You're not just down 2 1, you're down a map as well. Right. I mean, that adds to the pressure. You're live on stage. Yes, sure, you're 2 1 down, but you are uh, mentally knowing that you are a map down. There's so much pressure mounts. And for Cobra Cartel, they've got that buffer. They can afford to lose this map. They don't want to, but they can. Yeah, they don't, don't want to lose the map here. Want to try and lock it down as fast as possible. Pushing over to the red room here. Royal Strive has all kinds of cat control, but it's going to be hard to actually get on a site from just outside. Just for everyone else, cat is the central area, those high grounds, and it's not a little cat. <laughs> oh, good bet gets up his position early, a little bit too early on the pre-fire. Going to throw a nade here. Oh. Three members of Royal Strive trying to get in there, but the nade wasn't cooked, so he's not going to grab anyone. Meanwhile, Michael picking up Nero here. Now there's only four members of Royal Strive. Still no real site control. They're on the outside. They're trying to get in here. I just want to point out as well, the kill spread for Royal Strive is quite drastic. Uh, pretty much no one on Royal Strive having any kills apart from Omi, who has seven, and I didn't realize that. Like, the rest of his team has got one, two, zero, one. Omi right now dominating for Royal Strive on this map, and they need it because right now they are a player down, they're a map down, and they're a point down. And they're in trouble now. They're running out of time here. They have to get a scan set up. There's no way they'll be able to find all the members of Cobra Cartel. Here comes the execute. Cobra's ready for it. Zeeling takes down Omi. Go good bet grabs another one. Zeeling grabs another one. Manny grabs him. Now. Absolute wow. shutdown wow. on the A side. Absolute shutdown. Really oh, good defensive hold. Lappy. Yeah, Z-Link had a, a, an amazing angle right up the stairs, right on that drop, that, that red room drop off right there. And he just waited for people to come out of that red room, dropping right, down, you know, from that ladder, and Get he picked ready. up two coming right out of there. Nice. Just very nice defense. Absolutely. And we, a complete shutdown. Complete shutdown by Co Cobra Cartel on that defense. Complete. And here we are going into round number five here. Cobra Cartel up three to one. They only need to win this map to go home with $5,000 here at the Miami Vale Major. Looks like World Strive gonna try and set up for an eight take here. They're, they're storming in fast on the eight. They're trying to overwhelm right now. They've been identified, right but the defense on the B side is slow to rotate. It doesn't matter, good bet. But dear, good bet just holding the line against the entirety of wow. Royal Strive. What just happened? It was a three. It was a three versus five, and they held tight. What was there anybody hole. else up playing besides Good Bet and Batia on that one? I don't know. I don't know where the other guys were, but those guys held it down. They only need two people to win this. As it looks like. oh, that was amazing. Tank. Good work, guys. Good work. Royal Strive feeling the burn on that. They are getting pushed further and further out of this. They need to change up. They need to gather the confidence. Good Bet. I mean, look at the kill spread from Cobra Cartel. It's much more of an even story than we've seen from Royal Strive at the moment. Yeah, right now, only really Omi popping off. Last couple of rounds, Mad H has been able to get involved, but clearly Royal Strive struggling a little bit here. Need to make the appropriate adjustments to get here. This is traditionally a, a, a colonist-sided map, right? So being down 4-1 as colonists is not an ideal position for Royal Strive to be in, especially down one map. Absolutely. All right. Three points down, one map down. Any hope of getting, you know, getting something to walk out of here and held high, getting a map. You need to take a map with you when you come to Miami. I tell it to everyone, all my friends. If you go to Miami, walk out with a map. Yeah, you could buy one around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should buy them a map. After this, if they lose, we will buy them a map. I will buy them a map. Royal Strive once again trying for this outside top cat control. All five members in the middle here. They need to try and find an entry at this point. They need to try to find a way to get one kill onto the site and then try and execute but cobra cartel playing pretty smart here like they're not exposing themselves in this position they know that that royal strive is out there and they're not giving them anything no the, the quiet play uh and that's what i'd love to see on ma and, and kitty as well actually when you have that slow play and you're making the defenders sweat like where's the real strike going to come from nero's going to try to find good bet here but it, it, it swings out and nero takes him down nice shot from nero there now they have a little bit of entry here onto A site. Meanwhile, Orzo taking down Matt H. Omi gonna grab Orzo on the trade. Michael's gonna grab Lon Wick. Michael's gonna Michael grab Omi the too. We saw the player play. attract uh, like uh, uh, aggressive view. Then we I did not expect to see that aggression and Patia taking down Nero. Now it is a one v three situation. Cooley's in a little bit of trouble. He does have the artifact or the scanner, but he's only got ten seconds left on the clock here. As he goes into A site, he is alone. He should be able time. to get this set up. He's got time. 
As long as he doesn't fumble it. We've seen him do the fake out. Now is a long time to do it. But he is one versus three, and he needs to be aware of staying in that meta spot because everyone comes around free firing. He swings he out, he one. grabs one. But Patia's right here. I think Patia might try to wait for his teammate. Cooley needs to isolate him, take him down. He does it. Oh. Patia grabs him. He pre fires, but Patia also pre fires. It looked like Cooley might have ran out of ammo there or had right. a reload. You know, he, he, he got the first kill. He decided to get aggressive on that one. And when you're playing yeah, against three or 3v1 on that scenario, you can't just sit back because you are going to get pounced on. So he heard the footsteps early, had to pounce, um, got that first kill. You know, went for the second, but I don't think he had time to reload. Any uh, FPS, uh, FPS VR player has heard that click in wow. You heard the click. Yeah, really? yeah. The last bullet. Yeah in the chamber empties at the exactly the wrong moment and you know what happens next is you're about to die. Yeah, and you gotta reload the gun yourself. It's not like you're just clicking R and waiting for an animation. Oh, and yeah. Under pressure like this, down rounds like that, that's a stressful situation. Yeah, I mean, if, if you have the ability, like watch like both sides of the players, you will see them doing that motion and they do it so quickly. They've got it down, muscle memory. It's one of those things you can do with your eyes closed. They do do it with your eyes closed. Here comes a fast execute onto the B site from Carl Stride. Orzo, Orzo shuts the door on Omi. Orzo grabs Cooley. Big 2K there from Orzo. Now it's a four on three. Rolls Drive not really able to make entry into there. Cobra is able to shut that push down, and Rolls Drive's gonna think about this and potentially rotate off. Orzo grabs another one. That's a 3K now for Orzo as Nero swings out and puts Orzo down. But that doesn't matter. Now it's still a two on three situation here. Rolls Drive's in a little bit of trouble as Cobra is just rotating. They have all kinds of map control, and Rolls Drive is really just backed into a corner here. I was gonna say, if you want two uh, Royal Strides alive, you're trying to carry the day, you want Nero and Longwick, but Longwick is struggling right now. Zero six one. I mean, we saw him killing it on Kitty, but right now on Ma, he is everything he's doing isn't working. Nero's wow, reactions are working though. Wow, he gets taken down by Good Bet, but not before punishing. Now it is a one v two situation here. Longwick, the last member standing for Royal Strive. Forty five seconds left on the clock. Does have the scanner. Both members of uh, Cobra Cartel are actually outside right now. Oh, but they are rotating in exactly the right place. They don't know how they figured out he's there, but they know he's there and they are rotating. Longwick, maybe aware he's, he doesn't have time really to rotate. So he's got no choice but to push in and try and get a scanner. They're going to be hearing his footsteps. They're going to identify he's here, and they're already trying to shut off his transition point. Z-Link. May be able to get a kill from behind. Nope. Longwick now on site. 20 seconds here. Have to get the scan set up. Looking for somebody, but Zeeling takes him down. And that's going to be another round in favor of Cobra Cartel. Six to one now. Cobra Cartel only three maps or three rounds away from taking home $5,000. Yeah, Cobra Cartel is just, just showing an amazing job here. I mean, it's like wow, we mentioned, this is an, uh, kind of an offensive heavy map. And right. we're just seeing the defense just totally dominate here. Which is unexpected. Yeah. Yeah. Completely unexpected. I would have said the Royal Strive would be going here with a heavy advantage. And if I saw the scores and closed my eyes, I would assume it'd be the other way. Royal right, Strive exactly. six one, to Cobra Cartel just dominating. Very few close map, uh, rounds at the moment. Cobra Cartel are dominating. Yeah, and what we mentioned before is Lonwick really needs to pick things up here. You know, with, with no kills yet so far, wow. it, that's really hurting that side. Yeah, absolutely. It, it need to be a no in this late in the stage, but uh, Royal Strive again trying for this upper cat control. This really hasn't worked for them yet. Let's see if they can turn around and get something going here. As Mad H quickly going through the red room area. Good bet not playing here anymore. So. They have some control there, but they still have to entry onto site. Still got to drop down. They still got to get involved on site. Both members that are holding site here for Cobra Cartel. Tia with a huge nade and double kill. Takes down <laughs> Neuro and Cooley. Matty is going to return the favor, though. But that's still now a four on three. And they're or actually a three on three. I'm sorry about that. Double nade action again. Getting those double kills. It means, it means two things. Wow. Oh, he's swinging wow. out, picking up two. Cracked Stop play. It. Hey, cut the first person. Do you see that nade following him? <laughs> Again, we've all been there. We've all seen that nade flying towards us, just trying to get out of the way. Please don't explode. Please don't explode. You get safe. Side relief. Now we're riding along with Orzo as he's in a 1v3 situation here. Scanner is set up. He's only got about 25 seconds left on the clock here. Omi just playing a little game with him. Who wow, swings around what a and flip. grabs Matt H. Incredible there from Orzo, but he'll have to deal with two memories of Royal Strive. And Longlet's going to pick him up, and that's going to be the second round in favor of Ooh. Royal Strive. 6 to 2 at the half. Into Lappy. the side swap. Yeah. Lappy, I know you're the analyst, but I have to, like, point something out here. We are seeing exact deja vu of yeah, Wreck right. versus Royal Strive. They were 6 1 right. in Wreck's favor against Royal Strive. Royal Strive then got one more point before the side swap. That's exactly what we just saw. 6 2, yes. exactly the same situation we saw before, except now Royal Strive have gone from the aggressor to the defender. Yeah, it's amazing to see this happen, honestly. You know, it, we're. Now we're seeing an aggressive, you know, push here from Cobra Cartel on the offensive side. Pistol round. Okay, 
Cobra Cartel in good shape to take this one home. Now switching on to Colonists, which is generally the favorite side. Omi's going to grab Z-Link here, though, on the entry onto site. Cobra Cartel is going to be trying to hit this A site, but Royal Strive has detected it, and they're rotating. They're just leaving one at the Armory site to try and get the rotate on Wick. And a grab Patia here. That's two good entries there from Royal Strive, and now leaves it in a fourth. Five each situation. Comes around the corner. Blasted. Grabs Nero. Mad H going to trade him out, though. Now it's just up to two members. Michael and good bet from Cobra Cartel against four members of Strive. I mean, there was a reload there on camera, and it was a blink and you miss it. Again, that's such quick action on those reloads. Yeah, now Michael is alone against Cooley, Lonwick, and Mad H. And he's he doesn't have the puck, and they know where the puck is. That's right, Mad H with a little bit of an awkward angle. Lon's gonna look, come and help him, and that's the, the pistol round in favor of Royal Strive. Look at that supporting three. line. That supporting line was amazing right yep. there. You know, Matt H stayed hidden, and he, he drew that fire in, and Lonwick was just hiding in the tunnels there waiting for him. Yep. And Lonwick picking up, picking up that kill. I mean, beautiful teamwork. Teamwork, coordination, cross defense. Yep. You know, there's three pillars you need to hold up. In a situation where you've got control, that's how you keep control. And maybe Lonwick is hearing us. You know, they are hearing us, as we just yeah, said. Yeah. He needs to pick up the kills, and in two rounds, he's every got three time, kills. Every time one of us makes a point, they kind of sense it and do something about it. He was zero, now he's three. That's why they're top players. Absolutely. What, because they can hear us in the head? <laughs> Mentally? Maybe. Maybe it's ESB, I don't know. Whatever the secret is, the better than me. Z-Link with the opening nade, taking out Omi. It's a big pick, because Omi's been the, the Royal Strike player right now. And now Cobra has a good surround on the site, but Nero's going to find Orzo. Cooley's going to grab Michael. That's a good couple of kills there from Royal Strive, but still have site control. Cobra Cartel still working on this, but the rotates are coming out for Royal Strive now. They're going to get some support shortly. Cobra really doesn't have that much time to make this site take work. And if that's going to find Cooley, but Mane is still alive. Going to grab Z-Link. Patia's going to grab Nero now, and it's a two-on-two -two situation as Patia gets the scanner set up. Now he hears Matt coming in, drops it. Good bet takes him down. Now it's all up to Lawn. Matt, a little bit over-aggressive there. There was no scan, hadn't gone in. He could have held back. Stopped. I maybe heard the uh, scan started to try to play off it, but I mean, if that was a trap, it worked. And Matt H fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, Patia's going to take some shots there from Lawn Wick, but now they know where he is. They're not going to peek him unless he goes for the scan or pushes them. And they know that. They're just they're just putting a little bit of pre-fire there to keep him honest as Lawn Wick has to work in here. Time's running out. He's only got 25 seconds left on the clock right now. Yeah, time definitely against Lonwick here. He has to go for the defuse. He has no other option. You know, he Look can go Batia for the here. kills, but if he doesn't get the defuse, the round's still over. Look at yep. Batia using the audio here to fake Lonwick out. As he's just trying to avoid. He doesn't need to fight him. He doesn't need to kill him. He Lonwick just burn his time away. Has to disable now, right this second. If he does it any later, it's and too late. Batia's there. Yeah. What a play from Batia. That's going to be the seventh round in favor of Cobra Cartel. Only two yeah, away now. $5,000 at the Miami Vale Major. You couldn't write that in a manual any better than it actually just happened right there. As Batia and his teammate, I forgot who the other player was, Brown but, um, you know, after the few, or after the scan was in, they're just playing for time, right? right? They're playing for time, they're playing for audio. They have no, they, there's no reason to get in a gunfight unless you absolutely have to. Yeah, time, And they time played again. it perfectly. Even at this level, time and time again, you see players going over aggressive when really they should be holding back. When the time is on your side, when it's counting down and zero means you win, yeah. you should be hiding. You should be making them work for it. Right. Let them hunt you. That's yeah, exactly that was, what they did. Yeah. That was textbook post-scan setup there from Cobra Cartel. As we jump into this round, oh, he's going to pick up Orzo here. Looks like Cobra is going to try and work towards the armory site here. They're not going to be able to really get anything going, though. They have three members of Strive kind of waiting for them here. Nero's in the catwalk this round. I like the Cobra Cartel aren't committing right now. They're still picking. They're thinking about maybe going for an A side strike. Zealing picking up Omi. Again, a big pickup. Um, but the commit isn't there. They're still kind of just hovering around the middle area. Cobra Cartel happy to hold back, pick up, get the pickups like this. They're letting Royal Strive make the mistakes and they're punishing them for it. Yeah, Royal Strive's getting a little bit aggressive here and Cobra Cartel is putting them down for it. Nero's gonna recognize he's in a little bit of trouble here, overworked, and he's gonna fall back a little bit. Nero's gonna take down Goodbye. He's gonna have to fight a second nice. one. He picks up Michael. That's huge from Nero right there. Brings it into a 2v2 situation. No hesitation from Nero right there. He was on fire, didn't hold off the trigger. Yeah, Nero's actually going to retain all of his health after those two gunfights that he got in, so that, that leaves them in pretty good shape. Both both teams relatively evenly matched here in a 2v2 with a good spread of utility. Royal Strive has two nades left here. Uh, Patia with the puck now getting to the site. He's got 25 seconds left to get the scan started, and it's exactly what he's going to do. Meanwhile, Nero and Lomwick are aware that they don't have any yeah, control at all. They're not on A, they're not on B. They know where the slick ant is getting, and they are going to have to retake now, and that is quite a hard job to do because there are so many defensive points on A. 
Yeah, communication here on this retake is going to be critical for Wallace Drive as they really need this round. They can't let Cobra Cartel get to a match point this early. But Patia and uh, Z-Link are set up really nicely here in the, in the tunnel and in data there. That's a good crossfire angle that you really have to get in there to try and get involved. So Royal Strive is probably going to have to beat them out with a, an interrupt fake. But Nero's going to pick up Z-Link here. Now it's all up to Patia. That really turned it around here. Patia's going to come running out and Nero's going to one-hand. Nero with the one four yeah. from Nero. Nero. We need Let's a graphic for that. Why don't we have a graphic for a one-hander? It is so yeah, important. One hand. Oh, there we go. There's a one-hander. Oh, no, and again, textbook again, on the defuse, they had the alternating angles. They had to draw the defense out, right? The, the, off, or the offense was trying to get that defuse and draw them guys out and just alternating angles. You know, Round they starting. put the defuse in, got it started. That sound cue made the defense, to, or the offense to come out, drew them out for a perfect kill. Right, I mean, once again, if you when, once you're disabling that scan, it forces you to have one hand dedicated to that. It means you have one-handed gun. It's much harder to uh, centralize your aim, um, and it's impossible to reload at that point. You let go it resets the uh, disable. So, if you're stuck in that situation, what do you do? You one hand, you get the kill, and it feels great, but if you miss that shot, which is so easy to do, well, you don't feel bad because you've got no other choice. Yeah, we're seeing, we're seeing teams more and more now setting up that scan up high, so they're forced to, you know, they can't hide behind the artifact. Right. You have to stand up in full exposure at that point. Interesting play from Cobra Cartel oh, here. Oh, you love to see it. Look at this setup. The quiet, the waiting, the waiting for Royal Strife to make some mistakes. They've been getting those early picks because Royal Strife are going to be getting impatient Z-Link and uh, Michael may have identified a, a gap here in the defense as they're pushing into Rayab's spawn. They might try and flank Rayab's spawn here. Wow, the fake out is real. Look at it, ladies and gentlemen. You can see the entire defense from Royal Strive is looking at A, and really the strike is coming a B. Wiley, they've got a three man push. Take, are they going to take the zip line back? Is that, the, that might be the key. They might, they might look for an entry and then just say, see you later, I'm getting out of here. This is actually an insane play from Cobra right now. I haven't seen oh, this before. Like, no, Nero and, and uh, Omi are kind of like oh, realize Lon, something's though. up. Yeah, Lon's going to pick up Michael on data here and Z-Link's just going to try and get, uh, hold him in place. But Royal Strive is picking up on this. They're rotating back to Armory now as they think. Yeah, yeah, they're getting the scan set up. So. And now they've got 40 seconds until it's a big problem for Royal Strive. Nero's going to get taken or take down Patia here. Punishes him for getting the scan. He's like, hey, you shouldn't have done that. That was rude. Good bet. Picking up Omi. Nero picking up Z-Link. And it is all on Good Bet and Ozo to try and hold. Good Bet showing that he can. Wow. What a, what a nade. Great nade. Great nade. He knows the location. He knows how to throw it. Good Bet picking up Matt H. And that leaves only two defenders left. And they have to get the Sable. I believe the Sable is going in right now for Nero. Good Bet punishes him. What? Good bet now to 1v1. Only 12 seconds Scan's left here on the going. scan. Lon has to get involved here. Get on the scan. He has to start disabling the scan right now. He has to get on. He has no time. He's got no time. He gave up the round. What? Scan complete. He gave up. He didn't have... He lost track he, of time. He must have lost sure, track of time or something. That Maybe. Wow. It could have been communication amongst his team. I mean, I know you're hearing the beeps in your headset, but you also need the team to tell you, hey, four seconds, five seconds left, or whatever it may be. There's only a few seconds left. You need that reassurance from your team as well. And Cobra wow. Cartel on match point one round away from winning 5,000 and placing third one at the Miami One round venue. away. One round away. They fought back. They're proving their metal. They've destroyed Boyle's driving, Kitty. They're just, well, this beating them be. right now on Ma. Watch out. We got a fast next to Coming out here from Cobra Cartel. They're just going outside directly into the A site here. They're pushing and pushing hard here. Yeah, they're getting involved on the double door here. Lon's going to toss a little bit of nade in there. It's not going far enough. Look, there's four members of Cobra Cartel right now going through the spawn. They're going to go through Ray up spawn towards Armory. <laughs> what a great unexpected play. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, what you see in the north, that is where the enemies start. So nobody expects your, you know, the, your, the, the colonists to be there. It just doesn't make any sense. But they've got complete control there, and it's a beautiful piece of play. And I think Cobra Cartels, uh, you know, recognize that Royal Strive has a gap in their defense here, and they're just going to exploit it until Royal Strive makes the adjustment, right? So um, good play and good read by Cobra Cartel here. They walk straight through that area, and now they have that for com completely for free. Yeah. Everybody is still alive here. Nobody has shot at each other yet, and they have their spawn as map control right now. Lonwick's that is a really his, good read by Cobra. Lonwick's going to have his hands full here as, he, as they're pushing through. Oh, well, it's just Michael look, over here. Ozo finds oh, Lonwick for nice free. Flank. Michael was making so much noise that uh, Lonwick was zeroed in on him. Which, meanwhile, Ozo quietly comes up behind him and terminates him. Really Cooley's going to grab Pita. Yeah, Pita, good bet, going to grab Cooley here. Royal Drive is in a horrible spot right now. Maybe. Oh, well, they just brought it back. Around, though, wow. As they say that, oh. you say that though, there's still one point away from getting knocked out. Oh, it's completely walking one. home without any money in the pocket at all, and measly a high five for me. Drop shot. Drop, drop shot by Omi. 
Again, did you see the reaction on that? That is a physical thing he did. He dropped to his knees, got the shot, ducked the shot over his head, gets the kill, keeps Royal Strive in it. Yeah, the fact they could see each other through Round the glass, shot. right? You, you know somebody's going to peek that corner. Right. So what's the only thing you can do? You're going to come around firing in the head. You're going to come around firing in the head. The last thing you expect headshot. is some guy to just drop like yeah. that. Because you need that headshot to win that victory, right? right? You, right. Need the, you need that headshot, that instant headshot to win that trade. But instead, only goes down to the ground. Amazing. Oh. Nice. So we're going to be setting up for what looks like a 4-1 towards the A site here with one member going up into the catwalks here. Trying to flank around. This is a good aggressive play here from Cobra Cartel. Michael leading this push with good bet in support. Good bet's going to go up to the red room here though. Possibly looking for anybody that's playing on catwalk. As Michael comes down the stairs looking for Lawn, but there's too much smoke. He's not able to find him. Meanwhile, Matt H taken down by Ozo. Michael's going to be pushing here on Lawn. You see the speed of that reload? Think of beauty. Longwick hears those footsteps. He's outnumbered, outgunned, and taken down, and that leaves Royal Strike with only three defenders left. They are going out at the moment. They've got two guys, Nero and Omi, the two you want left alive with 16 and 40 kills apiece. Good, but oh, takes down Nero, and now it's only up to Omi. Royal Strive's dreams of winning $5,000 at this tournament yep. rest on Omi's shoulders right now with only 25 seconds left. One versus four, and there it is. Good bet, take it. Yeah. Cobra Cartel, the winners of map number two and match for third place. Huge place from Cobra Cartel there. Wow, what a play. Cobra Cartel, seemingly the underdogs in that, did not play like underdogs at all. They were dominant throughout the entirety of that. We saw some great plays from Royal Strive, but ultimately Cobra Cartel. Yeah, I'm not sure. There it can... is. I'm not sure we can give it to him though. Z-Link with zero. 5Ks. Yeah, zero, not even, or Z-Link, not even one 5K. Not so even one A's. A little bit disappointed on that, but yeah. otherwise they played very good. <laughs> yeah. Cobra. I'm just hearing it from the referees right now. Because of Z-Link's claim that he was going to get two 5Ks, we're actually going to award the victory to Royal Strive. <laughs> yeah, I'm hearing that too. I'm hearing that too. No, amazing job on both sides. I mean, really was. Royal Strive played amazing. Uh, Absolutely. You know, they had some moments where they just couldn't seem to figure out what, what was going on. Right? Yeah. But let's take it over to, to Vela here as we get into the Cobra Cartel side. Hey, how's it going? And thank you so much. Okay, I tried to grab Good Bet for an interview. He ran off. He's excited. The man dropped a 20 bomb. You were feeling it this game. What was different from now in the first game of the day? I really think we just were like kind of in a flow state. Um, we just felt really confident going into it because... Um, I don't know. Against Rex, we were a little intimidated. We know they're a strong, strong team. Against, we know Royal Strife is also a really good team, but like, what I think also boosted our confidence is that we took a couple of rounds on uh, offense on Kidi. Once we did that, we're like, okay, now we have defense, and we just mopped the floor with them after that. Um, on Mar, Mar's our favorite map. We have so many plays ready, like on that map. So we knew once going into Mar, they're done. They're done. <laughs> so once we knew we took Kitty, it's like, okay. Mar, easy, easy, easy. Because we've done pretty well in Mar against like wow. uh, Rekt also before in some scrims. Um, so really, we just felt extremely confident going into Mar. At least I did. Like, yeah. It definitely showed. You guys came in here well prepared. You dominated. One win on the day, and you all walk home with some money. I want to say congratulations. And also, the last thing, do you want to give a shout out to anybody that could be watching at home, friends, family, who might it be? Um, I would say shout out to my parents for letting me, <laughs> supporting me and um, just giving me like, I don't know, just a lot of uh, emotional support and um, yeah, also just very supportive of me gaming. Some parents are very strict, like, hey, like do something more productive. Well, hey, if I hadn't done gaming, probably wouldn't be here. Right, and you also walked away with a lot of money. Congratulations, I'll catch you next time. And congratulations to Cobra Cartel. And also, ladies and gentlemen, before we send this, Go ahead and make some noise. There we go. Show some love. Before we send this over to the Grand Finals, we're going to go to one more intermission in the last part of the live video. I hope you all are enjoying the event so far. We'll catch you guys in just a few for the finale of the day. See you soon.
Seven, five, four, three. Would you like to Wow, what a match, Valley. Oh, yeah, well, great content, by the way, too. <laughs> All right, Miami, we're just about there. But before we continue on, I want to give a big thanks to the people responsible of making all of this happen. I want to give a big shout out to Fuel, Valor, and also Hartman Capital. Without you, we wouldn't be here today. But also, we have an amazing grand finals. Miami, it's kind of quiet right now. Can we get a round of applause real quick before the teams come out? Let them know we're excited for the game. Woo! There we go. I'm loving Miami right now, and I'm loving the energy. But it's about that time to bring out the teams. Let's go ahead and give a round of applause to team number one is going to be right. up for Racked. <laughs> Woo! Robo Electric Kitten Team, by the way. Racked stands for Robo Electric Kitten Team, just in case <laughs> anyone wondered why they've got a cat on their t-shirt. Wreck, the first team to take the main stage today, and they won in dominant fashion. Being the team that you just saw win the last series, Cobra Cartel, but as they get ready on the main stage, you see the boys taking off their shoes. Getting ready, getting hyped. Let me go ahead and pull someone just a moment, just to see how they're feeling. Come over here for just a second. By the way, I'm digging the shoes, man. What are they, Yeezys? Yeah. A little bit of style. Okay, there we go. So um, let the world know what your name is and also let them know what you're about to do right now on this main stage in this grand finals against. Yeah, my name is Basil Maz. We're going to take home the win. That's as simple as that. All right, Vortex are definitely going to see that. All right. Basil, you got, you got a little fan base out there. I'm absolutely loving it. But also, are you excited to be in your first grand finals here in Vail? Oh yeah, it's, it's amazing. All right, on land of course, by the way. But also, let's bring out the opponents. It's gonna be Vortex. Position from thief, paying off dividends. 
Maybe not 3 3. Frigg picking up a block of Scan going in from Esco 27. Frigg looking for that line. The Scan comes in. Frigg's gonna punish him though. Frigg finds another one. Frigg on fire right now. Sets Yellow Hat up for a great engage. They're not ready for him. He steps out, gets two. Pushing the feet side now. See, he comes out firing, takes down soldiers, takes down shreds, takes down coach. Right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and give it up for Vortex. There we go. I'm standing right here. By the way, you're way bigger up close than you are far away, okay? But um, it's my man from Kentucky. His name is Frigg. We heard him all over the highlight video. You're here for the first Vail Major Grand Finals. What's going through your body right now? Ah, oh, dude, how cool is this, right? Like, adrenaline, I guess? There we go. I love it. There we go. Now, did you guys do any preparation before this Grand Finals? And if so, who do you want to shut down on that team over there? Uh, no, we actually prefer to play World of Warcraft, so... World of Warcraft, great game, just like Bill. Listen, I wish you the best of luck, man, and hey, absolutely kill it. Hey, uh, shout out to Lerf and Brick, the dudes who didn't make it, and uh, Ghost who can't make it anymore. Hey, much respect. Thank you so much, Class Act. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's about this time to send this over to one more ad, and then we're going to get this grand final started. Shout out to Metagoons. Let's go ahead and see what they got. Use this time to warm up. Here we are. Guys, this is the final. This has been the road that we've been on for the last two months. has been leading to this event right now. The finals of the Miami Vale Major IVRL Season 1. Get some hype. Let's hear a round of applause for both these teams. <laughs> we got ranked. We got Vortex. They were the two favorites. They were the two favorites for a reason. They are on stage. They are ready. They've been doing their homework. They've been playing hot all day. And they are here to prove something. Both teams. How many 5Ks are we going to see on this side is what I'm wondering. <laughs> I, I'm honestly, I, I'm, I'm going to say zero 5Ks. Yeah, there's there's, I mean, it's there's pretty, just pretty, no way. With these two top teams, I mean, every single one player on both teams is an absolute ace. These are literally the two best teams in the world right now in this game. They have history, too. They've played in other games together before. They know each other. Everybody here has played together for a long time together, right? right? So, I mean, they've battled their way here. If you think back, our first matches in the qualifiers, August 6th. It's August been two months that we've been doing this tournament, <laughs> yeah. wow. and it all comes down to this. Right now, $20,000 on the line, the Miami Vale Major. Let's go! <laughs> Woo! And let's not forget that both of these teams are very familiar with each other, not only in this game, but in other FPS games. So there is that, you know, that tension already between them. Yeah. Right, right, right. This is a long-running rivalry. Oh, big time. Yeah, big time. I mean, we saw Wrecked take on Cobra Cartel very, very convincingly, and we saw Vortex take on Royal Strive very, very convincingly. You want to make notes on what the weaknesses are, right? You're watching these teams play. You want to know what they're doing wrong. The problem is neither of the teams are doing anything wrong, and at the end of the day, <laughs> that makes it a very, very imposing task for both teams trying to find weaknesses in their, you know, enemies to be. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be an insane match. And, you know, today casting this, we've had no issues playing this game. Like, this game has worked so smoothly. This is the first time that we've ever had a tournament on LAN, you know, right. with the server in this room, with all these players in this room. Normally they play with, you know, up to 100, 150 ping, right? But everybody right now, 12 MS. I mean, That's look, it. Cracker look, Jack look, is, Cracker Jack's in the UK, right? So when he's playing with his team, who are all in the NA, he's always got a ping disadvantage or, you know, pretty much, all, yeah, he'll always have a ping disadvantage. Today we're seeing him flying off the trigger with his nades, with his kills. But mind you, we've exactly the same from the likes of Wrecked. We see Nadix, we see Chillstep, we see Clev, all flying off the handle, all getting the kills. Tarmac, again, just being the guy in the background, quietly making those kills, and suddenly we have the man we behind. Here. 
No, we have not. We've got Trop on you stage. Know, you know what this is right now? This is the final, it's baby. Final match. Woo! It's the, final match. it's the finals. So I basically went and annoyed the shit out of everybody. And I was like, hurting people. And I'm like, we're going to get the most hype ever. Absolutely. <laughs> Trop, trop, trop. What? There we go. Oh, wow. This Let's sounds hear amazing. Them, man. Let's hear them. Can you man. hear me? Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> this sounds great. Clearly. All right. I personally have a favorite, but I'm curious. You're going to make noise for this team or this team? I want to know who's louder. Make some noise for Vortex. Let's get some noise for Vortex. And now, my personal favorite, Nadex. I love you. Let's get some noise from Wrecked! Yeah! I just want to say, I'm being annoying and I'm running on zero sleep right now, but this is a fucking big deal, guys. This is a really, really big deal. When's the last time something like this happened? Pre-COVID. Uh, uh, Pre-COVID, about four and a half years ago. Four and and I gotta be honest, ago. it was never as fire as this. This has been amazing. Not only that. Beginning to end. Now is the time. Oh yeah. We got three new headsets coming out this holiday season. We got PlayStation VR 2 coming out early next year. We have four other headsets that are a little smaller, but you never know, they might pop off. We have more headsets coming out this year than games, but guess what? We are coming out November 17th. So I'm fucking really excited for that. We're coming out this holiday season. If we're not a top seller, then fuck, I don't know what I'm gonna do. But <laughs> this is a really big deal. We're live streaming this to everybody. All the content creators and influencers that are here are tweeting it out. We're gonna have a lot of hype on this. The more hype that you guys are, the better match, and I hope it ends. We're going 11 on this or nine? Nine. Right. I don't know. Let's oh, find yeah? out. Well, We're gonna launch. Okay. No, you do it. You run the video. I'm very excited. Thank you very much, everybody. I'll leave it to the pros. What you didn't know was there was a voice in here. Everyone, give it up for Tropical. <laughs> Woo! We have over 200 VR esports teams involved with us. We have over 300 Patreon supporters, over 1,500 bug hunters, and over 60,000 Discord members, and over 100,000 TikTok friends. We haven't even launched yet. And who would have thought that a bunch of VR nerds would be throwing the largest VR esports tournament since 2018? One of the reasons why we wanted to host this Miami Vale Major beta tournament before we even launch is so that we can all make sure that the game is ready. And we think it finally is. Now, it's our pleasure to announce we'll be launching November 17th on Steam, early access for everybody to come and play. Something that's imminent and exciting is Capture the Orb, our Capture the Flag style game mode. It'll be available upon launch on Steam early access. Also, by the end of this year, we'll have a new game mode available, which has never been done in VR. Next year is going to be exciting because we'll have another tournament. We're incredibly proud of the Miami Vale Major. We think it highlights a lot of our achievements from this past year. As a team, it's been an immense joy to work on everything up to date, but we're not done yet. Next year is going to be all about getting more people in Veil, cross-platform support, more ways to share the game experience with others and be social, and we'll be working our way up to our own take on modding. It's still only just the beginning. Join us on Discord, wishlist on Steam, and we'll see you in the game. November all right. the 7th. 17th, November the 17th, ladies and gentlemen. I've uh, marked that in my calendar. Obviously, I already have Veil, but I'm going to be buying another copy to support it because this game needs to go big. I mean, we're seeing the potential of it here. We want it to go worldwide. We want it to go season after season. We want it to be one of many. I mean, after this, this is not going to be worldwide. I mean, this is already worldwide, right? I mean, we've got teams all over the world playing this. Um, everybody out there should be across the world should be watching this if they're not. I, I think there's somewhere in Antarctica where they haven't got. Uh, I'm the game sure. Yet, so. You know, we'll get there. Possibly. Right, but anyway, this is the final. We've got Wrecked. We've got Vortex. I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to put you on both on stage. And I don't want to hear a cowardly answer out of you this time, all right? I want to hear the, oh, maybe the women. <laughs> I want to hear who do you think is going to take it? Vortex. All right. I'm Zuck. going with it. Zuck's going with Vortex. I like blue. Blue's cool. The analyst right here, who should have the numbers to his head, he should know statistically who's more likely to win. Who's it going to be, Wrecked or Vortex? What's the crowd saying? Oh, wow. I mean, we heard it from Tropical, but I, I'm, I got to put my bet with Vortex. Whoa, either side of me right now, Vortex. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with Wrecked. 
Um, I'm going to go with Wrecked. I'm going to go with Wrecked. You just want to be a crowd favorite. You just want to be the crowd favorite. Get out here for Wrecked. <laughs> No, there's there's a reason that I went with Vortex. I'll, I'll let Zuck, you know, decide on his. Um, you know, Vortex has has a long running with with the headsets, right? With the controllers, okay. right? That makes a big difference. You know, Rekt has only had these headsets and controllers for the last three weeks or so, um, and also, uh, you know, just the time that they've had together. Yeah, chemistry. but we've seen what Rekt is capable of. Anyway, we're gonna run a very quick Rezzle ad right now before we go into the final, the end of the road, ladies and gentlemen. Rezzle. I'm trying to get where I'm going, but hey, if you trolling, that's what he f thinking you want me, right where you want me. I tell the coach, just duck, yeah. Sending them shots, we send them back, yeah. They run about that. Run, so it's bounce back. Need more hands, just to count that. Stay on my bully, I need me more breeze. Just so we can get the team right. Loaded up, really. Dogs on the leash, and you be knowing that's a scary sight. Don't happen overnight. With some sacrifice, sugar spice, and everything nice. Mix it up, and got a smile. Started from the mud, now you see us going low. Numbers never lie, now you see us blowing up. People used to front, now you see them showing up. Show us up, I've been down and now we're low. Keep it a real thing. Taking a card, I was giving my blessings, it's already written. Rap little ribbon, putting ourselves in positions to make it some major decisions. Started from the mud, now you see us going low. Numbers never lie, now you see us blowing up. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. This is the end of the road for the Miami Vale Major. This is the final. This is Wrecked versus Vortex. We've heard these two clowns saying Vortex are going to take it. We're going to see Wrecked take it, in my opinion. Here we go. Map one. Match for the final. Get hyped, let's go. We got Vortex and Rack. Come on, everybody. They're playing for $20,000, folks. Don't forget that. The winner takes 20, the loser takes 10. Both nice chunks of changes. We see Vortex on the aggressor going on an A side push with a silent assassin in the middle trying to cut down any rotate that might happen. Meanwhile, we see a 2 1 2 spread from Rack. They're ready for this. Yeah, Vortex trying to execute quickly here. Clev's gonna take down Frick and take down Clev with the knife. Huge entries from Clev there. Tarmac's gonna grab Sumachi. Yellow's gonna grab Clev. Chillstrap's gonna grab Yellow and Crack a J. And that's it. Rek takes round number one. I'm sorry, Rek. What? Wow. 21 wow. now. 21 rounds. 20 out of 20 out of 22. 20, oh, 20, out, of 20 21. out of 21 rounds. 20 out of 21 They have not rounds. lost more than one round of the gunshot that was the with the pistol. Yeah, that was close. But that wasn't close. Well, I mean, destroyed that. It looked close. I mean, Please. they traded a couple kills back and forth, but Rex clearly dominated on pistol rounds, and nobody can dispute that. Stats don't lie. There is a reason why Wrecked are the favorites right now, and part of that is the pistol rounds. If you don't get defeated in pistol rounds, guess what? You get two free points for a map. Here in Vortex going to set up slowly here into the uh, lower skate park area. One in the middle. They're waiting for utility here. They're trying to avoid getting early naded. So dangerous on Kidi coming through that middle uh, kind of choke point area. But I mean, look at Vortex right now. They're trying to like, tempt out the utility. They, do, well, they want Rek to use up the utility. And you can see on the beautiful UI that half the utility from Rek has already been used. Meanwhile, Vortex pretty much untouched. Yeah, and here comes the execute. They're going to be dropping nades all over that CTB connector there. Smoke's yep. coming out. Wrecked are ready for it, though. I mean, look at the spread. They've got a 2-2-2, two, 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 uh, sorry, 1-2-2 two, two spread across the top of the map, and they're ready for a B push. Here comes Samachi taking out Tarmac in that middle area. Now Frick looking for Nadex. Nadex going to swing out, but Frick says no way. Takes him down. Now Vortex has full control of the B site here, and it's all up to Clev and Chill Step. Trying to work their way back to the B site here. Have to retake on a 2-on-5 situation. Vortex are like, B site is ours. Come at us, Wrecked. You might have taken round one, but we outnumber you, we outgun you, there's five of us, there's two of you, and b site belongs to us, and it really is an uphill struggle. Now with Chill Step and Clev. Chill Step takes that one! Yellow had immediately on the refrag. Now it's all up to Clev, who's gonna get killed by Crack and Jay, and that's gonna be the first round for Vortex. Give it up for Vortex, let's go! Wow. One, one, ladies and gentlemen, straight off the bat, it's exactly what we see for a final. What an offensive push there through uh, Skate Park. You know, round being able to take down uh, Nidix and Basil Maz on the B side, on Skate Park side, right. that was key right there. You take those two kills away and they controlled B side and they controlled it very nicely. The aggression paid off, right? And you're forcing Wreck to come into your teeth. You've got your guns up. 
Your five versus two. Amazing play from They're Bordek. not scared. You can the, see that right now. They're going straight for the strength. Absolutely. And the key to that was Samachi in the middle ground. He took the middle ground and he shut down any hope of a rotate coming in strong. A yeah, really smart play by Samachi there. And Vortex going to set up very similarly to last round with three, well, four members in the bottom of skate here. And again, Samachi lurking in the middle here. Vortex seems to really favor this B skate park push, but they want to go slowly. Nades ringing out everywhere Nades here, everywhere. but not finding anybody. Only Samachi took a little bit of damage to a native oh, middle there. Oh, what Vortex are doing right now. They're still they're, they're contemplating doing a wrap around to A side. You can see Rex defense holding strong on the B side. Now Vortex just holding back, saying, "Come on, make some noise, Rex. Give us an idea of what your defense is doing." Oh, Yellow Hat spots Basil possibly through a crack there. Not sure he can actually deal damage to him there. Friggin Yellow both trying to enter here. Vortex coming back now. Trying to work their way back into the B site here. Basil's gonna swing out, gonna have to deal with Thief. Thief takes him down. What a shot from Thief there. Now it's all up to Nadix on the B site here. The rest of Rekt is isolated on the middle area. As I say that, Tarmac's gonna take down Thief, trying to rotate back in here. Kraka Jay's gonna grab Tarmac, Chilson's gonna grab Kraka. Clev's gonna grab Sinatra. Now it's a two on three in favor of Rekt now. Nadix and Chillstep gonna close Ooh. that out. And that's a second round in favor of Rekt. Lampy, Rekt answering straight back. Yeah, they figured that out quickly. They tried that skate park push once again, but they, yep. they didn't allow didn't allow that to push through. Uh, the rotations shot. were good. Clev stayed patiently, waited on A site, waited for Simachi to push through A, and picked him up in the back. Right, I mean, Rekt saw what happened in the previous round. They got yep. torn apart, immediately adapt. And this is one of the, uh, we, Quick keep saying, we keep using the word adapt today, but Rekt have performed this to an art. It, Natix is a great player, but there are four equally amazing players on that team, and they are showing it right now. Wreck really showing that they can make changes to Vortex's play here. However, Vortex kind of forcing a strong arm play on B here again. They're just setting up. They're waiting for the nades. They're trying to drain utility from Wreck before they get actually, you know, in there. Otherwise, they might die to a nade stacked up. Nades ringing out all over the place, but nobody's really able to find anybody. All these players just dodging all these yeah, nades. They Vortex. know it's coming. Vortex are going live. They're charging in now. Freak picks up Vizelman. He's pushing in Thief. On the secondary, looking for, uh, he knows Natix is over there. He knows he's going to be hiding over. Beast side always belongs to Natix. If you can punch through him, you can take it. But Jill stepped on the 2K, takes down two, leaving just Thief and Yellow Hat to try and push him for Vortex. Now it is all on Thieves. Can yep. Thief steal the victory here? Takes up Clev. They put it into a one versus three, making it a bit more manageable. He's going to pick up the scanner here. He needs, he's got about 55 seconds left on the clock here. He's got options, but Chillstep's lurking in alley here. Thief, not sure he's going to be ready for him. Chillstep throws around. Oh, oh, but Thief just wrong place, wrong time. Didn't point out. Man, that would have been an upset. But Thief now silently trying to push around a B. He's making them feel like he's going for an A. And that is forcing one of the wrecked defenders to push out to A. One at B and one in the middle. They got a 1-1 one, one split. Yeah, Thief's going to be trying to work into B site here, but still has to deal with Nadix hiding on the back of the site here. Thief He's been identified. He's making a lot of noise. Seconds. Chill step rotating. Tarmac rotating. Natix ready for it. Looking for the shot. Here's the noise. Boom! Headshot! Nice play from Natix there. Second, third round for Rack. 3 1 now. Yeah, beautiful try there by uh, Chill step. Trying to rotate back through. You know, and he had our uh, Chill step was watching center, watching that rotate to go through. You know, called it out and then the rotation round back shot. to B. Nadix didn't leave his sight. Nope. Stayed patiently and played his for You know, oh. they didn't they didn't get excited and they didn't leave their sight. No. And we saw why Nadix has got such a reputation, right? He was zeroed in on that head. He could have done it with one bullet. He put three in there just for safekeeping, right? Boom, boom, boom. You're done. That round is ours. Thank you much. Wrecked three. Vortex one. Vortex have got to change it up. They started out strong, they but they have lost all momentum. I think they are. Look, watch out. We got a fax execute going on here, but Basil's pushing up. Basil takes out two. <laughs> Yellow Hat able to get him, but not before Basil grabs two members of Vortex, leaving into a three on five. Tom Thief's going to go down from a nade. Out thief. Now it's two on four. Crack -J and Yellow Hat, the only members standing for Vortex as Yellow takes down Clev, and now there's a two on three. They got a minute 20 left on the clock here. Yellow does have the scanner, so they have some time, they have some options, but Nadix is still alive on that B site, anchoring that site with Chill Step and Tarmac watching the middle, and that's gonna make it really difficult for Vortex to get anything done here. I mean, when you have the scanner, you have options. You're absolutely right. When you have the scanner, you have options. Right now, you've got two players, Cracker Jack, three and three, Yellow Hat, four and three against Chill Step, six and one. Chill Step just killing it today. He's been my favorite throughout the entire tournament. One guy who I didn't know about just coming out strong, Tom right. McKinney on Yellow Hat, and it's all on Cracker J right now against three wrecked players. Yeah, Cracker J is gonna have to force the fight here, does. He's successful against Tarmac, takes him down, but now he still has Nadix holding the B site. Chill Step's holding the rotate to A. He has to force a 1v1 here. 
He needs to get the scanner. Yellow Hat dro uh, dropped it right behind him. He's going to pick that up. Now he's going to try and rotate A. He's going to have to deal with Chist Up, who's been playing phenomenally today. Delay. Absolute monster on land. He's going to have to deal with them. I'm not sure he's going to be ready in this corner. He just swings out into Chill Step. Waiting for it. There it is. I mean, that could, he, that he could have pre fired that better. No way. Chill Step ready. 7 1, ladies and gentlemen. Chill Step on fire right now. Right now, it's, it's, it's the patience of Wrecked. I mean, the Wrecked is playing perfectly patient. You know, they're, they're staying on their sights. They're not losing their confidence of their teammates, right? They're, they're, they're telling themselves, I have confidence in my team on the other side of the map to do what they need to do right. to hold that side down. It is my job to hold this side down and exactly what's going on right now. And then Basil Maz getting aggressive on defense there, pushing through Skate Park. He found two coming through Skate Park with their hands up, trying to throw utility out. I know. Caught with your pants down pretty Basically. much. Vortex yep. now with only one point on the board. They are changing their plays up, but they're still doing a P-side push. We haven't seen them do an A-side push yet. It's right. not been working great for them. And again, if you're pushing into Nate 16, he's famous for holding the B-side for a reason. Basil's trying to get through the smoke there. Picks up Frank, picks up deep. Basil, oh, who came from oh, Basil? Massive. But People Yellow are and Cracker J going to grab both of them there, and now it is a two on three. Yellow and Cracker J again, the last two members standing for uh, Vortex here. Chill Step, Clev, and Tarmac left for Wrecked. Tarmac Speed. working on arches here. Speed scan goes in chill step now, wanting that extra kill. He's hungry, he's not happy at 7-1. He wants to turn this all the way up to 20. Clev's flanking around, picks up Cracker J. Tarmac picks up Yellow. Wrecked out to a commanding lead here on Kidi. As what a, easily get the interrupt. Here. What a retake. Uh, they're playing rock, paper, scissors, ladies and gentlemen. You love to see it, especially on live, on stage. Scan interrupted. Players having some fun out here. We love to see that, man. Yeah, absolutely. Great retake there again by Wrecked. I mean, they, they stayed patient. They knew they lost the site, but they waited for all three players to be ready to pounce at one time. Uh, you gotta, you gotta retake that. That it, you know, B site is very small. That's wow, a, it's a circle, team. right? There's only so many places you can hide. Right, you need right, all right. the okay. angles covered. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, so come with me, uh, arguably Wrecked right, okay. uh, is the team that uh, we see, well, Wrecked on defense. Defense on Kitty is usually the one that has the advantage. So Wrecked currently have a theoretical advantage outside of the, just the skill. They have the map advantage. Vortex on the attack right now. Still looking at a B-side push. Have they not learned? Yeah, I'm not sure if this is a long con by Vortex trying to, you know, get them conditioned to something so they can steal a couple other rounds. But at this point, it's round number seven, and every time they've gone B, However, Rec doesn't really need to make any adjustments here. They're still holding the site. So I'm not sure what... Well, they have made an adjustment here. Frigg and Sumachi at middle now. Crossing over, working out slowly. Trying to look for a pick here. Going to get some utility out. Rec, when I was talking to him yesterday, once again said, if it ain't broke, we won't fix it. We'll keep doing the same thing and again and again until we don't have to. And right now, they don't have to. Here comes Frigg through the alley. Going to pick up Tarmac. This might be the adjustment that Vortex Nia trying to split the site. 3-2. Crack a Jay going to grab Basil. Nadix and Chill Step, though, going to grab Yellow and Frig. And now it's a three-on-three -three situation with about 55 seconds left on the clock. And yeah, Chill Step with something to prove. Clive taking down Samachi again in the mid-ground. They're leaving only two. One thief is all at each shoulder now. One versus. And he's taken down by Nadix. 6-1. Right now to rate. Vortex have to hold something back. They need to hold the line. They need to take another point before the round swap. This is the last round they will play on Kitty as colonists. 11th wow. for the finals. So I'm they'll, wrong. They'll actually have a couple more. Um, but so far, Wrecked is playing phenomenally, commanding lead 6 1. Vortex really needs to figure something out to get, you know, two, three, at least rounds coming into Ray Upside. Again, we're seeing a B push. I, I, I don't know. Uh, Vortex might be really trying to heavily condition Wrecked to believe that's all they're capable of. But they fooled me. That's I, I, right now, I feel like Vortex is just stuck in a time loop. It's yeah. Groundhog Day, live on stage in Miami. Wrecked versus Vortex. Yeah, we need to see Vortex make some adjustments here and secure a couple rounds. Currently, Rec just has their number. Like, they're just shutting them down. Basil getting aggressive on Alley here. Might swing out and find Frick here. Sumachi's waiting for him. Sumachi's in middle here, not supporting his teammate though. Nate wow. takes down Thief. Basil takes down Frigg. Sumachi too late helping Frigg out there. And Basil yeah, is going to go down to Sumachi. The is super important. I mean, yes, he was too late, but better than one than none, right? Cracker looks for Nate. One versus one. Sight here. Nice pick by Cracker. Cracker now we're in a three on three situation. Vortex has sight control. They need to bring the scanner into the site. Yellow moving his way on up. And try and get the setup here, but Chill Steps muscling his way in. Cracker J going to swing wide, try to find uh, Chill Step there. Not able to. Cracker J and Yellow Hat, the two standouts right now on Vortex with seven on Cracker J, six on Yellow Hat. If there are three players you want right up right now, it's Cracker J, Samachi, and Yellow Hat as the Yellow Hat picks up Chill Step, leaving it just in Clev and Tarmac to retake. Cracker J taking down Clev. It's all on Tarmac's shoulders right now. That's it, Samachi takes down Tarmac as Tarmac takes on Yellow Hat. And that gives Vortex a very much needed point. 6-2, still in Rex's favor. Let's go.
Yeah, great work there. And Sumachi holding back on his – he was playing – he's offense, Brown's right, but he's playing it. defense as he was waiting. After the scan got put in, he's, he waited over there in uh, the skate park area, waiting for that rotation to come through from mid. Right. You know, picked up that one major kill. You know, they were not expecting Sumachi to stay in the skate park. I mean, we've seen lots of scans right now, but we not we haven't seen any even get remotely close to running out of time because Wrecked are all over it every time. They're in your face. They're like, well, you want to get a scan in? But we won't wait for the last 20 seconds. We're going in hot and heavy right now. Yeah, Wrecked very aggressive on the retakes. Basil's going to be pushing down to the bottom of B here, trying to look for Samachi and Yelha. Look at the play from Vortex here. They've won a round taking B now, and they're going to try and slow push A. This might have been what I meant by a long con, where they're waiting now, and they're setting up for a fake on B, but Basil's not going to let that happen. He's right there. He's ready for it. <laughs> Samachi comes out, though, and finds him. That's a huge pick from Samachi there. They played the rope and dope, but it paid off. But meanwhile, the real strike is coming on A, and they fooled them into thinking the B strike is happening. You can see it's a one Three set up with only Clev defending the A site. This could be big for Vortex. You know, Vortex needs to hurry up here and execute A site before they rotate back. Samachi and uh, Yellow Hat over on B site here have sold the fake, but no uh, execute on Rekt, site now. Rekt but, is yeah, moving Rekt, back. They're like sniffing something. Wait, wait, where are the enemy? Like we we need to reset our defense, guys. That's a, like a next level play. You see that coming from the top level teams. They think the B site's attack's happening. Wait. It hasn't happened. Guys, this is something's up. Yellow hat picking up Tomac in the mid ground. Big pickup. Clev! Wow! Two two pick with a double. Sitting on dice, just waiting for that. Now it's a two There's on three control, situation right? in favor of Vortex here as they're working their way onto site control. They still have Chill Step and Nadix left for Wrecked. They're going to get Scans the scan in. out here. Samachi yeah, takes down Chill Step. Now it's all up to Nadix. Yeah, Nadix, we know he's good. We know he's hot. But can he take out three Vortex? I don't know. These are the top of the team. He's going to re-rotating around to bridge side here. Doesn't know that he's behind the rock. Run, rock, move. Oh, here's him. Yellow hat going to swing out. Thief's going to grab Nadix, and that's going to be a third round for Vortex here. 6-3. Final round Whoa. for this half on Kidi. <laughs> yeah, that A push was going slow at first. I thought, I, thought they, I thought they waited too long at first. They waited so long that the wow, defense was able to rotate back, but it was the, hey, crack, go it was the help from the other side that you know, really helped out. Basil's probably going to get... I mean, ultimately, it worked. That's the main thing. It yes, maybe they waited a tiny bit too long, but their aggression paid off, the targets paid off, their aim was true, the grenades are true, they got the scan in, they forced the rotate, Nadix was by himself, okay, and they took him down. And here comes a fast execute from Vortex. They're just getting aggressive needs in there, this trying to move up through cave quickly. What's up? Lots of foot Come on, where's my cave, boys? We're going. I'm hearing audio, and I love what I'm hearing. Samachi now through the center area. Brick. Brick's in a battle with Basil. He's going to take him down, though. That was a four on four. Chill, chill, chill stack. Cracker. Taking down Crack a Thief. Taking down Nadix. 3 3. Yeah. Listen into the comms here, Vortex. Or Crack. Chill step. Just a murder in this one. Takes down one. Gets re refragged. No, he doesn't. Thief takes down Tomek. Thief takes down Chill step. And that one. Vortex. Two, two versus one. Clev bringing it to one versus one. Yellow. Yellow. Wow. Taking it to Vortex as we go to the round swap. Six, Six four. to four, folks. Woo! It is back to just a two round deficit here. Going into the round swap, or the side swap, and into the next pistol round. Ladies and gentlemen, Vortex down but not out as they come back 6-4. They were 6-1 down, but wait, they're still wait, in this wait, as we go wait. into the round swap. The dreaded pistol round. Will they be able to break Rex run on the pistol rounds? 21 and, sorry, 22 20. rounds, 21-1 on pistols throughout the entire tournament. These are the teams to break that run right now. Vortex over there, needs someone to prove. Meanwhile... Yeah, wrecked absolutely insane on pistol rounds. Looks like they're going to try and get three slow, no, four slow into A with just Clev working through middle here. We've seen this before from uh, Wreck. They, they like to move up slowly, and then when they're right at the edge, execute quickly as a squad. So, see if they do the same thing here. Right. Send some, send some yeah. uh, skate nades. What are... Here come the nades. They're going the live with the nades. Okay. Utility, everything flying out. Flashes, smokes, nades. Okay. Not finding anyone, but it's breaking the confusion they need as they charge in half. But meanwhile, you can see Vortex collapsing in fast. Frank's going to grab Chill Step. Nice sight hold there. He's going to deal with more members of Wreck coming out now fast. Thief's going to grab Tarmac. Frank's going to grab Basil. They're He's going to grab Clem. They're, They're going to win the pistol round. It's five versus one. Nadex takes down one, but it's not wow. enough. Nadex just down. Vortex <laughs> break the run of Wreck. <laughs> That's Whoa! what Vortex needed right there. That is the momentum that they needed, man. What a take on A-side. Impressive. I mean, golly.
I mean, if there is something you need to boost your morale, it's knowing that they have that run and breaking that run. I mean, Suddenly, look. they've just taken Rex victory hold on this pistol round and said, look, you know what? We were down, we're back, we're five, you're six, we're coming. Yeah, we got three players now at double-digit kills. Clev and Chill Step on the Rex side and Thief on the Vortex side. Amazing job here going on. Yeah, Rex going to be setting up with a 3-2 split, three into lower skate, two in the middle. Clev and Nadix working together. These guys have played together for a long time, trying to work through middle here and find anybody that can. Meanwhile, Samachi getting a little bit aggressive onto the bottom of skate here. Samachi's set up on tarp. He's in a very awkward spot. If they don't check that, it could do a lot of damage here. Uh, here comes Samachi, overextends. Chill Step punishes him for that. Thief, Thief takes down Tarmac with the nade. Boom, he's done. Clem takes down Yellow Hat with the nade. The is... artillery strikes go back and forth on B side. Guys, I'm not taking down Thief. What an entry from Basil there. Two versus four situation right now. Vortex on the receiving end. They have two men down. Basil comes in. Kraga taking out Chill Step. It's a one versus three. It's not looking good for Vortex, and that's it. Clem with a single handed drop shot. He one hand drop shot. Get out of if here. If you're going to he do says. it, do it in style. Do it in style. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can I just, got, ladies and gentlemen, we are seeing camera work from a hidden team back there. There are three person wow, strong team with one directing it. Can I just get a round of applause for the observers in the back, the unlocked observers? They're doing a hell of a job for us right now, and they deserve some love. Thank you. And here we go. Five, seven, Wrecked. Vortex. Setting Two up again. Five. Now with a one, one, three. They're sending one towards A, one towards middle, three into lower skate. They've got the scanner at the lower skate position now. Tarmac gonna throw a couple of utility in there. Now fall back, meet up with Clev in the middle, possibly try and execute towards the B site here. Vortex yeah. not really buying any of this. Yeah, but it still makes them think, what, wait, what, are, are they double bluffing us? Are they bluffing us? We just don't know. Meanwhile, we can see there's going on 2-3 split from Wreck. They are definitely looking for a B-side strike. Meanwhile, a 2-1-2 two, two spread from Vortex. They are still in an adaptive defense position. Yeah. Wreck's going to start getting involved on the B-side here. Here comes the push. Smoke comes out from Crack of J. That's going to delay Wreck just a little bit, but the utility's all over the place. They get the left side smoke blocking up the arch position. Crack of J's going to find one. Chill step goes down. It's a big pick up. rotating around trying to find another. Kenny, Thief's gonna grab Nadix. Thief's gonna grab Basil as well. Now it is a two on four with Clev and Tarmac. Frag in the mid ground, takes down one, Smash takes down the other, and that gives Vortex the sixth point. It's seven, six, Vortex will not let Wreck get away. Wow. Back the, and forth, back the, and forth. The utility was on point there. The defensive smokes, I mean, just everything was working round very, very well. Tank. But, I mean, Vortex coming out on top. Right, right, right. I mean, this is what we want to see, ladies and gentlemen. Esports, VR, live on stage in Miami, the end of the road, and we're seeing two amazing teams. Vortex were down to one point against Rex 6, and they are bringing it back, and this is what we want to see live on stage. I swear I didn't pay them to do that. <laughs> now we're going to see the complete opposite setup here from Rex. Three going towards A, one in middle and one in B. Literally the opposite of what we saw in the last round. Slowly working through A here, possibly trying to throw a fake onto B here. Wrecked, setting up slowly, just trying to pick anybody off. They'll likely go to the top here in the next few fast, but Yellow Hat's in an advanced position here. He's pushed up. He should be dangerous in that spot there. Tarmac getting some utility going here. Trying to sell a little bit of fake, but Vortex is not biting on any of this fake. They're going to go live any second. And Three, here comes the two, execute. one. Smoke's Utilities coming out. out. all over the place. A little bit going a bit too high, going onto the roof. Meanwhile, they're pushing in hard on the A side. The rotate from Vortex coming in. Yellow Hat picking up Gel Step. Freak picking up Natix, that puts down Rack to three players. Yellow had taken out Clev. That leaves just two. Basil Mountain Tarmac. Basil Mountain takes down Frig. And it's still four versus two in Vortex's favor. Yeah, Yellow had very dangerous in that advanced position outside of A main there. And now it's a, like you said, two versus four situation. Basil and Tarmac have a ton of work to do here. They do have the scanner. They have about 40 seconds left on the clock. They need to make a decision on what they're going to do here. They need to make a pick and get some sight control before they can do anything. Tarmac's just looking for Samachi, but Samachi's wow, not going to Look how close find they it. are. Yeah, the mind games right now. Samachi hears games. it. Samachi sees it. Tarmac doing a rotate. That's He's going to be called out. Goes through the middle ground, but they are running out of time. Basilmas might have the puck, but it doesn't matter. He's on the A side. The A side is defended. Yeah, Tarmac's just trying to pull them away so th maybe Basil can get a plant here. Tarmac's going to trade with Kraken J, and now Basil's going to be heading into the A site. He has the ability to get in here, but Yellow Hat isn't buying it. He's the first man on scene here responding to this threat. Basil's in trouble now. Vortex is swarming like angry wasps. He's not going to be able to do anything, and Yellow Hat Yellow takes Hat. him down. 7-7, seven, seven, ladies We're and gentlemen. all tied up. Woo! You couldn't ask for a better finals match. Get hyped. This is the Miami Veil vale Major. Whoever wins this going home with $20,000 in cash. Is Wrecked going to take it? Everyone for Wrecked. Let's hear it. Adam Vortex.
Vortex. Let's hear it for Vortex. Woo! Seven, seven, let's go. Wreck now setting up with a 2-1-2. Another adjustment coming out of them here. Really trying to make anything work at this point. Vortex has been very strong defensively so far in this half. Flash is coming out of middle. Samachi batting a little bit there with Clev. Neither player taking significant damage. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, actually, Samachi's Samachi health? has no health. He has zero health right now. That is not ideal. They <laughs> need there from Clev. Again, again, if he gets a little bit of dust in his eyes, he's like, oh, that's, oh, I'm dead. If literally anybody sneezes on him, he's in trouble. <laughs> Nadix trying to work COVID this long A right. angle with Basil here. Wow, Nadix has been identified. Shots come up from Yellow Hat, but Nadix just tucks in. Let's let's bullets well, fly by and just gonna, you know what? You can't stay here looking at me forever, so I'm just gonna hide until you go off the line. It's interesting to watch Wreck through, uh, work through the map like this. They're taking some mid control. They have some B control, but Vortex is kind of rotating around and scrambling a little bit here. Chill Step working up slowly in this grass position, trying to find track of Jay. Can't quite get the angle on it. Meanwhile, Thief's gonna take down Basil. Thief's gonna swing out, grab Chill Step. Wow, Huge real. 2K there from Thief. Now Clev's coming through the alley position, gonna grab Thief. Trying to find crack of Jay still. He's Meanwhile, on the on inside, we've got a little hidden fight. Yellow Hat takes Nadix out. Nadix is going in quiet. Yellow Hat finds him, so Magic finds Clev. And that means it's just on tarmac. Can he lay the concrete? He can't! Wow. Crack of Jay punishes! Vortex taking the lead. Amazing job. I mean, these guys are playing in impressive defense right now. They are right, patiently right. waiting. Yes, they, they're getting nervous. You can see them bouncing back and forth, and you can see them unsure of what's going on. But yes, they are, they're holding their ground, and they are not getting too antsy, and they're not getting re -peaky. Reminder, it was six. It was one. Yeah. Now it is eight. It is seven, and Vortex are on the way back. Yeah, Vortex is storming back right now. Seven to one since it was six to one. Incredible. Really strong defensively. Rekt has to do something here, make some type of an adjustment here to get some picks and get some site control. So far, Vortex has done a good job of shutting down the rounds on the Rayab side. Honestly, the last time I stood up in hype, I think I pulled a muscle. So I'm going to be doing that less, and you can stand up next time. Don't think I'll be doing that. All right, the quiet push coming in from Rekt on the A side. Meanwhile, they've got a silent killer in the B side, uh, in the middle, looking for those rotates, looking for those kills. Who's the guy in the middle? That's it always Clev. It's always Clev. It's always Clev. Nade comes in from Yellow Hat. He, he takes Nade down. That nade. That is, ladies and gentlemen, that is a posted Nade. Very hard to land, and he lands it well. Frick taking down Chill Step, leaving Rekt. But only three players. Suddenly, the momentum is getting some tarmac taking down Frick. Basil must take it down three. That is a two on three in favor of Wrecked. We just got Crack of Jay and Samachi left for Vortex against Basil, Clev, and Tarmac. Look at the silence Sam there by Samachi. He's just waiting, just perfectly waiting for that. Looking for him. Yeah, that Gets was the killer really smart Tarmac. play from Samachi. It wasn't free. He took a lot of hits from that, but he is up right now, and it's two versus two. Crack of Jay comes around hard. Basil Mouse, his and coming, takes him down. Now it's all up to Samachi. Low on health. He's got about 30% HP now against Basil Maz and Clev. Clev does, does have the scanner here. They have some control towards B-Sight. Yeah, they're going to go straight to B-Sight. Samachi's in an right. awkward position, yeah. yeah Samachi it's... means he needs to push through the middle. He's going to run into uh, Bazalmaz at some point. He's going to hear him coming. He's going to hear the rotate. There it is. He's past the midline. The rotate's been confirmed. Clev's putting the scan in even before the scan yeah, is there. Sumachi shot. knows what's happening. He's got about 37 seconds to do something about it. Yeah, he's going to sneak by Basil here. Clev's going to have to call for support and relatively soon. Samachi, if he... He's aggressive with this. Maybe he can isolate Clev and take a 1v1 into another 1v1 rather than a 2v1, but no, it doesn't late. matter yet. Yeah, it's too late. You're yeah. right. Basil's now watching this angle for him. He's going to swing out here. Oop, turns around. Samachi very sneaky right now. There Picks it is. Up Gets Basil. Him. Takes down one. 1v1. The 1v1 against Clev. He's got about 10 seconds to do it. Oh, 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 pull muscle. Samachi bringing it up to 9-7. What a player. Wow, what a clutch. I mean, I for sure thought Basil Maz heard Sumachi cut through the middle there. And I thought I was going to see Basil cut through Skate Park and, and cut him off. But he must have, I mean, the auto must not have been there. And, and wow. Yeah, incredible 1v2 wow. there from Samachi. I mean, that is clutch moments right there. Yeah, on land in a crowd like this, all fired up, like, wow. So, Lampy, tell me about the uh, kills right now. You're the analyst. Tell me what I'm seeing. Yeah, so, I mean, Yellow Hat with 14 kills, I mean, that's impressive in itself. You know, we got three guys double digits. I'm not sure the last guy, what he had going in onto that last map. It looked like we had a little tech issue. One guy disconnected there, so we're going to get that sorted out. But what but, I see is both teams pulling all the weight. I mean, yeah, there's there's really nobody that's no. not doing their job right now, and that's we, why we're seeing such a close score. Yeah, we, we got 14, 12, 9, 10, and then on the other side, we saw 14, uh, 13, 12, 
10, 9. Um, the, the kill spread is even. That is two teams of aces doing everything they can to get the biggest slice of that pie. Absolutely, yeah. And everything's just working perfectly for both sides. There are just some minor things that are happening on both sides that they're losing their gunfights or they're not holding the right angles or they're, they're pressing when they shouldn't or they separate themselves. I saw a moment where Rex, they were on a 2v, I think there's a 2v3, and they decided to separate themselves and make noise on both sides of the map rather than staying together and fighting together. So. Right. I mean, the storyline for me in this game is the fact that Vortex was down 6-1, and they're wow. now in full control 9-7, right? Yep. Like, that's, that's incredible. Especially, like, here with, yeah, with the pressure in the grand finals, the Miami Vale Major, after two months of playing through tournaments, online seedings, playoffs, and all of this, and these guys are ready for it. I mean, Vortex are two points away from taking map one. They were 6-1 down. Wreck was showing their early dominance. Vortex, adaptive play style, evolving it, figuring out what their enemies are doing, and they come back strong, they come back equal, they overtake, and now they're in a very, very dominant position, and Wrecked are on the back foot. Yeah, Vortex is showing extreme mental fortitude. Just being down 6-1 and, you know, thinking about that and knowing that, and you're in this big spotlight, and you're down 6-1, and you're not showing out, and then to come back and now leading 9-7. Absolutely. Against one of the number one teams in the world. Yeah, Audience, that's incredible. You, uh, you all made more noise for Wrecked winning, right? You know you did. Vortex are right now 9-7 up against Wrecked. Let, I want to hear that noise again. Everyone for Vortex! Everyone for Wrecked! Everyone for Vortex! No, it's about equal. It's about equal. I don't know who's got the upper hand right now in the uh, in the audience vote. Yeah, next time we call for it, you'll have to do a lot better, I guess. So, <laughs> <laughs> listen, we are uh, very we're close to, the to going into this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope you're down. hearing the games called right did. now. You can hear the joy in their voices. I don't know. I, can I heard hear it. it like, I heard it. <laughs> there we go. They heard you the cheers, so ladies and gentlemen. One more down. time for Vortex. Let's go loud. Louder. Come on. Everyone cheer Vortex. They need the support. Woo. All right. We are going into the next round right now. It is seven points for Rex, nine points for Vortex. Let's see it, ladies and gentlemen. Can Rex bring this back? They are on the backhand. Focus up, Peter. We got it, boys. We're going to go listen in the it. comms to start They're the round. Slow, fucking yeah, they don't know what to do. We got them fucking <laughs> They know they've got Wrecked on the back foot right now. They're going in strong on the defense. Wreck know they've got something to prove. They've got on the back foot. They've lost all momentum. They need to bring it back. They need to change what the they're momentum. doing. We broke the momentum. We can come up strong here. All right, we're going to be quiet right now and listen to this. Mid. I got naded. Step runs up. Backing off. Backing off. Yeah, don't want to... All right, we are right. back in, ladies and gentlemen. Zuck. And it looks like Wrecked is going to be setting up with a 1-1-3 one, one, here, slowly working their way through Skate Park as one member. Basil Mass coming up faster, looking for Yellow. Yellow's behind the big rock again. Yellow Hat takes down Basil. Big pick there. Now it's just Clev in the middle and three towards B right now. Now here comes the execute from Wrecked. Chill Step, Tarmac, Nadix, getting Utility out. Crack a J, looking for him. Clev takes down Yellow with a nade. Crack a J takes down uh, Tarmac with a nade. Dancing around on the site here. Kraken trying to find anything. He's pushing through the other side. Nadix finds him. Now it's a Clef two on Thief. three as Clev takes down Thief. And Wrecked have full beat site control. I mean, Wrecked were down to four players before it even started. Yeah, now they are three, two up. They have dominance on B site. And it's all down to Zamachi and Frick to try and get the retake, which is not something you want to do. When both Chill Step and Nadix and Clev, Clev on fire right now with 15 kills, are the guys defending that uplink. Yeah, Clev an absolute monster right now. Nadix going to work on a long range shot there. Frig trying to find Chill Step. No players able to trade. Tw time is ticking down here. Only about 20 seconds left on the scanner. Samachi getting involved. Finds Kleb. Nadix finds Frig. Now it's all up to Samachi. Chill Step going to find him. And that's a round in favor of Rack. Now battling back after that technical pause. 9-8 in favor of Vortex. Lampy, yeah, yeah. Wrecked back in it. Tell me Yeah, Wrecked back in it, man. They're only one point down now. What a take out on B. Uh, they had three guys still up when the scan went in. They spread themselves out. Even, you know, one of them got a little peaky. They needed to get in some information where that defense was coming from, if they were coming through Arches or if they were coming through Skate Park. Got a little peaky, saw them in Arches, and they were able to rotate and uh, take that last kill. I mean, Wrecked have analyzed the situation. We're seeing that adaptive play again. We're seeing them come back strong. Yes, Vortex were on a killer run. Wrecked may be able to break that momentum completely and bring it back to themselves. It's all to play for. 9-8, it's anybody's game. Yeah, you have to wonder if that technical timeout has, you know, killed some of the momentum that Vortex was taking into that situation. Again, Wrecked setting up here with a 1-1-3. 
three members in lower skate. Working slowly, trying to avoid the nades. Both these teams jockey so much for position early in the map here. They're, they know that they're going to be nade heavy. We see a lot of guys taking double nades and just chucking sauce literally everywhere. Um, so they got to be careful and try and dance around these nades here. Coming down to the one minute mark. Here comes the execute. Sumachi wow. with an awkward angle. Picks wow. up Tarmac, picks up Clef. Sumachi. Huge 2k <laughs> there from Sumachi. Thief's Thief going to grab chill step. step. Now it's up to the two members of Rachnadix and to grab Thief. Now in a two on four situation. 55 seconds left. That level of skill, when you see the shot, no hesitation, straight into a spin. Here's the audio. Takes one down. Nadix trying to pick up, trying to make it keep a life of Wrecked. 9 8 down right now. Basil Mass takes down Yellow Hats. Exactly what they need is a 2 3 versus 2. Meanwhile, though, Wrecked do not have the puck. That puts them on a tactical disadvantage and limits their options. Yeah, Puck's at uh, the barricade position here. Frank's going to be working on Basil, takes him down now. It's all up to Nadix in a 1v3 situation. About 30 seconds left on the clock here. Nadix going to be trying to come around on the A site here. Nowhere Dark. near the puck. I mean, Nadix is nowhere near the puck. He's looking for kills now. He's yep. just trying to yep. get these kills before time runs out. Defense better figure this but out. But Kraka knows it. That, well, they were on the puck. They've left the puck. That's a weird play, especially since now we see that Nadix is on the A site and everyone's coming for him. They want that He's kill and they get that Vortex kill. Takes it. One point away. Vortex is one point away from taking map number one, folks. I mean, map number Match one point. here for $20,000. Wow, well, unexpected, especially right at the start, 6-1. But Wrecked are not out of this. They're eight Round points. Shot. All they need, Wrecked, is three points to take map one. Vortex on the edge of taking it, though. They just need to push it over the line. Yeah, it's honestly a toss-up on, you know, who woke up on the right side of the bed, who's going to win today. I mean, honestly, these teams are so evenly matched, right? And we're seeing it, you know, 6-1 now, and Vortex is in control, 10-8. This has been a back-and-forth matchup. Wrecked, though, has to dig deep here. Vortex on match point. Need only one more round to take map number one. Tactical utility coming out, not finding anyone. It's scaring a few people, but it is not finding any targets. People going loud now on A. Wrecked going in hard. Here Meanwhile, the, the rest of the like the rest of Vortex defense not rotating when they need to. Battle takes down Samachi, a big pickup. Samachi has been a real thorn in the side. Tomic takes a break. Huge entries here by Rack. They're taking down two. Now it's all up to Yellow Hat alone on the site. Tarmac finds him too. Huge by Wrecked here. Now it's a two on five. Wrecked full control of the A site here. Wrecked five versus two right now, as Zuck rightly points out. It's a four versus one. The trade comes out, but it's not enough. Cracker J one against four, and they are four killer players. And the scan comes out. Now Cracker J is truly in trouble. He has to deal with four members of Wrecked and still get to the defuse. Takes about second seconds to defuse that. And Clev's going to trade with him, and that's going to be 10 9. Wrecked's going to pick up that round. Huge. Yeah, Re Rex said, stand back, watch me. I'm going to push a site. I'm going to push it with aggression. They wasted yep. zero time pushing a site, and they just surprised Vortex over there. They had gave them zero time Round to rotate, shot. and they made their Get shots ready. when they counted. They came in with precision, precise strikes. They came in fast. They came in heavy. And they took the site. They took victory on that. They are two points away from taking map one. Vortex still just close to inching it over and taking map one when it matters most. Yeah, last round was an interesting adjustment from Wreck where they sent two towards middle relatively aggressively across that bridge position then pinched onto the A site. Really nice play from Wreck there to switch it up, keep Vortex guessing, and, you know, secure that round. I mean, they took site control there very well. Meanwhile, now they're setting up with a one, two, two. They're going to go with that two middle as well again. But now they have two members lower skate, so possibly yeah, going to try and push up. We haven't seen this before. Th right. This is They're the first trying something different. Wow, Nate almost finds Basil. He's Chops off some of his head, takes him down to about 20% health. Yeah, a little bit of a shave there off the top of the head, but you have to be so careful dancing around. Here comes the execute that we're expecting. Clev and Basil working their way up alley fast. Deep and Kraken here waiting for it. Here's the game. Wow. Oh, wow. That was spicy, so close. Spicy, spicy Basil again just surviving. He's got about 10% health. Each Nate chipping off. Chill just step. step. What an entry. Thief, though, he's there. He takes down Chill Step, still has to deal with Nadix. Now they're pinching on a B site. Thief's in a little bit of trouble, needs support from his team right now. Nadix and Clev both on site. Thief, there's another one. Can he find Nadix, though? No, Nadix has no way. They pick up Frig, taking out Basil, but Nadix now owns B site. He's the B site king, but he is one versus three. Vortex so close to taking the first map. It's all on Nadix's shoulders. He's got no health, but he doesn't have no hope. He's a killer player. He knows what he's doing. He's going to hold tight. Yeah, this is, this is a huge moment here right now for Nadix in a 1v3. There it is. Swings out a little too far, and Yellow Hat takes him down. Vortex is going to take map one, number one here. Let's hear it for Vortex. Let's get hear loud. it for Vortex. Come on, get loud. Get high. Woo! Wow. There's the dance. dance. There's the Let's dance. go, Yellow. That last round was all Thief, man. Thief held down that side. He had three kills on there, wasted no time. 
you know, played it patiently, tucked behind the wall, got a couple head shots, and then traded at the end there. Uh, 3K on one side. 3K on one side? I didn't yeah. realize that. But let's hear it for Wrecked. They put up one heck of a fight in map one. Wrecked, ladies and gentlemen, get loud! Yeah, it's Woo! not over yet. We're going to go into map number two here. It's going to be on Mar. If anyone's going to go to three maps today, it's going to be these guys. Absolutely, and it's what we want to see. It's what we need to see. We want to see third map. We want to go to one versus one, ten points aside. Wishful thinking, maybe. I want to see it. If there's two teams who are doing it, that's the closest match we've seen today, I think. Yeah, pretty much everybody. I mean, Thief had a technical issue where he dropped and his kills and his deaths, you know, they, the, that uh, rotate, that those numbers went away. But everybody was in double digits there. Everybody was in double digits. Um... We have a Metagoons Veil Quest 2 giveaway right now. Uh, head to at Metagoons on Twitter and check out the pin tweet. They're giving away. Okay, I take it back. The competition's already over. If you didn't enter it, it's too late. Tabby, if you're out there, you just won a Quest 2. Congratulations. Let's hear it for Tabby. Let's hear it for Tabby. Get a link cable, get it plugged into the PC on November the 17th. By Veil, enter this. Enter IVRL. Use this time to warm up. Well done, Tabby. Ladies and gentlemen, we just saw Kitty for the last time tonight. We're going to see Marv for the last time coming up. If you haven't seen this map, it's so different, Kitty. Um, Royal Strive, they said it was their favorite. It didn't matter, they got destroyed. Cobra Cartel said it was their favorite. It doesn't matter, they got destroyed by these two teams right here. Ma, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Mar is a really interesting map with a lot of, you know, distinct possibilities with the zip lines, with the verticality. Watch out for the lava. Do you think we're going to see anybody die to the lava today on this stage, on this, you know, the nerves <laughs> and everything? If anything, we're going to see it the hole in the wall. You know, when you back up a yeah. little bit there and yep. you try to make that angle and just, oops, yeah, when stepped you're, in lava. When you're fighting each other through the glass and you can't yeah. really shoot each other and you back up, you know, not wanting to get peeked out or anything like that. We've seen it before through the playoffs where you back up and you don't really know what's behind you, right? So yep. we've seen people touch their toes in the lava and, and die. In this stage of the game, I would hope we don't see that. I mean, listen, Wrecked did well. Nine points on the board, two points oh away gosh. from taking it. Almost broke that momentum. They had the early lead. Vortex, on the other hand, was 6-1 down. A lot of teams would crumble under that pressure, right? You're five points behind against a team of that caliber. All we saw, we saw them dig in. We saw them figure it out. We saw them bring it back. And both these teams getting set up right now. It's a good time to run through all of our wonderful sponsors that we have. Our presenting sponsor today is Metagoons. Just gave away that quest, too. Give it up Woo! for Metagoons. Today we are powered by Live, an amazing content creation tool for VR streamers, as well as our replay sponsor is powered by Rezzel, XR Sports Training Tool, and our stream sponsor is Smash Drums. We saw a performance on that earlier today. It was very exciting. And our booth sponsors today, we have some wonderful vendor booths set up at the venue. Red Pill, Live, Character Bank, Owen VR, Against All Odds, Iverrell, and Smash Drums. Again, if you didn't see Smash Drums, the performance that was on stage, it was amazing. If you, if you were on stream, if you weren't on stream, rewind, go watch it. It was amazing. And it still blows my mind you can create stuff like that in yeah. VR. I can't create stuff like that in VR. Well, you because can't. I'm no, not no you can't. No, no I can't. Don't I, act I like can't create in general. I mean, <laughs> I can barely draw, like, my own name, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You give me a little plinky plonk, I'm like, ding, 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 over. Exactly, know, exactly. My future is not in music creation. So who's Any excited for map number two? Who's fired up? Map number two. I can't hear anybody. It's weird. I think there's people here, but I can't tell. Can you tell, Radar? You're here. I heard you. Okay. Let's hear from up to Vortex. <laughs> Worked. Come on. Get some hype. <laughs> Woo! I wish they could hear me right now. I would ask them to do little jiggles and dance for us, but they're too zoned in. I wouldn't blame them. Wrecked on the other hand, you can see the resting, the sat down. The calm, collected, they know what they need to do in map two to bring it back, to take it to map three. Reminded, ladies and gentlemen, 
If Rec take map two, there is a third map decider. If Vortex take map two, they walk away with a victory. They are IVRL season one champions, and they walk away with 20K. And a quick reminder of how we got here. Right in August, we ran the open qualifiers. Anybody can join. What was it, 70 teams that actually joined that? It was like at least 70. Top six over eight weekends made it there, and then we had the playoffs. That was 48 teams broken into groups of 12. All four of the teams today that you see playing tonight were the winners of their playoff stage. And then we have our land finals bracket. Rec taking down Cobra Cartel in the first match to get, secure the spot in the grand finals. And Vortex taking down Roll Strive in the second match to secure the second spot in the grand finals. And then this. This is it. Vortex one map away from $20,000 in the first place at the Miami Vale Major. But if anybody can come back and steal map number two, it's definitely wrecked. These guys are, everybody here is a professional. They're insane gamers. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think the crowd wants to know, Radar, are you going to change your vote? Uh, no. I think Red could do it. I think Red can take right, map two. Right. Listen, they, they lost map one. They didn't lose it hard. No, they, they didn't. two points it was away. Very they close. had that early victory. I stand by my boys. Wrecked. I still think you got it. They were in full control. I mean, it was 6-1. They yeah. were in full control, right? So, I mean, who knows what they can run away with here going into map number two on Mar, right? So... It'll be interesting to see as that map develops, you know, the storyline there. But, you know, well played by Vortex. And even down to the last, what, what was it, 11-9, 11-10? I can't remember the score. 11-9. 11-9. I mean, they were still battling when it was match point. They were winning rounds, right? So, I mean, these teams, two teams are going to trade rounds in Mar, and it's going to be exciting. And I'm really, really, really fired up to watch this. This is going to be amazing. Yeah. It's gonna be a, this is going to be an amazing map. I mean, already these two teams have shown us what, what map one was like. Map two is going to be amazing, and especially when it could be the potential winnings of first place. I'm calling it now. 11-0. Rekt are going to win 11-0. 11-0. Damn. Wow. Um, you know, maybe. Could what's, have. what's going on up here? Listen, I'm heavily dehydrated. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, count down with me. We're going into this next map in five, four, three, two, one. Get hype. Here we go. Woo! All right, swinging right into pistol round here. Wrecked coming out on Colonist. Vortex coming out on Rayab. Wrecked going to be setting up with one into the catwalks, definitely, as they're splitting up. Looks like they're biasing towards the A-take here. Nadix and Tarmac trying to work in quickly. You're going to have to deal with Yellow Hat and Sumachi holding the site. But look, the scanner's in the center catwalk here. Wrecked not overcommitting themselves at all here. Just poking and probing, poking and probing. That's what they're doing right now. Just trying to find an entry, trying to find a pick. Get some control on the map. Remember, Vortex broke Rex uh, un, un, almost uncontested run on pistol rounds last map. Um, I think Rector had to prove that this is still our strong point. We are the pistol kings. How dare you? Yeah, yeah. there's no doubt about it. I mean, getting that one kill on, or that one uh, victory on the pistol round was definitely a momentum shift there. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it showed. I mean, that one point could have made all the difference. It might have been 11 10. Well, it would have been 10 10. Maybe it was just a chill step with the first pickup on break, though. So match picking up Tarmac. Look at the aggression coming out of Wrecked as the attackers, but Cracker J answers back immediately. The scan is going in and they have a side control, but there is still a Vortex player on site. He can make some action, he can make some noise. So much is rotated through the upstairs. Guys are coming behind Nadix and oh. not gonna expect that. Wow. <laughs> From what behind, Nadix had no idea. Punished. Now we're in a two on three situation. Vortex has the numbers advantage here as they try to reach. Cracker taking that cliff! What a Thief nade. Thief takes another wow. one down. Double nades, wow. no way. The nade retake is real. Vortex initially on the back foot, taking round one, taking another pistol round from the pistol king direct. Wow, what a, what a retake with the two nades. I mean, yeah, wow. I mean, you're just throwing nades into hot spots, basically, I mean, and hoping that they're there, because those are the meta spots, those are the best places to sit and wait and protect that. Yeah, really clean retake there by Vortex. I mean, they had the numbers advantage coming into it, but a double need kill to take that away. They don't even have to shoot their guns. Incredible play there. Who cares about a pistol round when you can win by nades? Rex might go five <laughs> into the catwalk here as they're trying to stack up, trying to avoid getting stuck on the cat together, or the zipline, sorry. Here come the nades. They're going to try and take some outside control, but... Vortex has three towards Armory here. An interesting setup. They're just foregoing middle completely as Kraka isn't even playing inside of it. Yellow Hat holding the red room here, trying to get the swing onto Clev. Clev's not going to allow him to do that, though. Very slow probing round again. Chill Step's wow. going to pick up Fripp for free here. Doesn't know he's there up in the catwalk. Yellow Hat's going to grab Clev. Now it's a four on four. Kraka J going to grab Basil Maz. Nice picks there from Vortex defensively. Now it's all up to Chill Step, Nadix, and Tarmac. They're trying to make an entry. Cracker J with another one, though. Going to pick him up, and now it's a four on two in favor of uh, favor of uh, Vortex here. 
Up to Nadix and Tarmac. They do have the scanner. They have about a minute left on the clock. They have options here, but looks like they're going to try and commit into Armory here. Tarmac's going to go down to a trade to crack a J, and it's all up to Nadix now in a 1v3 situation as he heads back into Refinery, trying to get up into Cat maybe here. Actually, he's going to grab the scanner. See what he does here. 45 seconds left on the clock. He's got the opportunity to do a full rotate or do a scan implant right here. I mean, there is no one on site trying to stop him. They will react immediately the moment they hear it go in. It'll be three players getting ready to play a pounce on Nadix. But Nadix is zeroed in. You can see him on stage. He's not shaking. He's got his... <laughs> the reactions on this kid are insane. You do see the flick up. It blows my mind. Yeah, that with an early nature. Wow! Almost picks up Nadix. What a nade. A second to almost... Finish him off, but Nadix unscathed by that. Yeah, he's just short on the wall. He needs to get that Nade up a little bit higher. Yellow hat, right idea, but doesn't wow. matter. He pushes in and takes him down. Nadix, the one, the only, the monster taken down by Yellow hat, and that is another point on the board for Vortex. Yeah, you saw Thief there. He knew Nadix was putting that scan in, but what he was doing is waiting for his teammates to come around and waiting for his teammates to help out. You don't want to push that too early. You don't want to try to get aggressive and go 1v1. Go 2v1, you know, and have that advantage going in there. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's, it's so key to wait for your teammates, get that timing down, execute on the site together on the retakes. That is the difference between, you know, these guys that are playing on this stage and all everyone else that they beat to come in and get here. I mean, that is what makes a really, really solid team is that coordination, that communication. These guys have been playing together for years, right? So they know how to do that. They're, they've got good ideas for that. Yeah, you got to be eager, right? But if you're over eager and you let that take away the contextualize of the fact you're playing a team game, and like, you know, Vale is a team game. The fact that you can see your teammates, the fact that you can talk to your teammates constantly and work together as a, like, a hegemonist unit is such a game changer for me. A little bit of a fast execute by Wrecked onto A site here. Vortex seems to have just given up the site a little bit here, trying to prefer to play retake as Tarmac takes down Yellow Hat. Chill Step's gonna grab Frig. Couple of big picks there from Wreck. Now they're gonna five on three situation, full control of the A site, and Vortex is gonna have to rotate in. This is a really, really bad spot for Vortex to be in for this round. Yeah, look at Wreck spread apart. You know, they're, they're in defensive mode now. They were offense, now they're in defensive mode. Yep. They are completely spread apart and they are controlling all angles and all lanes yeah, that are possible. All lines right now. Yeah, their post scan setup is really good. He's gonna grab Clev here though, and he's gonna try and muscle his way in as Basil grabs Samachi in that back hallway. Nadix grabs, Nadix grabs Steve, Krakajay grabs uh, Nadix here, and it's all up to Crack in a 1v3, but he's only got 10 seconds left on the scan here. He has to get on it. He's got all about the... two seconds to do it. If he doesn't do it in the next two seconds, it he's doesn't matter no if he time. kills everyone. Tarmac picks him up, and that's he's gonna be the first time. round. He's out of time! First round on the board in favor of the wreck now, and that's two to one. Yeah great, yeah, great job by Rex. I mean, they just they ran right through uh, to the A side, Rouse took it over, and again, like we mentioned earlier, in between the round, they just took control. They took control of all the lanes and all the rotations that could possibly be done by the defense. Can I just point out again, Cracker J from the UK, um, he's used to playing with a ping disadvantage. He is killing it tonight. Six kills right now, leading the way for Vortex. Fine, wrecked, shutting him down in that last one, but Cracker J showing what he's capable of when given equal footing. Yeah, there is a decent amount of adjustment period here, but these guys are the best in the world. They know what they're doing. They're getting used to it, and they're they're really feeling it right now. And Cracker J out to a six frag lead right now, leading the server right now. Just absolutely putting in work for his team as Rek tries to execute again quickly onto A. Chill Step's gonna battle Cracker J in the middle. He's gonna take him down. Yellow Hat trying to hold his back data. He's gonna have to deal with Basil and Nadix as they're throwing smokes all over the place, trying to get some foothold on the site. Left takes down Samachi. Nadix takes down Yellow Hat. And just like that, it's a five on two in favor Let's of Rek. Rekt. Let's go, Rek! Let's go, Rek! Let's see some nice for Rek. They need to bring this back for us. 5-1 now in Rex's favor on the map. They've only got Thief to get through to get the second point and equal up with Vortex. Yeah, Thief's going to be trying to work his way through this double door area. He's going to have to deal with two members of Rex, and that's not going to be good enough. Boom! Rex's going to take round number two. It's now 2-2, two two, completely tied up. Beautiful drop shot there by Clev at the end. Oh, man. yeah. Just showing up, yeah. Amazing job. Again, Rex just putting that force on the A side. It's working right now. And look, I mean, round I wouldn't shot. be surprised if they just keep pushing A until it fails. I mean, that's Rex's MO, right? Do it till it doesn't work, then change it up. And I stand corrected, we're going to be. <laughs> and I stand corrected because I believed in you, Lampy, and that you was did. my big falling. Here we go now, wrecked. 2-2 two, two with Vortex. They've got the colonist advantage. They lost map one, but only barely, and they got something to prove that they want to take it to a map three decider where they'll take it sooner, where they'll feel a little bit more comfortable, potentially. It's interesting to note the setup of Vortex here. They've adjusted wow, to hold that A side a little bit better, but now Wrecked is coming in on the refinery side. They've been a little bit of a bad read here, but Frig and Cracker J rotating fast to help uh, Thief out here. Chill Step's going to take down Yellow in the middle of the map on that lurk position to the catwalk. Now they're, they're working their way into the A site or the B site here now on the armory on the back stairs. 
little bit awkward now as they're trading shots, throwing utility, trying to battle it out. Nadix finds Thief on that opposite stairwell now. It's just up to Frig there at the back. Crack of Jay, though, rotating in. He's got a little bit of control at the front side here. One minute left on the clock. No scan set up now. Clef gonna get taken down by Crack of Jay. What a flick. Two versus three. Vortex playing. Meanwhile, we've got one defender nowhere near the site that's going to be planted on. It's a two versus two situation in reality. They're playing for that $20,000 prize. The winner walks away with that. The loser walks away with a comfortable 10K, but they don't walk away with the title of being IVRL Season 1 champion. And that, to me, is worth, you know, yeah, maybe I'm not 10,000, but it's close. <laughs> Meanwhile, Basil getting that scan set up on the B site here. They've got good control and both in decent spots here. They're going to have to get the second rotate from the A site. He's coming in now on the catwalks right now. And Frigg and Samachi are going to have to retake against Basil and Chill Step. Only 28 seconds left on the scan here. They need about seven seconds to get the scan interrupted. So every second counts here. They need to start executing fast. Basil in such a risky position. He's playing the risky spot that needs to be played. He gets the pre-shots. He takes down. He gets taken down, sorry. The... Disables coming in, Chill Step trying to disable it. Stop Samachi, and that puts Wrecked 3 2 up against Vortex on map 2. Yeah, one thing we noticed that I noticed there was uh, the late rotation by Samachi. Samachi was playing on A site, and that, you know, you want to have uh, confidence in your team that they're going to hold things, but when, when all the action's happening on one site, you're not hearing anything on the other side. Even before you get them calm, sometimes you just got to make that moment, that, that, you know, that tell in your head, you got to tell yourself. I just need to rotate because my team is now like four v in a 4v5 scenario. And if I rotate too late, I'm going to be in a 1v2, 1v3, whatever it may be. Yeah, but I mean, like, Vortex had the number advantage, right? Uh, and Wright yeah. just held the line. They had no health, yeah. but they held it from the exact positions they need to, and they took the round. That puts them 3-2 up. It's the advantage they need. They need to draw out that advantage before the rounds come. Vortex, or sorry, Wreck going to be setting up for another 8 tight A take, it looks like. 3 towards A, 1 in the catwalk, 1 lurking towards Armory as Basil and Nadex. Again, these two working together all the time on this site take in the lower tunnel area. Nobody there for Vortex, though. Vortex has adjusted their A-site position a little bit, not really worrying about that data area. Meanwhile, Nadex taking down Yellow Hat from that position. Now they have site control, but Samachi's still lurking. It looks like they might try to get the scan set up on A here. Yep, just like that, it goes out. Clef's going to take down Samachi. Thief's going to find Tarmac. And now it is a 3 v 4 situation. Vortex has their work cut out for them. Nadex and Chill Step, though, going to grab two more. And now it's all up to Thief in a 1v4 situation. Nadix and Chill Step making the plays that matter. They need to keep this momentum. They've gone it up. Thief saying, no, sir, I'm not going to let you do it for free. And yeah. it's a, still a three versus one situation now. Thief, the only hope for Vortex to take this round. Meanwhile, he's running out of time. He's got about 10 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, Thief spins around from a flash there. He gets on the Oh, DVDs. no, he drops his gun. No, that's not Take good. That one, that one. shot, but it's not <laughs> enough. Uh, uh, wow. He gets the one hand, but it still isn't enough. There's just too many defenders. I mean, if he could have kept his gun up right there at the end, I think he might have possibly got that second kill. He, he got the one kill. They didn't expect a second guy to come around the corner so fast. Brown but, shot, Tink. Yeah, Get I mean, ready. right now, you know, we're seeing Frigg, who's only a zero, an 0 and 6 right now. And we really need Frigg to, to oh, step Oh, really? Things. Yes. Frigg I didn't is, notice that. Yeah, we've got to have something step up from him and uh, help his team out here as they are dropping rounds left and right. Wreck now looking for an A site push. Meanwhile, Vortex on a 3-2 split. They've got the defense set up exactly where it needs to be with three on the A side. They can shut this push down long enough for the fellow defenders of B side to rotate around and get them back up. That's what Vortex needs now, right? They came out swinging 2-0, but Erect is on a four unanswered wins. Oh, oh, Yellow oh, Hat oh. and Frank getting a couple picks there. Chill steps straight with Yellow Hat. Basil Mads just muscling in there, taking down Frigg. Now it's a 3 on 3 situation. Samachi's going to grab Basil. Three on two now. Clev and Tarmac, the last one standing in kind of awkward oh, positions. Oh, look at Clev, look at Clev, the silent push. He's going to swing round shooting. Three comes. two now. They it's trade. It's a trade. Now it's all up to Tarmac, who does not have the scanner. However, it is down on the site. So if you can get into a good position here, pick off one and grab the scanner. He's in good shape. He's got a minute left on the clock here, rotating around through the data position. Thief, though, on the long tunnel there. But he doesn't have the puck. He's Options are limited, and he has to push in. He's got no choice. He's got 50 seconds. He can still try and play for picks. He's going to swing out, trying to find Tarmac. Tarmac's going to fall back. He doesn't oh, want that fight right now. Nade. Yeah, he flubs the nade. That's not good. He has to pick up the scanner now. He's really got enough to time to rotate. Out. He's got enough time to he rotate. Could. He, he could. could take that long zip line in the back, but it's going to be you know, the audio cues are going to come off. It, even these guys from the distance can hear that zip line go off. And yeah, but the way, the way he's up, up like Tarmac. There it goes. Tarmac knows he's going. He's going for the rotate. Oh, they're outside him. 
Oh, that oh. Kraken J, who is waiting for it? Great play from Kraken J there. Yeah, excellent play from Kraken. That, that's good game knowledge there to get into a spot to watch your outside and your inside. You know, you want to see, make sure you catch them rotations. You, they can hear the zip line go off, so you got to got to keep an eye on the sights that are the spots, the angles that uh, they could rotate that you won't hear. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final. It's four, three. These teams both vying for dominance. Neither of them giving up ground. I mean, this is what. 4-3 again in the final. This is exactly what we want to see. Two teams, neither letting the other one get away. And Rex setting up with a more traditional setup that we've seen in the do in playoffs here. With uh, two towards the middle, three towards the armory. Clev trying to work out that outside while uh, Chill Step working towards A site here. Meanwhile, yeah, that, that's Yellow Hat going to pick up Chill Step there. Now it's all towards armory for Rex push here. Big pickup because Chill Step is the lead killer on Rex by a long, long way. Now Clev taken down as well. It's not looking good for Wrecked in round number eight. Vortex. Here comes Nadix working his way into his sight now. Cracker J has to hear him at this point. He's probably going to swing on him. No, Nadix is going to fall back. Kind of awkward. Basil Maz on the opposite side now looking for someone. Frick's going to take down Tarmac. Basil Maz and, and Nadix now the only ones remaining against five members of uh, Vortex. What wow. a nade from Basil. What a nade. Taking down Cracker J. The guy I would have said was the grenadier of the day. Punished by Nadix. About 50 seconds left on the clock here. 2v4 situation favoring Vortex. Rec does have the scanner, but Vortex is all over the site. They've got three at, at Armory site now, and both Rec members are there. They're in a kind of an awkward position now. 40 seconds left. Time just clicking away here. They're not really able to get enough site control to get a plant here. Yeah, and but they're also two versus four against a very, very powerful team. They yep. need to get those picks, and they get one. They need to get two before they get a plant, potentially. Yeah, absolutely. They did a good job there to wrap one of those up. And now we're going to have a little bit of gunfight here. Frig going to recognize that the site's in trouble. And here comes the last rotate out of Vortex. And wait for all three there before they try to retake. Oh, Nadix, Nadix getting big aggressive. Pick up. Let's go. Down Let's Frig. go. Takes down 2K. That's 3K for the round. Nadix on fire. Going to go for the plant. It's a two versus yeah, one situation. Basil gets the scan in. Huge play from Nadix there. Samachi, the last one standing for Vortex. Here. Whoa, what a nade. What a nade. Now it's a 1v1. Samachi. Nadix, 30 seconds left on the scan here. Nadix a little bit of pre-fire now. Samachi's going to move exactly where he is. Chasing Whoa. each other around here. Oh, oh around my god, Samachi What a play from that guy with the blue ears. Samachi has been clutching those 1v2s, man. I, uh, I just god, happened to look over Samachi as soon as he made that. Just a deep, big deep breath. You can oh, see yeah. the, the sigh of relief that came out. You know, that is, man. You, until you play VR, you play a shooter, and you can hear and see the bullets whizzing past your head and hitting the material behind you. You get yep, get yep. that 3D sound going on. Oh, you have yeah. no idea what it sounds like and, and feels like inside right, that game. Right. And to hit that clutch like that, I mean, wow. Honestly, Huge. Vale does the best job of any game I've seen in VR to translate the VR yes. to a 2D perspective, right? You can't, but until you put on the VR helmet and find yourself in this world, you cannot understand how immersive it is. Yeah. The audio, the visuals, it is next level. And Rex will be setting up with a fast oh, 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 oh. A take here, but Sumachi and Frig gonna shut that down. Yellow Hat gonna find another one. The nade, huge nades from Vortex here. Now it's a The nades, Clev. <laughs> Three nade kills in a row can lead into a four on two situation in favor of Vortex here. Good site control there from Vortex holding off and getting those entries up with Rex pushing that site aggressively. I mean, we're seeing almost a repeat of last time where Wrecked had the early lead and Vortex had pulled it back. And we're seeing exactly the same thing right now. Wrecked had the early lead, Vortex bringing it back. 4-4 four, four again. I keep repeating myself, but this is what we want to see in the Miami Vail Major Final. Yeah, Nidix has site control now with Clev. They're going to try and get the scan set up. Rick's going to hear that and call his team to rotate. Yeah, yeah you see them rotating through the middle of the map oh. there. Big day, big day. Scan set up now. 40 seconds left. Rick going to be trying to find Clev. Not able to. He's going to wait for his teammates, wait for a little bit of assistance here, and they're going to try and take it together. All right, we're going to see post-it nades coming through the top line. Like we saw success from Vortex on the retake before, but Rex have learned the lesson and they are not holding it up. Clev knows he's coming through there. Nadix Clef, grabs Nadix. Frick. Now it's in a 2v2. They did a good job to equalize that situation. Crack and Jay going to grab Nadix. Now it's all up to Clev in a 1v2 situation. Yellow Hat's going to grab him. Oh, Vortex bringing it. Five to four now for Vortex, as long as they don't fumble this rescan. Amazing God, retake, really. I mean, like you mentioned in, in the cast there, that you know, waiting for his teammate. They they didn't push it once again. You don't push it by yourself, right? You right. don't get into that scenario with players like this. So you wait for your teammates. You wait for the the communication to come out, and We're you all shot. bounce together. You all take get it. Ready. Out. Listen, I want this to be a close game, right? I want Rek to do well. I want Vortex to do well. But I want Rek to push this to a map three. Can we hear it for Rek? We need some energy for them. Rek, 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 Rek. Come on. Woo! 
Speaking of Wreck, they're going to be setting up with a very interesting strategy this time. A 1-3-1. One, one. We haven't seen this from them yet. We got one towards A, three in the catwalks, and one towards Refinery. Trying to take some map control here potentially and get some options on the table. Thief's going to grab Clev here up top. Big pick up there. Ford X, please don't hate me. <laughs> they're going to watch back and be like, oh no, Radar. You're off our Christmas card list. Wrecked now with four players on the field against Vortex and Five. That early pickup on Clever, big time. Chill Step picking up some match again. Chill Step leading the way for Wrecked on kills. Nate. Thief's very exposed here. Tar oh, what a flick! Wow! Huge shot by Thief there, but Chill Step's going to return the favor and take him down on the refrag. Now it's a three on three situation here. About a minute left on the clock. Wrecked seems to have good sight control at A right now. Vortex recognizing that they might be in a troublesome position here. Frigg's waiting for the drop down from Chill Step and Wrecked right here. Frick finds him on the drop down. Wow, Chill Step was not ready for that. I was actually physically God, watching him, and he was shocked that he was dead. He did not see it coming yeah, at all. Scan Yellow. is in. Yellow had holding this data position. Nadix looking for him in a really, really sliver angle here. That's a tough angle for Yellow had to deal with it if it works out for. Oh, oh no, no. Crackajay takes no. out Crackajay. No. And then Yellow Hat grabs Nadix. Now it's a 2v1. Basil alone against Frig and Yellow Hat. Frig's going to hold the fuse. And Frig there picks up is. Basil. That puts Vortex up 6-4 as we go into the round swap. Not where Wrecked want to be right now, Lampy. Now we don't know, was Crack a, a lava kill or was it a drop? Did he fall? <laughs> I didn't catch it myself. We got, we're going to have to well, ask. We need we're to know, to we ask. need to know. But I hope you guys caught the fact that, you know, some of the players, wow, you know, in him. DR, they have to climb those ladders, right? They physically have to raise their hands up with that and grab each rung as they climb that ladder. And I mean, that's what we're dealing with here, and that's the immersion feel that we're I getting mean, in this game. I mean, there is fall damage, right? If you, yes. if you fumble that and you if drop you, and you that drop or right off a health, zip line, you can fall off yeah. a zip line. Or step in lava. Yeah. Or step in lava. Step and we're in, a, we're in the side swap now, so Vortex now on Colonist's side. The dreaded pistol round, as Radar puts it. Yeah, but Vortex have won the last two pistol rounds. Can Wrecked bring it back and re regain the dominance of what they're known for being the pistol kings? Vortex being very careful not to overextend on this pistol round. They're setting up towards Armory, but they got some map control in, in the top cats here. Look at the rotates coming from Wrecked right now. They're just full rotating to B right now. They're reading this play. They know. Yeah, yeah they're, they're not wasting any time. Slug should nudge level, next level plays. This is, a, this is a challenging spot to be in for, for Vortex right now. Oh, bad nade there. Samachi down. One of the key pistol players on interview the missing title. Samachi, watch out for him. He's going to be Yellow. our boy. Oh, what a shot from Yellow. Takes down Basil. And now the rotates are coming back. They're sending some more players back to A site here. Three members of Wrecked actually going back to A site. And now Vortex has basically a four on one for this site right now. Frig trying to move in. Tarmac's going to move out, but Crackajay is going to find him. And now it's a three on three, three on four, sorry, situation for Vortex here. 45 seconds left on the clock, and they've got full site control. Wow, Shot Vortex stopped. leading another pistol round. Unexpected against the Kings of Pistols, wrecked. Wrecked with only three players left on the line, and they need to get a disable of that scan. Vortex have got the site locked down. Chill Step, Clev, and Nadix really need to get this round. They don't want to fall down 7-4 to four right now. That's a troublesome position to be in. Nadix getting involved. Thief finds him, though, first. Now Clev's right there. Chill Step's going to find Yellow with a nade. Trading shots back and forth to Thief and Clev. Thief's going to take down Clev. Now it's all up to Chill Step in a 1v2 situation right now. He's going to face off against 10 Thief. seconds left, though. Oh, oh Rick takes him down. It. Vortex 7-4 up. It's not looking great for Rick, but they still have time. They still have the energy, and they still have the skill to bring this back. Yeah, right now I think it's just it's becoming a, a mental game. I think Wrecked is is losing Round that mental toughness that they've had this Get whole time. Ready. They've never faced an opponent that's been that's been dominating them like this. I mean, right. they haven't lost a map coming into the playoffs or you know through the playoffs and through the online seating and through today. So right, you know, so losing their first map. Wrecked actually beat uh, Vortex in the playoffs, right? Sorry, in the in the seeding rounds. Right? Yes. So that was in that, Suna. Yeah, in, in Suna, Suna, which is the third map, which I hope we get to see today. You gotta remember that Suna is a fairly transitional map versus some of these other ones are a little bit more unique, right? So, uh, might be something there to it. But uh, bottom line, Vortex in control right now, seven to four, going into round number twelve. Vortex trying to work towards Refinery right now, trying to find any types of picks that they possibly can. Samachi so slowly working towards Armory Cat here, trying to find Clev. Clev's just waiting though at that back corner though. It's going to be an awkward fight for Samachi if he ends up because Clev's going to be able to swing on him here. Minute yeah. 10 left on the clock. Yeah, Vortex, Vortex playing is very slow. Vortex is feeling now Samachi wins that battle. Wow, really good from Samachi there. Didn't get away from Scott Free though, took a lot of damage. 
know, with that pick and that, that momentum is what Vortex needed. Now they're going to try and execute on the site. They're going to deal with two members of Wreck that are still here, though. Up in that far hallway, which is a really difficult position to flush out. Yeah, that's Tarmac in that, in that right hallway for Vortex. Now, however, Thief knows he's there. He can see him through the glass there. So he's going to identify that, and maybe they'll possibly rotate off here because, really, they're not committing at this point. 40 seconds left. Five versus four. There's 37 seconds left on the clock. They need to get the plant in, but Wreck are aware of it. They're coming hot. There is a trade between Chill Step taking down some matches, but Cracker Jake taking down Chill Step, putting it in a three versus four situation. Tarmac bringing it up to three versus three. Thief taking down Tarmac. Basil Mask rounds on Yellow Hat taking him down, and now we are in a two versus two. Wreck need this round so badly. They need to take the momentum yeah, away from still. Vortex. Can they do it? The scan goes in. Yeah, Wreck is going to have to try and execute this retake well. They got Natus and Basil who play a lot together. Frick's going to find Basil. Natus going to find Frick. Now it's in a 1v1 situation here. And he knows Frick, roughly Natus. where he is. Yep, 30 seconds left on the scan. He's Thief's just trying He's to rotate around here. He doesn't see him. He doesn't see him. Shot through the metal there. Thief's able no, to find him. Thief takes Natus, and that gives Vortex an 8 point. They are 3 points away from getting 20k away from this event and taking that title, Lampy. Yes, I mean, I, that... That matchup right there, that round right there, was wow, a perfect shoddy. example of a lot of, uh, you know, entry and supports. You know, there was a lot of entries coming through, people that are willing to die or take that trade for that next guy to come through. And we saw that on multiple occasions. Uh, Nadix right there, you know, I, I forgot who was in front of him, but the first guy went out there, got, got killed by the guy on the stairs. Nadix was able to swing that corner and take that kill away and then push on to site. But unfortunately for Nadix, the thief took over. Come on, Ray. Four against eight. I called you as my favorite. I need you to come back so we can go to a third round. Come on, Rex! Good pick there from Basil early in the round. Going to take down Yellow Hat. That's going to be a kind of a problem for Vortex now. They've been exposed a little bit, but Vortex still trying to work towards that A site right now. They've got two in the tunnel position with the scanner as well, and they've got two in the catwalk position in the middle. They're going to be looking for another pick here before they try and execute. Cracker J just swinging back and forth, trying to find anybody he can for free at this point. Samachi working in silently. He's going to have to deal with Basil here right around the corner. Oh, it's awkward for Basil. Samachi, Samachi finds him. Such a killer. You see him time and time again. His flick, his game control, his knowledge. He's just flawless almost every time. And here comes some utility for the execute right now on A site. Cracker J still lurking in that mid position, but Clef's going to find him first. Clef is right. Oh, no, no, thief. Nate, find the Natix. That puts him 3-3 now. He's wrecked. All hurt. But Vortex yet to put the scan in. It looks yeah. like they're going for an ace strike tactical, but wrecked are on position. They're going to be looking to yeah, shut it down. Frick taking out Clev, leaving only two defenders to try and stop this scan. Tarmac and Chillstep have their work cut out for them in a 2v3 situation. 30, 37 seconds left on the clock here. Here comes the smoke to block that tunnel position. Chillstep's watching up top on that red room, but nobody from Vortex is actually there. They're all downstairs, and Tarmac's going to have to 1v3. The smokes are coming all over the place. It's going to make the fight really awkward here. Tarmac's going to jump on the Thief here. The thief's going to get involved by Tarmac, and now Thief's going to find Chillstep in 2k. Wow, what a two-piece there at the end for wow. Thief. Wow, 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 wow. Vortex now two points away from taking it, Lappy. What can they do? What can Wreck do to bring I, I this back? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, right now, Vortex is just not We're doing anything take. wrong. They're, they're playing at the top of their level. They're playing top of their game, and they're holding the angles they need to hold. They're, they're taking these sites, and it seems easy for them right now. Right, 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 right. I mean, doesn't like even early leads from Wreck are getting shut down by Vortex. Yeah. Vortex on those the strikes. retakes. It's the retakes and the patience and the teamwork right now. Yeah, Thief's been playing phenomenally well with uh, 15 kills here. Frag and Thief, and supported by Yellow Hat getting aggressive early on the outside here. Nobody from Wrecked is there. They're not able to find any type of pick, but they've got a setup right now with three towards the B Armory site, two in the middle, trying to get the picks. It's basically the opposite of what they did last round with the scanner chilling over in the refinery area just outside the B site. Minute 20 seconds left on the clock. No one's really had any battle right now. A lot of utility used on the Vortex side, though, and Wrecked is still retaining a lot of a lot more of their utility, so that'll be interesting to see how that plays out throughout this round. Swatchy lurking in these container locations. They can taste it. Vortex can taste it. They're so close to being the IVRL Season 1 Veil champions. They know it. They know it and wreck know how close they are to going out. Yeah, Thief's getting involved here, trying to find a pick. Chill Step's going to find Yellow Hat in the middle area. On oh, the back of the site here, Frick's in the swing. Yeah, that's a double kill for Chill Step now. A big 2K. Thief's going to find Tarmac. Thief's going to find Chill Step. Thief with the drop of shot. With the 2K. Scan. And they get the scan three. set up in a 3v3. They are putting the pressure on right now for Rex. Meanwhile, in the top left-hand corner, there's a, uh, a Rex player who just isn't moving. Natix picking up one, Clef picking up two. Cracker J picking up Natix, but there's still a one versus one situation on the B side with only 30 seconds left to go. 
They need to make something happen. Clev, Basil Maz is all on their shoulders to stop Vortex from going one point away from taking this. Yeah, the about difference. 20 seconds left here. The difference we're seeing is we're seeing Clev go in by himself, and we're seeing... Crack you know, Jay lesson. stopping Clev from disabling. Where's the teamwork? Basil's in trouble now. He has to get out and fight Crack wow. Jay. Wow, what a clutch from Basil. With just enough time to get the T-scan in. Absolutely that, huge wow. there. <laughs> Rex needed that so, so yeah, badly. They know it. We know it. They're still in this. Yeah, that was dangerous right there. I believe it was it Nate, or Clev was left. As Clev and Basil left, it was a 2v1, or 2v1 on the scanner. Yep. And they went in 1v1 instead of waiting for that one, you know, waiting for their teammate to come and work together. Um, and that's one thing that we were seeing, you know, uh, Vortex doing and doing very well. Yep. And uh, Rex almost lost that round based on that right there. I, is it the nerves? But they did. You know, they've, they've got great teamwork. They showed it throughout this entire tournament. Right. And we've just seen a little bit of cracks. It's a little bit of anxiousness, right especially when the yep. scan's yeah, yeah. going, you're running out of time. Yellow Hat fighting an early pick on the chill step there. Vortex. Very fast on the A site here. They have some outside control. They have inside the tunnel control. They're really executing hard here, but Nadix and Basil Mouse are waiting for them. Their rotates are starting to come out from uh, Wrecked. They push through the B site. They know that they're not going B at this point, but Yellow Hat is lurking in the middle, but Tarmac oh, finds him first. With concrete shot on Yellow Hat. Basil Mouse taking out Cracker J. Putting into a now. four versus three. Wow, oh, wow. Thief. thief. Thief has been huge for Vortex, and it's now a three-on-three -three situation. About a minute ten left on the clock here. They have two members inside the A site, and then they've got Somachi rotating around the uh, data area right now, trying to find anything. Frick, going to find Tarmac now. Oh, on Basil. Basil's getting involved, going to return the favor. Now it's a one versus two situation. Basil is alone. All the free fire looking for him. He doesn't have the puck. Oh, he goes for the drop shot. Play. Whoa, wow. Basil! What, what a shot! Come on! That was huge. That was huge. Now it is a 1v1. Sumachi has proven himself clutch multiple times in this match already. Yep. But let's count, not count Basil. What a play there from Basil dropping down. Basil Frick making a lot of no noise. Clue. He's got to be aware. He's like giving away his position constantly. It's a one versus one. The scan doesn't got in. He needs to slow down. Here's the drop shot. It's exactly what he just did. He's ready for it. Oh. Basil oh, wow. taking down Sumachi. Racked up to six points. Let's go! What a shot. I mean, Basil... He had that amazing drop shot too. I mean, the fact that you can do that in VR, right? It's not just click how fast you can click the button to, to crouch down or go prone or what it is. It's how fast you can get up and down from your knee up to the ground. Yep. That's why the older guys are up here and some of the younger guys <laughs> are over there doing that thing, right? <laughs> yeah, I almost said that. You know with the drop to the knees thing I was talking about them doing earlier? If I was like, if that did me, if that was yeah. me, it'd be like six or seven seconds to get back up. So. Yeah, my yeah. knee would explode, so right. I'm not doing any of that. So it makes sense why they're there. Not Early there. Nate Ooh. almost picking up Cracker J. He survives by the skin of his teeth with only about 30% health to talk about. Wreck tasting that comeback. They need to make it a reality. Yeah, Yellow Hat and Frick here are going to be trying to probe the outside of the uh, refinery site now as the scanner is set up. Also in refinery on Thief here, he's gonna try and spot something. Tarmac with an aggressive play there, trying to get involved. Chillstep's gonna find Yellow Hat. Nice swing out of the hole in the wall there and finding him. A little bit of a challenge now for Vortex as they got one member with half their health and then only three more with full health in a 45 situation with a minute 10 left on the clock. Yeah, but look to Rex defense. In the top left-hand corner, there's gonna be an engagement. Unexpected, he's gonna get engaged. Ah. On the zip line. Wow, he healed, falls off. Wrecked, picking up another one. Nadix picking up one. Basil Mod picking up another. Let's go, Wrecked! It's all Come on, Frick five now versus a 1v5 one. situation. And that's gonna it point, is. Wow, Wrecked battling back here. I mean, look where all the deaths are. They're on the outside Whoa. of the scan. You know, they're outside of the artifact zone. They were outside. They caught all the defenders outside trying to rotate in. And that was an impressive job there by Wrecked. Look at that team. They wow, are revitalized. There's energy they're in the ready. step. They know they're in with a shot now. They've got the momentum. They need to keep it up and take it to the 11th point. Yeah, Vortex has to get something going here if they want to shut down Wreck. Wreck has just been absolutely demolished in the last few rounds, and that's going to be a difference maker. If Wreck can keep up this momentum, they might be able to force a map three. So Basil wow, with the double! With this guy's double. on fire right now! Are you kidding me? Basil, someone we haven't been talking about enough. You are seeing him come alive when it matters most. Yeah, Basil has been huge in the last couple of rounds. 18 kills on the board for him right now. Meanwhile, Cracker J getting involved in the upstairs at A site right now. Kalev's going to yep. spot him through the glass there, though. And he's gonna, he knows that. He's going to fall back and try and find the, the uh, hell zip here. It's five versus three in Rex advantage corner. Cracker J, Thief, and Yellow Hat have their work cut out for them. They do have the scanner. They're grouping up right now. They're looking to take this site on A right now. Rex is in a decent position to hold this attack, but they'll be quickly rotating over, so Vortex is going to have to execute this one quickly. They've got about a minute left on the clock here. Likely trying to make a pick 
early before they actually commit to the site here. Yeah, but look at Rex's lineup right here. They, they, they are holding back. They're not panicking. They hear right. footsteps at A, but they're still keeping people at B because they're not convinced That's this is the full strike. And Crack a J working through this. Make him a way through the tunnel right now. Okay. Just let him, let, let him think site's clear. There is two. Wow, right. you can hear the next Stay there, plays. stay there, Tommy. Yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna say about this episode. They're trying to confident. bait out the defenders right now. 30 seconds remaining. Yellow hot take it out. Bring it to four, three, still in Rex Bay. Scan goes live on the A side. Chill. Still stepping, Nadix trying to get involved there. No, Tarmac takes down Tarmac. Tarmac. No. You hate to see it. Cracker J taking down Nadix. Now it's all up to Chill Step. 1v3 situation. Chill Step comes back. 30 seconds left here. 1v2. Has to deal with two members of Vortex. Thief and Yellow Hat. Takes, takes down, down one. Thief. He gets one. Does he get two? Oh, he gets two. Chill Step. Wow. Keep it racked alive. Let's go. 1v3. Chill Step is insane. Dude, the clutch. I mean, like we talked about so many times, <laughs> the nerves, you know, the sweat, everything plays a huge factor in what you're doing in there and the ability to stay focused and know that player is there and hit that headshot. It is impressive. Impressive. 21 to watch kills it. now on Chill Step. 21 kills. He's leading the way with frags. Just wow, slowly, starting. slowly edging Rex back to that map victory. They need to take this to map three. Yeah, Rekt has been chipping away at Vortex's lead. They're only down by one now. There was a point where they were down by five, I believe. So, I mean, this has been really, really big story on the turnaround. And, you know, it's interesting that normally this is a, a colonist-sided map that we see traditionally, but in, in this match, it's been Ray up-sided. Even in the last couple, it's been Ray up. Yeah, so the meta is shifting. People are understanding how to play this map, and it's yep. interesting to see kind of unfold in front of us. I mean, I kept like banging the drum saying colonists have the advantage, but I keep getting proven wrong. So maybe I'm just, you know, we all agreed as well. So it wasn't just me. Don't put that on me. No, we're out of touch. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and again, that's why we're here and they are there. Anyways, minutes, minute 20 left on this round. Vortex clearly trying to set up towards an A take right now. They've got a lurk in the refinery area, lurk in middle. They need to find some opening picks here and, and delete some wrecked members off the map. They won't have any success with this take right now. Vortex, with that initial like sprint away, you can see the pressure. You see the body language has changed. The play style has changed as well. Smash is getting involved. Had to fight Clev. Clev finds Clev. him. That's a big pickup right there. And it's like we can't overestimate that because Samachi has been integral with those flicks. Yep. Clev waking up and taking him down. Thief finds Nadix holding that tunnel area. Now Yellow Hat and Thief have some control in here, but they're still going to have to fight Basil Mass in that back data connector. Sorry, he's actually on the stairs, and the smoke comes out. He's going to rush through the smoke. Wow. Clive, take down Cracker Basil. Basil, take down Yellow. And suddenly it's four versus two. Rex coming alive once again. They are still in this, ladies and gentlemen. They want it so bad. That aggressive play from Basil pushing the smoke and taking a Vortex member down. That was huge right there in the back tunnel right there. Now, Frig, we're trying to rotate back and help out Thief in a four-on-two situation. They've only they got the about puck? 15 yes, seconds do. left on the clock. Yeah, Thief has the puck right yeah, now. They're so going to run out of time before they get the scan in. Ten seconds. They might be able to get the scan here, but... Oh, I take it back. Tarmac has a native of them. Oh, he yeah, fumbles, but he gets it back in just in time with five seconds left on the clock. But it's still a four versus two situation. And Wrecked have 40 seconds on the clock to stop this scan. Basil must take down Thief. It's all up to Frick now in a 1v4 situation. Frick taking shots in the container. Now they know where he is. He has to push. They're getting on the, the interrupt right now. Oh. Frick oh, in the trouble. Smoke. There's no way. The free fire takes him down. Smoke. Nine, nine, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Miami Vale Major. This is what we want to see. Let's hear it for Wreck. They're bringing it back. Woo! Again, impressive teamwork. I mean, extreme teamwork there as they were watching alternate wow, angles I and mean, keeping those guys at a distance. You know, as soon as they figured out that he was coming through double doors, you know, that all lasers were focused on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm getting so pumped dude, up this by this. Is high, it is dude. draining me. This is so intense. Nine to yeah. nine. Who would have thought? I mean, La ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting drained. Imagine what these guys are going through right now. They're live on stage fighting for that 20K prize. Yeah, let's see if uh, Vortex tries to make any adjustments here. They've dropped a considerable amount of rounds in a row. Clev, Clev so good at holding that catwalk. Picks up Samachi, but Kraka Jay going to return the favor and pick up Clev. Now Vortex is going to try and execute onto the site here, but there's still two members that are inside of the Armory site, and they think better of it. They're heading back now. Basil Maz and Chill Step both have a 20 bomb right now. 20 kills for both Basil Maz and Chill Step. That's been huge for them. Let's keep an eye on Basil as he rotates wow. through the spawn. Going to do a little cheeky, cheeky boy all the way in the south. Basil, Basil finds Yellow Hat on the flank. 
is going to give away his position though with the with the first back by Steve. Ooh, Kraken keeping Vortex in this though. It's a two versus three situation. Scanner's gone in. It's wait, Nate. Rex just took it. That yes, just happened. Yes, Nate wow. to death for Wow. Couldn't even see it happen so fast. All the kills happened together. And now Wrecked one point away from taking map number two and sending us finally. So right. Wrecked are like, welcome to Miami. They are here. <laughs> they are in it to win it. They were down. They are back. It's a comeback story. We want to see it. We are seeing it. They are one point away from taking us to map three. Oh, yeah, this has been an incredible match. Incredible match. I don't know if I can handle map three. <laughs> yeah, my body might just give up. Um, anyways, Vortex going to be trying to set up. Looks like they're actually going to try and execute fast on the A site now. They're trying anything that they can. Nothing's been working on Colonist's side, so looks like they're just going to try and get involved here quickly. They're going to have to deal with Nadix and Basil Mavs, who have been really good at holding this site. Basil takes out Frig. Yellow takes Nadix. Nadix? Nadix. Now it's a four on four. Vortex has some site control, but Basil's still on top of the site. Cloud's going to take down Crack of Shade. He's going to find Thief. Now it's a two on four. Four. Yellow is oh, what? Two, two. Chillstep takes down Samachi, it's a two versus one. This could be everything for Rex to take this to map three. Vortex needs this so bad. Yellow hat on about 30% health. He doesn't have the puck. He's picked up the puck and get a scan in, but Tarmac and Here Clive. comes the nades. Oh, oh, oh. flops. It almost blew himself up. That would have been really unfortunate, but wow. uh, Yellow Hat now alone against two members of Wrecked. He's got to deal with Clev and Tarmac, however. He does have 55 seconds left on the clock, and he has the scanner. He can go wherever he wants. Oh, the timing. Oh, the timing. Is. Timing. Here it is. Here it is. You saw he backed out. Will Clev pick him up on the rotate? He's got the line. But will he see him? I don't think he did. They've got to be sm uh, smelling that something's up. Yeah, without without anybody uh, moving around or anything going on on that side, they're going to have to figure there's a rotation, and you're going to start seeing that here very shortly. Yeah, they, they figured it out. They're starting to rotate. Yellow hat getting a free scan yeah, in, starting. keeping it's all up to yellow. in this. this. Is all up to yellow here to hold this and yeah, keep but, it. But watch out. Yellow has two grenades left. This oh. could be huge. This could be huge. We saw him get that amazing Ta double grenade kill earlier. We might see it again. There are 30 seconds left on the clock for Rex to close out map number two and take it to map three. Tarmac has a smoke here, though, that could come up huge for Rex if they toss the uh, the smoke near the diffuse and block Yellow's line of sight. It's a problem. Yellow swings oh. out. He's not able to fight Tarmac. And Rex is going to take gentlemen. it to We're map number three. Get three. Right. This is what we wanted to see in the Miami Vale Major, and we are seeing it. Rex bringing it back. Those are my boys. I said they're going to win it. Woo! Wow. Wow, what a match. This, both these maps have been insane, man. It's been insane, <laughs> and it's been ridiculous. I mean, I mean, look at the score line. Look at that. Chillstep and Basil, both 23 and 22 kills. I mean, they just rocked it. They, but they wrecked it. In that I'm actually like my like nerves are <laughs> frayed. I mean, I'm so invested in this, but that was just crazy. Seeing these top level teams back and forth. I mean, we all thought Vortex had it right, ladies and gentlemen. If you didn't think Vortex had it, you had something wrong with you. But Rex, bring it back. Let's bring it up for Rex. Round of applause for Rex, ladies and gents. Round of applause for Rex. Yeah, really well played to battle back on that one. Absolutely incredible result from Rex being down one map, down nine five. But let's not leave Vortex without any love, all right? Round of applause for Vortex. They're putting on one hell of a show for us. Everyone be thankful. Round of applause for Vortex as well, please. Woo! Map three. I mean, we've, we've seen this before, though, right? We saw this in the on, on the online seating. All right, now here's an interesting thing you may not know, but Wrecked actually did very well uh, against Vortex on Suna. Yeah. Um, I believe winning 11-6. Could be right. Yeah, but you have to consider that the, the Vortex didn't play their full lineup, right? Due to the time that it started, they were missing Kraka J, yes, who's here were. now with yep. them. Then that's that. He's a huge player Kraka's for them, been, right? Yeah, so Kraka has been cracked. Yeah, yeah, he's insane. He's been fragging right. all day, right? So I mean, I, like I literally could not have asked for a better finals match for this match. Is insane, man. This is crazy. I mean, I, I can't believe we're finally going. I mean, we're, we're getting that map three, and we're getting it on the finals. On the finals in Miami for twenty thousand dollars. Uh. I think we are going to cut to a quick, tiny break. These players are going through a lot. You can see they're all quite tired. We need a tiny like, drink, drink break. My words are falling over. We can see that they are needing a moment to chill out. So we're just going to cut to a quick break video. Shout out our amazing DJ. Let's hear it.
Accountants count me in, make millions every year. The South champion, cause all I do, all I, all I, all I, all I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go.
matter how hard you try, keep that in mind. I'm designed this rhyme to explain in due time. Oh, I know. Time is a valuable thing. Watch it fly by as the pendulum swings. Watch it count down to the end of the day. The clock takes life away. So unreal. Watch the time go right out the window Trying to hold on to didn't even know I wasted it all to watch you go I kept everything inside and even though I tried It all fell apart But what it meant to me will eventually be a memory of a time when I tried so hard And got so far Yes, sir. Hello, hello, hello. So sorry. How's the body? All right, ladies and gentlemen, Miami. How are you feeling so far? Make some noise if you're enjoying yourself. What's up, everybody? We made it to map three. It's not WrestleMania. It wasn't scripted. It's just that fucking awesome. <laughs> right. <laughs> As one of the founders, map three to me, this means a lot. I'm very excited. So. Something I want to do other than get really fucking hyped is I want to do the wave. I think the wave is really fun. So <laughs> left to right, left to right, left, left to right. Left. Don't right, check it out do the now. Wave. We're gonna yell. We're gonna get crazy. We're gonna get wrecked in vortex. Fucking hyped. Let's because go. Because no matter what, VR Esports won today. Because these teams all put on such a fucking good show, guys. This is fun to watch. Is this fun to watch? Makes it yeah. yeah. noise. This is amazing. All right. We're gonna do a wave. Lux, I see you. Lux, ready? One, two, three. Go, Lux! Woo! Yeah! Woo! 
that back. Oh. One more time. That was smooth. One more time. One, two, three, go. Woo! <laughs> there we Woo! go. They got kind of lazy in the middle, but we respect that. Though. Harman Capital? They're, they were not. No, not them. You guys They're are great. investing They're in this great. ecosystem. All right, one more time for Harman Capital. <laughs> one, two, three. Woo! Woo! Come on, come on. There we yeah! go. There it is. <laughs> and I just want to give a uh, quick little shout out to a lot of people. All the VR content creators that flew out to come to this event, trusting someone crazy. Jeff Ransdell and the Fuel Venture Capital team being the first investors in us being crazy. I appreciate you. Hartman Capital team believing in us as well, investing, believing in esports. I still remember the day, <laughs> am I allowed to say this? <laughs> JP comes in, this is better than Onward. <laughs> <laughs> it took five minutes, he's like, this is it. Um, also a big <laughs> shout out to our three sponsors, Liv, Dr. Doom, your passport, had a problem, you couldn't be here, but I love you if you're watching. Uh, Metagoons, where's Metagoons at? I haven't seen you all day. Over there? Metagoons is Meta rocking it. I haven't this seen thing. you all fucking day, and you guys are sponsors and very close friends. I love you as well. And then also, Smash Drums, if you haven't heard about Smash Drums, they're also sponsors, wasn't able to come because of a passport issue, but Smash Drums is an amazing game, and I love the dev. Um, and there's so many other people. I love everybody. Really, this is an incredible moment, and I'm just excited. Whoever wins, it's great. Wait, wait, I'm wait, really wait, happy. wait, wait, audience, audience, audience. We gave a round of applause for everybody out there that helped put this event together. Let's put one more round of applause together for everyone at X Labs for throwing this. Dude, wait, wait, wait. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. <laughs> X Lab team is great. IVRL. Guys, love for IVRL. You have oh, yeah. how many people are in the IVRL community? <laughs> Two thousand? Two thousand? In what? our Discord? 20, 20, no, 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 no. Like 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 on staff that like really oh, make the shit 20, work. 30? Yeah. 20, 30. We had a lot of all people here. Wow. They all grinded it out. How many hours has the team volunteered? <laughs> Literally for the love of the game. <laughs> oh. I, I've been here since Monday putting in 14 hours. Yeah, but it's been like two and a half months. It's been two and a half months. It's been two and a half months. Thousands of hours. I have no idea. Big, big shout out to Ivarrell. This is not possible without them. Yes. Woo! And I have so many other shout outs, but special teams. I love special teams. And olive trees. <laughs> we love all of Thank you very much. <laughs> there we go. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we throw this over to the commentator desk, let's go ahead and get this room live a little bit. I'm going to give this to you. Ask the, yeah, ask the audience if they like Rekt or Vortex in map three. All right. Both teams put up a really good match. Who do you think is going to take it? Who do you think is going to take it? Let's hear it for Vortex. Is that a nine? Nine out of ten in, in volume? Nine out of ten? That was all right. That was all right. All right. Let's hear it for Vortex. I was teasing, I was teasing. All right, wrecked, 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 wrecked. wrecked. <laughs> it's about even, it's about even. I it's love it right even. now. I mean, the matches have been so fucking close, man. It's really uh, crazy. They've been phenomenal. Like so I said, crazy. I've been all around eSports, and this game right here is something special. Thank you so much for putting this all together with your beautiful crew. Thank you to the entire team and everybody here, really. Yes. It means a lot. I'm also running on zero hours of sleep, and I'm, like, I'm so hyped that I don't even feel it but I will be crashing tomorrow. <laughs> Gamer things, Thank let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time to send this over to the commentator desk to get map three underway. Let's go and make some noise. Let's get it. Final stretch. This is the end of the road, ladies and gentlemen. Miami right now, Vortex Rec, let's go Miami Vale Major. Yeah, while we're, long time while we're here, coming. let's take a look at this beautiful bracket behind us. As you can see, has the games have gone through. Rec versus Corbo Cartel, Rec taking that one. Vortex versus Royal Strive. Vortex taking that one. And that's what we're watching here right now on the stage. We're going to a map three decider. I mean, listen, all the games today have been great, but these two have given us the best. 11-9, 11-9. I mean, that's like back to back. 11-9, 11-9. That's insane. You could not ask for much closer. Sure, 10-10, 1-1. But man, those such fire rounds all the way back through. And forth. Hype all the way through. Yeah, and, and then. Both teams have battled back from deficits too, right? Vortex was down early to Rekt in, in map number one, yep. and Rekt was down late to Vortex in map number two, and they both have so much resolve and battled back to win the map. The you know, favorite going like, in the middle of the match, if you had told me that either one of those teams were going to win, the right. opposite. We love comeback stories. We got two comeback stories back to back, and it's been a long road here. All these teams, I mean, you can't see them all. You're only seeing four. There's a lot of teams involved. And it's been an amazing road. And this is the end of the road. The Miami Vale Major. <laughs> <laughs> Miami Vale Major. We've got Wrecked. We've got Vortex. 20,000 up for the winner. 10,000 up for second place. And the title of being IVRL Season 1 Champion Vale 
I mean, that's, there's only ever going to be one season one. Season two, three, four, five, six, those are just numbers. Season one is the one that matters. One of these teams is going to walk away with it. Let's hear it for both teams before we go into it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> now, one last thing. We're going to be going to a map we haven't seen yet. Arguably the most balanced map, Sooner. It's arguably the best map, and they've been saving the best to last. This is a fire map. It's back and forth. It's CQB. It's range. It's take, it's retake, it's everything we've seen. It's behind me, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. No, it's, it's got the same type of, uh, you know, A and B. Everybody goes left or right, right? And you got your mid control. But things are a little bit tighter, a little bit closer. And then also you got one, a couple long lanes down, down the mid and from A to B as well. But Suna was the map throughout the qualifiers. And yes. It was the only map that people got to play. So for a good straight, what, month? Month. month, yeah. It was just Suna over and over and over and over, right? So throughout the playoffs, throughout the online, or not the online city, but through the playoffs and through here on the finals, we got to see finally Kiti and Mar. And now again, Suna, back to Suna. Everything's coming back down to Suna. Yeah, I mean, Suna has been played so much during the month of August. We had, we had four weekends, Saturday and Sunday, qualifier matches. Suna was the only map that was played. Um, and, you know, during literally that time. Literally hundreds of times. Literally yeah. hundreds and of times. And everybody was only scrimming and practicing that map. Yeah. That's it. They all just played Suna. So, so these teams know the map well. They have strats. They have options. They have rotates. They have all that down. So yeah, this is not be... a map that they're going into unfamiliar with by no. any means. Everybody is prepared here. Look at these guys. I getting limbo. I, I mean, look at that. Look, look. He's just. Clev isn't playing right now. Nadix isn't playing. They're just practicing. They're just getting their, the, like, you know, the motor skills running. Meanwhile, very different approach on Vortex. They're relaxing. They're readying themselves for the storm to come. They know what's up to stake. They know what they need to play for. They took map one. They almost took map two. I am hyped to see map three and decide who is going to be the champion. Yeah, we could not be asking for a more hype final match. I mean, it's been two months of grinding it out in this tournament for you know this. What? You know what? I think an interesting like, thing to do <laughs> would um, maybe not decide this with weapons. I think maybe we go with a bit more of a pacifist away. Maybe maybe some rock, paper, scissors, you know, between the teams <laughs> to the side. You, you, know, could really actually, just, you could do that with these indexes. Yeah, you could do that with the index. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody meet in mid, you know, round robin, rock, paper, scissors. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe, maybe no, I think we, we maybe should. We watch no, no, I'm, I'm sticking by it. We've seen enough guns. All right, let's, <laughs> let's see the, some rock, paper, scissors. Let's see some, you know, a some utility old school battle. action. Utility battle on Suna. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's actually happening, ladies and gentlemen. I asked for it. I didn't think I would get it. That doesn't look like Rob Pegasus to me. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like people shooting each other. Okay, here we go. Samachi versus Clev. Rock <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that was a throw. Things you can't do in Pancake right here. Oh, no. All right. All right. Someone dies to a nade. I'm not sure what we're seeing right now. I was told we were going to get Rock, Paper, Scissors. We were lied to right now. They lied to us. <laughs> so, sorry, we're just waiting for them to start off. They're getting some technical difficulties, so rather than just go to a port screen, we thought we'd like watch them monkeying around. Having a little fun, keeping limber, keeping loose. Oh, oh is that it? Oh, I thought we were gonna see it. They're just playing catch right oh, now. Oh, they're playing catch, but a little live grenade. Who do you think the player to watch is for each of these teams, Lampy? Going into this. And rock, paper, scissors? Uh, rock, paper, scissors? No, I, I was talking, you know, you know, the guns and stuff like that. I don't know, man. I mean, for the longest time, we've been hyping up Nadix, right? I mean, he's had the most hours. He's got, he, he's been proven to be that person, but he's been the middle fragger. You know, I mean, not that he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's pulling what he's supposed to be holding. He's, he's performing, but everybody else is stepping up. Yeah. Chill step. Right? Chill step. Basil. They both stepped up huge in that last map. Cracker J. Yes, Cracker. And then. That's who you got? Cracker J and Chill Step, both like boys on either team. For yeah. so you, that, that's who you think? Yes, and I believe Sumachi a little bit too. Sumachi was the clutch master. He had some amazing clutches, not, not because of his top frag. He wasn't top frag at that point, but it was the clutches that he was making in those moments. Ladies and gents, this is it. This is the final. This is the final map. This is the last game of the night. This decides the winner. Get hype. Here we go. <laughs> Woo! Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go! Here we go. Final match. Grand Finals. Miami Vale Major. $20,000 on the line. Vortex starting out here on the pistol round as colonists. Wrecked as Rayab defending here. Vortex looking like they're going to try and execute towards B site. We've seen them do this a lot. This is a pretty standard play from Vortex. They got four going down to B middle or B long right now. 
Samachi getting involved there. Smoke's coming out, looking to get a quick execute here. But you can see a 2-3 split. They're not giving up the A site. They're still defending heavy on the B site. Silent push is coming out. They've got mid control. No one's contesting it. Ah, this B side push is coming in quiet, quiet, yeah, quiet. Vortex. It's gonna go live. Vortex is slowing it down a little bit here, possibly trying to avoid some nades, maybe a double fake. Yeah, but look at Rex. They think an A strike might be coming. They're not ready for this. The long side is uncontested. Yep. Freak finds kill step. Danix finds so much. Yellow hat taking down Clev. But B side control belongs to Vortex on the initial push with only two Rex players remaining. Rex dominance of the pistol rounds is over, ladies and gentlemen. So that Age has passed. Yeah, Vortex has passed. Passed. Oh, no. just around. How many left? No, Two. Listen to comms here. Plus. Hey, hey. back, huge 2K on Yellow Hat and Frig. Now it's a 2 on 2 situation. Thief taking out Tarmac, and it's now all on ba Basil. We saw him killing it. Cracker J is very low on health now, though. Cracker J though, swinging from the ramp. Basil unable to find him. Time ticking down here on the scan. Only 22 seconds left. Here we're trying to find Kraka. Uh, Kraka J's gonna take him down. That's gonna be the first look round. Look at that Gets the sure. kill. Throws the gun. You're done, son. Get out of here. Yeah, big big job there by Vortex as they took over. They moved through B long. They took it slow, right? They threw out some utility. They were baiting more round utility shot. back, right? They wanted to make sure that they didn't get naded and they didn't get flashed coming through there as a group. Right. So as they waited for that utility to come, they stepped back, then they pushed back through. They took over B, but it was a slow rotation, I believe, from Wrecked on that A site. Those guys, if they would have cut, you know, cut over a little bit sooner, um, they could have been with their teammates a little bit more. I agree completely. They, uh, they, they, they fell for it, basically. At the end of the day, they fell for uh, Vortex's push. They fell off that defense. They allowed the hole to, for, you know, they left a hole in the defense, and Vortex capitalized on that mistake. Yellow Hat tossing the smoke in the middle there. They got a 3 2 split going on right now with Yellow Hat and uh, Frig working up middle here. Samachi, Thief, and Cracker J trying to work up into B long here, but still three members of Wreck chilling at that B bomb site. Nadix. Again, we're seeing a very, very, very similar push from Vortex coming out here. Very slow. Yeah, very slow. Feeling it out. I mean, we've seen this every single map that they played so far, right? They try to feel out the opponent and make some adjustments early on, and then we see some more aggression coming out. From oh, like long nades coming in. Samachi trading shots. Samachi the AK chill takes step. down chill step. Frig grabs Tarmac, and now it's a four-on-two situation. It's all up to Basil and Clev here. They have to try and rotate in. Actually, Clev is still on catwalk holding that position, but Basil's going to have to rotate from A in order to help his teammate now. And once again, we see Vortex taking B site, and it's down to Wrecked for that retake, and it's harder than it looks, ladies and gents. I mean, that you're pushing in, you don't know where the enemy is set up. God, stop. Meanwhile, Clev battling Basil. Samachi here. A little bit of an awkward fight as Frick comes in on the flank wow. and cleans him up, and now it's all up to Basil as he's rotating from A site. He's only got about 35 seconds left on the clock here. He does have two flashes, I believe. Yes, here comes one. Yeah, he might have two flashes, but he has four enemies. I mean, yeah. he's, you know, he doesn't have enough flash for all of them, so they better share. He's going to have to deal with Samachi first, who's holding the close angle here on him as he swings around. Basil grabs Samachi. Now it's going to be Frick next up. Frick comes out wow. firing, and Frick takes him down. That's going to be two rounds on the board now for Vortex, 2 nothing. Yeah, this is a very similar play to round number one there, is Vortex just taking their time and just baiting out any utility, you know, because if you push B long too fast, like they've done in the past, like people, other people have done in the past, and you push it as a group, you're going to have that utility coming back at you. Right, one right. good flash, one good grenade is really going to ruin that push. And they are baiting it out, and they're waiting for it. And that patience is really paying off right now. Yeah, but you know what? Also, Wrecked uh, might be in danger of doing Vortex and conditioning, right? They're saying, we keep doing this quiet push on B, put more people on B, and we can see right now they are pushing A. And we can see more defense is actually pushed to B from Wrecked to his work. They've conditioned wrecked to think this B push is going to keep happening until it doesn't um, and it isn't right now and that puts wrecked in a really disadvantageous position right now. Yeah, chill steps in this underpass position. They're going to swing out. He's going to be able to find Frick there. Nice entry on that middle position as he gets a nade in there. Yellow Hat's going to have to back off a little bit. They're trading utility back and forth here. Nades come out from both sides. Meanwhile, AX is trying to have it. Basil, he's pushed up long. He <laughs> takes down Kraka J. That's a really huge play. And now Thief is alone in A main. Has Look to at this aggression. Basil. Chill step in a lot oh, of trouble. Clev, huge. Clev, what a pick up. Thief taking down Basil, but it doesn't matter. It's a Three versus one situation with Wrecked finally on the upper hand number wise. And Clef closes it out. First point on the board for Wrecked. Let's go. Yeah, that was some aggression there. An A side push didn't work out quite as well as they thought, right? The B was working. Maybe yep. they should stick with it. Don't know. But that A push, you got the aggression from Basil who pushed through A and A long. 
um, really shutting that stuff down. Yep, and you can't expect it. You know, you, you, you listen for that audio. Basil works off the uh, lack of attention. And often you see teams kind of put like a little fish tackle out there, right? They're trying to find out, to push one player out, listen for that audio, yep. and if they hear someone, they know the strike's going to A. If they don't hear anyone, they're known for B. And even if, when you die, you get that quick picture of, you know, yes. split second of what's going on around you. So if you push and get aggressive, you may see two or three boxes. <laughs> ah, chill step, early pickup on Yellow Hat. Just like last round, chill step playing that underpass position. Chill but this time he gets the nade kill on Frig. And just like that, it's a five on three. Good couple of kills there from chill step playing that underpass position and not giving up that mid control. Meanwhile, the rest of Vortex trying to work their way into A. They're going to make a pick before they can actually execute on the site. Now they're down numbers quite significantly at this point. Basil looking to find anybody on long A there. Ooh. Oh, what a name. That was very close. Basil <laughs> drops his gun and got to pick that up, man. Samachi battling a little bit in the underpass there. Thief gets a long shot onto Basil Maz, evening the score a little bit, but they still in a 4-3 situation. Cracker J has no help. As I say that, Tarmac's going to take him down, but Thief's going to trade that one out. Now it's all up to Samachi and Thief against Chillstep. Clev and Nadix, about 55 seconds left here on the clock. I mean, wrecked again in the Numbers wise, and Boom. they left with the cleanup. Two, two, ladies and gentlemen. This is the final we wanted. Yeah, that was that was an impressive job by Clev. It's hard to get kills coming up that hill to get back into the A side, especially with an SMG. Yes, exactly. Round I mean, shot. that just shows the accuracy that that guy has and, yep. and the patience to keep that gun up that entire time. Lappy, who's your uh, MVP right now for the day? For Rekt? It's, no, no, for one team. Come for, on. Oh, for one team. Wow. Uh, man, it's. It's got to be Chill Step. I agree. Yeah, Chill Step's been insane, but I got to give it to Basil Mass. He's been huge wow. in these finals as well. And Come on, Chill Step. That, chill That's step what we're talking about. Yeah. He's like, oh, guys, you stop talking about me. Talk about me again. Boom, gets the kill. And Chase, chill Step's actually adjusted his position. He's not playing from that underpass anymore. He's actually back in the ray of spawn. Gives him a little bit longer to hang. Old Nadix Whoa. swinging out, taking down Thief. Good couple of entries, and now it's a five on three. Just, just like that. A couple of good defensive kills from Wrecked. Causing all kinds of trouble here for Vortex. They're going to have to try and adjust. The scanner is down at me long, but they still have two members of Vortex that are there. Nadix trying to find some match you there. Very close. Unable to, though. We haven't seen plays like that on B holding, and since we saw Paul holding back Nadix in the qualifiers. Pan the man. Couldn't make it here, but his dream lives on. Community members, you know what I'm talking about. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to take what down a, Clev on the reaction. swing. Yeah, that was crazy. Sure. Now the execute's gonna try and come in here. Nadix has basically no HP. He's hiding on the ladder. Oh, I love the screen and screen. You can see the nade is prepped to go. Samachi and Kraka just probing the site. Oh, he's on the point. steps. I take it back. He's holding sight on the steps. Kraka he's gonna Jay pull up and fire. Step. Here we go. One hand in the steps. Oh, One hand in Nadix. What, ha what just happened? That One hand insane. on the ladder. Insane play from Nadix there. Now he's trying to swing around. He's gonna, he's yeah, gonna pick up Samachi too. Crack of Jay now, the only one left. He's turned oh, to rotating. Wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> That's, I mean, what Amazing, else? amazing plays. You could see Nadix prepping himself for that, right? That, that ladder yeah. play has been used a couple times we've seen throughout the streams. But man, one Round hand on the ladder, here. right? And that's VR. One hand technically up here gripping it, one hand on the gun. He's waiting to get up, take that shot, because you could get down and get ducked yeah, and yeah. be out of cover in no time. Disgusting shot. It's, 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 it's not disrespectful. When it happens to me, Dude. I feel I just feel so hot dumb by I'm like, really? Yeah, like I just Whoa, got watch out. Lab with a dope nade, taking down Frig in the middle line. Yeah, that nade's recently got meta, tossing that over the graffiti position, and he's gonna pick up one there. That's a really, really, really unlucky situation for Vortex. Oh, good placement from Clev. He's in, he's going to go live. Comes out firing, takes down Clev, opens up the short B. Samachi grabs two. Nadix gonna grab Crack of J here. Samachi, Samachi gonna grab a third <laughs> onto Nadix. Huge play here from Samachi. Now it's a three on two in favor of Vortex yeah, with a minute stuck. 15 as they get the plant, they get the scan set up. The man with the blue ears showing he's more than just a face, taking down three of the wrecked players. Drop Samachi. shot. Four, he's on a 4K, ladies and gentlemen. He's gonna go for the ace, no doubt. It's all down to Tarmac to stop him. Well, we see our first Miami ace right now. I think Samachi's looking for it a little bit. Don't overextend Maybe the ladder that. play. Look at the ladder play coming in. Hands on it. Look at that. He comes out. Is he going to find it? Oh, oh Tarmac. Tarmac denies us the glory of a 5K and How brings dare that you? point back for Vortex. How dare you, Tarmac? Well, I mean, what a job by Samachi. <laughs> no, well done, Doesn't well matter. I mean, a 4K is just as good. You know, wow. I mean, it, you know, it's good. Yeah, right? I, mean, I mean, it's hard enough to do in this game. Wow, yeah, shot. huge entries from Samachi yeah, there, taking that cat control and just getting involved and getting those picks. I mean, that's really what opened up the site there for Vortex to allow them to plant that. Can I change scanner. my answer? Yes, go ahead. Okay. It might be Sumachi. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. You're I a fickle it. man, Lampy. You're a fickle man. It's not over. Please can still have to. What? I don't want to hear you fickle boys. Basil Maz, though, he's pushed through, he's pushed through A main here. So they're Wrecked is gonna know that nobody is coming A right now. Look at the position of Basil. He's he's really running through, but I believe Samachi's working with the for him. Gets in a little bit of a gunfight. Basil's gonna toss the utility up. Samachi picks him up. Love Not sure if he was blind there. <laughs> Such a crazy place for a fight as well. It's southwest of the map. You just don't see it. Yeah, not often. Meanwhile, Chill Stuff's going to pick up a yellow hat, yellow hat in the middle there. It's a four on four situation. Minute 10 left oh, on the clock. Madix is in this secret spot over here. Madix so deadly on that line, but they're expecting. Look, Kraken J has it. Kyle knows. Oh, we cut off just as the engagement happened. Some bullets finding him, but not enough to take down either player. That's going to swing on a cat. Take down Thief. Frig with pick a double. Club and chill step. Nice kills there from Frig. Now it's a three on two. They got lots of time here. 45 seconds left on the clock. Three on two situation. Got Nadix and Tarmac against Kraken J, Frig, and Sumachi from but Vortex. Look at Tarmac's position. So important. He's holding the mid ground. He can work off that, but he's pulled in back away. He's going to lose that audio, which would have given away the position of the Vortex aggressors. Now Samachi does his right and he comes out. Tarmac patches in and takes down Samachi. And now it's a two on two. Frig knows someone's for it. B. Kraken J has to deal with Tarmac. Wow. He's unable to. And Nadix <laughs> picks up Frig. Frig. Big Wrecked. plays. Big Both plays. three up, Lampy. Yeah, big plays. I mean, the rotation came back. They tried B, didn't go so well. Nadix was holding it down on the long side. And then they rotated back through the mid into A. And that didn't Rock work out so started. well either for him as they, you know, they ran right into Rex. And Nadix with the rotation from A are from B into A, you know, cleaning up that last kill. Back and forth and back and forth, Vodex. Again, we've seen it throughout this matchup between these two teams, neither willing to give it up. Four, we, three. We couldn't have been expecting anything different. No, I mean, no. Well, we wanted this. Absolutely. I'm glad we got it. Looks like Vortex might try to do a heavy B push here. Smoke's coming out early, they're getting involved. They're getting aggressive, trying to push the smoke. Nadix is ready for it, takes down Frick. Nice entry there from Nadix. The rest of Vortex has to get involved. Nadix gets two. Nadix gets, gets three. three. Come on, Nadix! Oh, Yellow Hat shutting him down, but Nadix coming alive, showing us why he's got the reputation he has. Had a chance to speak to Nadix during the break. He said soon is his best map, so here he is putting in work. Meanwhile, Samachi trying to sneak up. He's got to deal with Clev here. Clev doesn't know he's there. He's being silent. Yellow Hat getting involved. Now Samachi gets involved, but Chillstep wow. for the ladder picks him up, and now it's all up to Yellow Hat in a 1v3 situation. Oh. Huge pick under the ladder there. He can get the plant down, but he doesn't yeah, have much health here. He's low, and Basil and Tarmac are both full health. However, Yellow does have a nade. If you can put that to good use, he might be in a good situation here. 35 seconds left on the scan. Utility coming in, trying to throw Yellow Hat off his game. Tarmac finds him, and that's wrecked. 5-3 up now. I was just going to say the B side offers so many spots for people to hide. You know, yep. there's so many different areas yeah, people can hide to hold that uh, artifact down. And uh, Yellow gave away his position by throwing Utility out. I wasn't sure if that was the right play for him or not. I mean, it didn't work out for him, obviously. No. Um, but at that moment, you want to stay as hidden Round as possible, starting. right? You want to surprise them as they come up. You know what, Lampy? You're fickle, fickle, for that. but I like what you have to say. Oh, doing it again? Appreciate it. Yeah, long guys, be careful, I guess. Uh, stay, wait, wait up. Looks like Vortex is going to try and set up for a, what looks like a 3-2 push and a heavy mid here. Samachi going up quickly. Going to have to try and deal with Clev. Nade coming in onto Clev's position. I hope that's a smoke, oh, actually. Oh, counter Nade to the smoke. Yellow Hat picking up Chill Step in the second round. Meanwhile, Kraken J fighting Clev with an amazing Nade. Vortex reminding everyone, look, we are deadly. Don't give it all away yet. Yeah, Nade's ringing out all over the catwalk position. Samachi's getting involved. He's going to have to deal with Nade. It's right beside him. Nade oh, wins that battle, but Frick's right there to refrag. Now Tarmac's gonna get crack a J. Yellow Hat's gonna refrag on a Tarmac, and just like that, it is a one versus three situation. Basil Mass first of all, Vortex, but look at Basil. Look where he is. He's currently flanking on a B long right now. He has yep, the long the angle, but I believe Yellow Hat's for aware him. of it. He's making the read here. He goes quiet. He gets into position he needs to be. He goes quiet. This could pay off for him. If he can take down Yellow Hat, he has a potential to take down Thief and Frig on the way past. Yellow waiting patiently. Yellow Hat Basil has there. I'm not sure he's there. But now, Basil takes him down. Now Thief and Frig know where he's coming from. Yeah, They're going to position to deal with this. Like he can, like, and they are sharing an angle right now. 23 seconds left on the clock. Thief may have seen the transition. He may not have. This is lining up for Basil right now. Basil's running out of time. 
Oh, that was 15 seconds they left that Steve grabs the kill Double peak. by four. Yeah, that was a great teamwork. Good communication. You could tell that they were probably telling each other in the headset, ready ready to peak one, two, three, or however they wanted to do that. They peaked yeah. at the same time. Yeah, and they, you can see the coordination Yes. There. Yeah, Absolutely. you can see the coordination. And that's exactly what you needed to do to yeah, defend that. Because when a player pops up or two players pop up in front of you, everybody knows you, sometimes you can't decide which one you're going to shoot. And Absolutely. you try to shoot both, right? right? Absolutely. Yeah, it can be tough to deal with that. 5-4, guys. 5-4. This is the final, and we're not seeing either team dominate. We're seeing each one sharing the points back and forth. And again, we haven't seen the round swap yet. This is the last round we're going to see before the round swap. Vortex will become the defenders. Wrecked will become the aggressors. This will be the last time either of these teams play the side that they're on right now. Yep. Vortex will not play Colonist again today, and Wrecked will not play Rayab again today. Friggin' Yellow Hat trying to work on middle here, trying to find a Chill Step if possible, but Chill Step's not giving them anything. Meanwhile, Samachi's gonna just lurk through the smoke. He's gonna be coughing inside Samachi, of the smoke, though. Samachi was telling me he loves to play the smoke. He plays it tactically. He draws people out, knowing exactly when the cough is gonna happen. He's got this time down to an up. He draws people into kills constantly. Clev picking up Frig for the first kill of the round. Clev's gonna pick up one there on Cat now, still holding strong. Two working down B long right now for Vortex. Two working in middle. Yellow Hat's gonna join them. It looks like they're gonna try and execute a B long hit push. Oh, Nadix picks up Cracker J. That's a huge kill right now. 45 seconds Whoa, left on the clock here. Nade. Nade's ringing out. Vortex is gonna try to rotate out. Chill Step swings out of underpass and picks up Samachi. Now it's a two on five. Thief and Yellow Hat are in trouble here. Chill Step rotating through underpass right now. Yellow Hat and Thief are in the middle of the map here, but. They have the scanner, but they only have 30 seconds left. They have to commit on the site right now. And Rex still have complete hold of every angle. They've got two on A, three on B. They've got mid control. Vortex running out of time and running out of options. Tarmac holding on A site has to hear Thief at this point. Thief just needs to get in there. There's some of the swimwear. Tarmac's going to swing out, pick him up, and now it's just Yellow Hat alone against five with no time left. Tarmac gets involved, and that's going to be the half, six, Four in favor of Rex. I mean, if Rex won that decisively. I mean, five. Decisively. Up. I mean, but that last round. I'm saying yeah, that. Not, course, not course, the whole, course, not the whole six four, but that last round there, round the tenth round okay. before the round swap. Ladies and gentlemen, who's gonna win? Is it gonna be Vortex? <laughs> Woo! Is it gonna be Rex? Pretty even. We'll see. We'll see. Pretty even, just like the scoreline. I right don't know. Now. I think Rex had more noise. I'm, I'm just putting it out there. I. Uh... <laughs> Looks like Rex going to be setting up. We've seen this pistol oh, around before. Oh, 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 yellow, yellow Hat takes himself down. <laughs> Hate to see it. Wow. Meanwhile, three racked members working in slowly from long A right now. This is the pistol round, folks. They're, they're just waiting to move up as far as they can, and they're going to blow out. Here they come. Getting involved quickly. Frick's going to be alone back here on quad. Trading nades back and forth. Smoke comes out. Smoked off. Frick swinging out into a main now. Takes wow. down Tarmac. Deep takes Frick out gets a double. Frick gets a triple. Frick getting involved no. on Chill Step there, but Chill Step takes down Deep before he can get support. So intense fighting through the smoke. Battling they don't see each other. They hear each other. Chaos. Frick taking down Chill Step. Nadix immediately getting the refrag. Cracker J taking down Basil, and it's Nadix versus Sumachi and Cracker J. Two players you don't want to be one versus two against. Yeah, but if anybody can do it, it's Nadix. He's ready for this. He said that Suna is his best map. He's going to try and swing out and try and find one, but Cracker J takes him down. And Vortex takes another pistol round. Yeah, they've been amazing on their pistol rounds. And Frig, I mean, talk about Frig back there on the quad. Took a three piece there. I mean, really holding down A side, allowing his teammates to rotate in from the other side of the map Round's and helping out. Shouting. Frig yeah, ready. leading his team. 10 it kills right now. It is six to five. This is the Miami Bail Major. It's been a long road. And look at it. You could not ask for two tighter, closer teams, equally Absolutely balanced, not. equally skilled. We Guys, we are in a legendary moment right now. And Rex going to be trying to take a B site push here. They're working up with four going towards B long. But they've got Tarmac set up at A main here, trying to possibly lurk and do a fake. We've seen this do the strat over and over again during the online seedings. This is a regular strat, but I mean, like they said to you, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Chill Step and Nadix trying to lead the entry here. Working up very, very, very slowly. Not trying to telegraph any of their position here. Vortex not really sure where they are on the map. Tarmac's making all kinds of noise I mean, in A main, which is going to keep them honest. We saw Vortex using a very similar push, and it worked for them quite a few well, It worked for them two times in a row, right? Mm -hmm. So we're seeing, right, they know this play. They practice this play. Smoke comes out, gives them the opportunity to cross without any, uh, without any counter fire, but the nades flying into smoke. Could find one. Double nade comes out from Yellow Hat there. 
Yellow hat crap one, one with a nade. That's yeah, absolute chaos in the smoke here. But he's running around trying to fight literally anybody. Clev grabs. Crack a J Nadix grabs Samachi. That's a couple of good entries there. Now it's a four on two as Tarmac grabs Thief. Yellow hat gonna grab Clev and bring it down to just three members. Or sorry, two on one. Yellow Hat alone against Chill Step and Nadix. Both wrecked members fairly low. Yellow Hat low himself. No utility on the field right now to play with. Yellow Hat swinging in. Yellow Hat taking down Nadix. Nadix. It's one versus one. Chill Step with only a tiny bit of health. Yellow Hat will have the advantage here, but Yellow knows where he is. The plant is there. He just has to play for time. Yellow Hat coming down aggressive. Chill Step using audio here. Gets involved. Takes down Yellow Hat. Yeah, real tough time there for for Yellow Hat as, he, you know, he gets that first pick, he gets Nadix, right? And that gives away his position. Right, now, right. Chill Step knows it's either the ladder or coming up long B. So he, here's the footsteps to his Get left. Ready. Obviously, he's coming up long B, and it's all in your favor to make that peak. We saw so much chaos with those smokes. The smokes went out, and that it, it's all about reactions. You, oh my gosh. Through, you can see the panic, the left, yeah. right, left, right. And, you know, it's that reaction shot that makes the difference. Yeah. And again, Rex setting up with their standard play here. They're sending Tarmac into the lower area, make a bunch of noise, get involved, find a pick if he possibly can. The rest of Rex moving up slowly towards long A here. We've seen this do this time and time again. They're going to have to deal with Frick, though, who is very effective in this back location, although he's pushing up. He's trying to get involved here. This could be interesting. Frick could get caught out here in a bad position. I disagree. I think Frigg is in a great position. He's silent. He's silent pushing up. He's waiting for them to make their move. Look, he's not making any noise. He hears something. Gonna try to get this that triple. could be everything. Grabs one. chill step. He's in a tight spot. Oh, though. Nadix he didn't get a second Nado. Nadix taking him down at exactly key moment. Nade Here. comes out, almost takes down Thief. Thief comes out firing. Nadix takes him down. This is like, hey, this is my favorite map. This is the reason. Go down, Thief. Yeah, huge play there from Nadix with two entries. Yellow Hat getting involved. Picks up Clev. Yeah, now Basil can try and get the scan set up. So Machi picks him up double. immediately, but Nadix gets the third kill of the round. Now it's up to Tarmac and uh, Nadix against Yellow Hat and uh, Crack a J here. Got Nadix, 35 like, you seconds guys left. have not been talking about me enough. I'm going to go live now, all right? I've been taking it easy. This is the final round of the final map. Time for me to come alive. Yeah, Yellow Hat and uh, Crack of J here are going to have to find where they're hiding. Tarmac's going to swing out, pick up Yellow Hat. Now it's all up to Crack of J here. He was in, getting pressured by Tarmac, but Nadix is still in this back position. Tarmac picks him up. Wrecked three rounds away from $20,000. Yeah, I mean, Wreck is just holding these angles and holding these... I mean, they're just in the right spots. They're taking over the map, and they're holding those spots where you need to hold, and they're watching alternate angles. They're working together team. as a Get team. Ready. One player is drawing in the fire as the other one is the backup, and the backup doesn't even need to play. I mean, Nadix was the backup, right? right? And he didn't even get in there. Tarmac was just hitting those shots. No, and that's the kind of... When you're relying on your teammate, that's why Nadix had moved. He had complete faith that his teammate had it. We're going to see the exact same setup come out of Wreck here. I mean, guys, let's replay in our minds. Vortex took map one. They almost took map two. They were so close. They had a giant lead. And now we're seeing a switcheroo. We are back into map three. And Vortex are five, eight down. Wrecked three points away from being the very first champion of IVRL. Vale, making that lane legendary land. Getting 20k compared to the 10k. And being the champions. Here comes the nade from Frag. Not sure if going to catch anybody. Not a great nade. Here come the smokes, though, from Wrecked. Now here comes the executed general. Chill step, Nadix, and Basil Mass all gonna be working up. Frick just trying to scratch wow. himself. Finds Basil Mass, wow. finds two. Frick, 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 Frick finds two. Nadix finds Frick. Nadix reminding everyone, I'm still alive, so I'm going to make the game change. Yeah, but now Nadix is in a 1v4 situation. Has to deal with four members of Vortex that are all full health, and Nadix is around half health. He does have the artifact, the scanner right now, so we will be able to set it up, but Vortex not gonna let him do that. But it's Nadix, one. Nadix picks up one, Yellow Hack <laughs> gets a second. Good nice effort from Nadix. Yeah, he was, was man down against four of them. That was tough. And again, Frigg holding quads down the best he can. They're all pushing him, and Wreck is not changing anything. It's like three or four rounds in a row now. They're pushing three on the long A, nice and slow. Frigg is doing what he can. That initial nade was a little bit off, right? I mean, for him right now, he has to hit those utilities. I mean, he hits those nades, and that really clears things up even more. But remember, Wreck are the team that play the same game until it doesn't work, then right. they change it up. So. They did the same thing, like you said, it didn't work. Change up time, and it's exactly what we're seeing right now. And now Rex is so set up. Hmm? You're so smart. Thank you, love you. <laughs> Rex is going to set up with the opposite side strategy now, with three going slow into B. Tarmac just chilling in A main there. But they've got, looks like Clev working up Catwalk here very slowly. This is a little bit of an adjustment. We've normally seen them go with a 4 1. See if this pays out for them. Vortex, however, 
Standard setup. They've got Frig and Thief back here. Going to try and find Tarmac. Frig finds Tarmac. Nice swing there. Cracker J finding Clay on, Cla on Cat. Now it's just all up to the three remaining members that are all at B long, and they're going to have to deal with Sumachi. The nades come out from Cracker J. That's a big nade on the chill step. Now it's all up to Nadix and Basil Mask. They have about a minute five here, so they can go anywhere. They still have the scanner, but watch out. The flank's coming in right now from Yellow Hat. Basil Mask reads him like a book and takes him down. Basil, like the, the hero of Ma right now, only on a 4-11. He's not so hot on Suna right now. Trying to come alive. He's got the puck. They need to make the play. They are two versus four. They've got the lead on points, 8-6. But Basil's got something to prove. Nadix, though, check out his KDA. He's 19 kills, by far the highest kill ratio on this map. You know, it's interesting when they picked up Yellow Hat on that rotation, that's forced Vortex into staying with a split setup right now. They can't commit to one site because Wreck could be going anywhere. They just made it out. Now they're going to try and execute onto Long B here. Thief's going to take down Basil Mask. Nadix is going to take down Thief. And now it is all up to Nadix. But Sumachi's hiding on site. Krakajay's there supporting. He's not ready for him. Sumachi takes him down. 8-7. Yeah, great team work there by Vortex. And just, oh, it, there goes the dab. the dab. Did you miss it? No, we saw the dab. All right, good. I mean, impressive work again by Vortex. You know, they, they found out Rob they had shot. the site, right? They knew where those players, last two players were, and Sumachi just staying very patient, allowing the other players, again, to yeah. draw out the attention and draw the attention towards them. And Natives just can't check every corner. I mean, you just can't possibly do it at one time. Guys, is being in the lead at the start a curse right now? Because we saw the leader from map one lose map one. We saw the leader from map two lose map two. And right now, Wrecked were leading comfortably, and Vordites are on their way back. It could be a mental game. Could be a little bit of comfort zone, thinking you're in it, thinking you're running it. Yeah, I mean, when you're up like that, you get a little too comfort comfortable, and you know you start making mistakes like that, and the other team can capitalize on it. And Vortex showing that they're not out of this yet. They're swinging back right now. Wrecked. Setting up with a little bit different play. Normally we see Tarmac go into the A side and work on that, but Tarmac is actually, he's the number 10 position on your screen right now. Look at this he's build. Working into, into Cat here. Gonna have to deal with Kraka J, but Clev's there supporting. Kraka picks one. up Tarmac. Clev grabs Kraka, Chill Step grabbing Samachi, and just like that, Rekt has full B site control, and Vortex is gonna have to rotate from the other side. Rekt, momentum confirmed. B site control confirmed. They're gonna have to get the plant and hold, but Vortex know how to retake with yeah, skill. I'm started. Scan gets set up now. 45 seconds left on the clock. Remember, Vortex needs seven seconds to interrupt the scan now as Nadix <laughs> takes down Frigg. And now it is a two on four, two on three situation as Yellow Hat grabs Chill Step, but time's ticking down. They've got about 30 seconds left here. They're going to have to pick up the pace and get involved here as soon as possible. Thief trying to find anyone from underpass. Yellow Hat finding the long shot on the Nadix, and now it's only a 2v2. Yeah, this is winnable right now for Vortex, but time they is still have to out. deal with Time is running out. Now they still have to deal off with Basil Mass in the back position here. Basil taking down Yellow Hat. They got it. They got it. They got it. It's in time. Oh, there it is. Give the man some love. Yellow Hat wanted to hear the cheers. Everyone, Vortex. Woo. Let's hear it for a tie game in the final match. Whoever wins this is going to win $20,000. And we're tied 8-8 right now. I cannot believe it. I mean, that that was totally looking like a, a wrecked win on that round, right? Yep, right. And, Chill Step was in the back of long. It was a 2v4. It was a 2v4. And Chill Step was holding that long angle where I think Yellow Hat was coming through and he got that kill. He got another one on the long. And oh man, wow. Just a, a beautiful retake. Guys, girls, 8-8. Eight, eight. This is it. Three points away for either of these teams. The next three points decide everything for those teams. Fine, it might be five points. But that's the most points we can possibly see as it goes back and forth. What I want to see is a 10-10. This isn't wrestling, I know that, but they are giving us such a clean show that's showing it go back and forth and back and forth. You're getting pinned for the three count and on the two, they are kicking back and bringing it back. Looks like Rex actually trying to execute a little bit of a fake here. Basil Maz working his way down B long, gets a couple smokes in there, spams a little gunshots. Tarmac looking for the lurk in uh, lower tunnels right now. But now we're seeing the same slow push on the long A. Frig's gonna swing out, not punished for it. Now here comes the execute. Nade's coming out. Frig oh, 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 Thief with the huge double kill with the Nade. Oh my the goodness. Back up. Thief, Thief grabs another one. <laughs> Thief on fire right now, completely shutting down the A side push. This could be a game changer. Basil takes down Yellow Hat, but Sumachi punishes him in return. Now it's all up to Clev. He's alone on long A. He's going to go to work on Frig there. He's going to take some damage. Frig knows exactly where they come. So pre-aiming wow. takes him down. Vortex, Vortex is in the lead. 9-8. That nade, wow. I mean, that nade was a big decider there. I mean, Frig was, that Frig, long A was Frig's job, right? 
Thief was in the middle watching Round main, A main. Yeah, really. But as soon as that action came out, Thief with a beautiful toss. Absolutely. I mean, the fact that you have to do that in VR in real life, the ability to, to know that timing and to bounce it off that crate. And, it, and it's oh, not, ladies man. and gentlemen, it's not just about the arm throw, it's about the timing. He held yes. the nade, waited for you a countdown prime to two, it. and it's all about where it's going to explode. Yeah. If he'd just thrown it, it would have gone off the map, it wouldn't have done anything. So we waited, counted to two, let it trigger. That's why we see some of the players kill themselves that were holding for too long. They prime it, they prime it, they throw it. We saw it done perfectly by Thief as he gets to 2K. We're seeing a completely different strat out of rec uh, Wrecked right now. They've got two in A main, one in middle, two in B long. Scanner's positioning that B long. Possibly trying to work a big, more of a default right now. Trying to feel out how Vortex is playing. But, you know, it's interesting. Vortex has kind of pre-rotated a little bit. They've left B and they're rotating towards A. This could pay out for Wrecked right now. <gasps> wow. wow, that rebound nade straight into the camera. Almost Tarmac taken has down no five. health. Tarmac has zero health, basically. Three HP, max. Yellow Hat trying to find Clev here. Both teams jockeying for position right now. It's so intense. It's so close. Crack a J. Taking down Chill Step. Big pickup on the long B there. Now well, Basil Mas crossing over. Quiet push happening on B. Quiet push being identified by Crack a J. He's not going to let it go for free. Yellow Hat picking up Clev at middle. Vortex is in a good position to win this round at this point. It's, it's five on three, and Tarmac has no health. Here comes Tarmac. On to Catwalk right now. He's only got a sliver of health. Cracker J has to hear him at this point. He's making a ton of noise. Cracker J swings out, picks him up. And now it's all up to Basil and Nadix, who are still working up B long here. Most of Vortex is ready for it. Nadix is going to pick up some in the first one. Cracker J taking the second one. 20k on the line. Basil all on his shoulders right now to try and stop Vortex from going to the match point. He's got no time for this. He's got about 10 seconds left here. He just has to get involved, and Deep's going to pick him up. Now Vortex is on match point in the match. final match. You've got to give it to Vortex there. They did not push one side or the other, right? They, they had mid control, and they kept it. Ladies and gents, round get hyped. This could be the last round of the night. It's been a long journey. We can see it end right now. Vortex, 10 points. Wreck need to hold on. They need to hold the line. They need to bring it back to 10-10. That's the best case scenario for them right now. Let's go. Wrecked, looking to set up an aggressive B here. We haven't seen this from them. Tarmac is almost always in A main. They're clearly trying something else here, trying anything they possibly can to bring this one back. They're down th two rounds at this point. Vortex one round away from winning $20,000 and being the IVRL I MBM major tournament winner season one. Easier said than done, right? It's Wrecked. a lot. Know the pressure that's on their shoulders. Is it having an effect? We've seen them do comebacks. We've seen Vortex do the comebacks. And like I said, is it a curse? We saw Rex with the early lead. Vortex now one point away from taking it all. Here comes the execute for Rex. Smoke's ringing out. They gotta watch out for the nades on the cross here. They gotta get onto that B and they're gonna make the entries here. At this point, it's still 5v5. Samachi, cheeky little Samachi hiding in the smoke. Clap takes, takes down, down. Samachi. The guy who loves to play with smokes takes it down. Basil going for the quick plant here. Crack of J swinging out, gonna pick up Tarmac. And now all of Vortex gonna be rotating. Yellow takes down Basil. Nadix takes down Ye uh, Yellow Hat. And now it is a three on Nadix three. Nadix on fire, taking down the 2K. It is now three versus two. Nadix, Nadix taking two. down Thief. Nadix coming alive when it matters most. Crack of J, the last guy remaining on Vortex, takes down Nadix. Up one, but Chill Step swings out and grabs Ten him. Nine. Ten nine. Oh. Wow. I mean, Wrecked playing that slow game. That slow game is working out beautiful for them. They played it slow on B long. They waited to that moment. They fired all their utility off, got across, and they took down B site, and they held it. Then they spread apart, like we always say, spread apart, jump into defensive mode, and that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to hear a 10 10, I want to hear some noise. If you want to go to 10 10, I want to hear everyone cheering. Make some noise. Woo! Nadix is an absolute monster right now. 25 kills on the board for Nadix. Absolutely doing more. 25 work. kills. That might be the highest of the day. It is. I think. What? I'm pretty sure. What a monster. He said Suna was his best map. He was fired up when I talked to him in between games here. Good things come in small packages. Nadix is not a tall guy, but he is still growing, and he is showing us what he's going to be capable of. This is how good he is now. He keeps like, fragging away. This is what we're going to see him doing on every single map, not just Suna. And here comes the classic... Long aim, slow push. Frigg is ready for it in this advanced position, though. He's rotating off now after Tarmac picks up Crack of J. This is a problem for Vortex. They're rotating off. Tarmac oh, they, has they sold, sold the it. They here. sold it. Fantastic fake from Tarmac. Now they have to fight back in the site. Frigg picks up one. That's left down now. 
Meanwhile, the rest of Rekt has taken quad control. They have bat sight control. Frig has to hide here. He can't battle all of them on his own. He needs some support. Oh, Yellowhack Yellow gonna find Tarmac. Deep's gonna find Basil. This could be it's, it's all up to Nadix in a 1v3. 1v4. Nadix is alone. We just talked about how good he is here. Is he good enough to pull this up? This is match point for Vortex. There and it is! Vortex takes map number three, and they are your Miami champions! Vortex! Thief at the end! That is it, ladies and gentlemen! Vortex, are they your champions? Round of applause! Keep that noise coming! Look at the love! Look at the boom! There it is! Woo! Wow. Dude, I'm tired after casting that. Wow, wow that was intense. Look at the love, look at the emotions. They are so happy. They know what they've done. They had the backs against the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, Frig taking the stage off. Samachi with the blue hair. Cracker J with those nades. Thief with those ridiculous 2K pickups we saw him do. Yellow hat always with aggression. What a team of winners. I think we're gonna cut to uh, Valley here, close us up. Wow, and I can see a cheeky peeky of the amazing. Come back, come back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Vortex. Woo! And also, I would love for all of you to point your eyes at the beautiful trophy right there. Vortex definitely deserved it, $20,000. The trophy's awesome. That is an awesome that is trophy. So that cool. is amazing, dude. Did you see the little pucks? Did you see the little scanners? I think it might be some individual stuff. Not, not, in, uh, not in real life, but I've seen the renders. Wow. Artifact. What a day of matches, man. What a day of matches. You guys What? Thank you. I uh, say we bum rush the stage and steal that. <laughs> I have no every, words every, right legitimately. now. Every man for himself. All right, all right, all right. Sumachi, I have no words for the, what just happened right now. This is fucking crazy. Do you have words? Uh, I want to do a shout out to Lurf and Bricktop, who are also on the team but couldn't make it. Ghost, one of our You're shaky right now. <laughs> one of our players who um, who passed away a couple of months ago. Shout out oh. to Ghost. Shout out to shout Ghost. Shout out. Shout out to Ghost, ladies and gents. Shout out to all the players that are here, like making this, like all the teams here, we love them. Krobo from Pop 1, like making it to fourth from playing Pop 1. Yeah. Let's fucking go, Cobra. Or third, third actually, yeah, third. Hell yeah, Cobra, third. Royal Strive, shout out all, like half the team from Europe, like making this long trip, being, being here for all of us and being here to compete as well. We're gonna make sure to have a great time tonight, partying. For, for everybody that's coming here, the celebration of VR. Let's keep growing this as big as we can. Shout out to all of Wrecked for how. Round of applause for Wrecked. They yeah, round of applause for Wrecked. The they Come played on. amazing tonight. All of Wrecked for having a, a fairly new team and making it top two. Great competition. Great to play against you guys. Hope Woo. to see you guys. And uh, all my fantastic teammates being here with us. Yellow hat, have anything? Pass it around, give some shout outs, show some love, so baby, let's go. <laughs> oh, wait, I... <laughs> oh, also, you might want to check out the board behind us right there, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Vortex, 20K, Rex, 10K, Triple Cartel with the five. It's a heavy one, it's a big boy. It's it's a big boy. boy. <laughs> Oh my goodness, look at this trophy. Oh my Oh god, yeah. Yeah! <laughs> it's a big boy. Um, yeah, so we're just passing this around. Uh, I personally, dude, I, I have no words. This is probably the most amazing VR event that I think any one of us has been to. And, you know, if this is going to be a yearly thing, like Vortex, we're going to be here every year. Yeah. Yeah. Love, Love the confidence. Love it. Love it. Um, special shout out, especially to my parents who are watching from home. And then, of course, my big brother in the sky, the original wearer of the yellow hat, my brother James. You know, I, I don't think there's a group, or I don't think there's any other group I'd rather be with. I mean, I've been with these guys for the past two years. Um, they've been a team for the past four years, and, you know, 
it's it's been an amazing ride and we've grown so much as a team and you know shout out to everyone like i freaking love y'all <laughs> Baby, let's go. I'm just going to shout out the people that I haven't heard anybody shout out yet, which is the IBRL for putting on this insane yeah. land. Like, what is this? Like, how does this happen? Like, what y'all are insane. I'm just saying. Like, Bucks? We're good. Shout out to Thieves Kids. All right. Appreciate it. He could buy something nice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as well, along with the trophy, we have the medals. Let's go ahead and pass them on now. Let's get the these medals are dope. The medals are amazing, by the way. Real life puck scanners. Nice. I definitely think the uh, caster should bump off stage. I definitely yeah. think we can get away at least one of those. We can, yeah, we, 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 we we can probably grab one, at least. They'll never stop us. <laughs> I'm totally not tired enough to do that. By the way, Etch has a really exciting announcement for all VR eSport enthusiasts, so oh. stay tuned. Oh. Oh, yeah. so that we can all make sure that the game is ready. And we think it finally is. Now, it's our pleasure to announce we'll be launching November 17th on Steam, early access for everybody to come and play. Something that's Ladies and gents, Vortex! Our capture of the 5-style game mode will be available online on Steam early access. Also, by the end of this year, we'll have a new game. Hello, hello, hello. Mic check, two, three. never been done in VR. Next year is going to be exciting because we'll have another tournament. We're incredibly proud of the Miami Vale Major. We think it highlights a lot of our achievements from this past year. As a team, it's been an immense joy to work on everything up to date, but we're not done yet. Next year is going to be all about getting more people in Vale, cross-platform support, more ways to share the game experience with others and be social. And we'll be working our way up to Albert, our Albert. take on modding. It's still only just the beginning. Join us Albert! On Albert! List on Steam. Albert! 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 Oh shit! We're gonna make an announcement and then uh, I'm gonna say something. If this was epic, it's just the start. Hello, hello, hello. This is just the start. There we go. Season one, the game's not even out yet. Game's up. Game's coming out. Give the announcement. Give the announcement. We're doing season one of Vale, January 15th. 15 week season, and we'll be back for an epic land at the end of the year. We're gonna do something amazing because if you enjoy this, it's not over. We're just starting. And I just want to say thank you to Albert for making this baby and Elizabeth for designing the baby. We all love you. <laughs> Introduce yourself, sir. Hi, everybody. I'm Oud. Hi. I just wanted to say congratulations to all the teams that played, especially these two teams, obviously. I know a lot about the stories of both teams and like the human experience and the human story behind every single person who played tonight, all the teams, is insane. Um, the desire to win, but at the same time, the level of sportsmanship has been really inspiring, honestly. 
Because even though I'm not good enough to play on a team, I'm on a team that makes the game with a lot of other extremely talented people. Shout and out seeing, to X-Lab. shout out to X Lab. Shout out, I can't, the list of people that work on the game is so long that it would be wrong for me to put you all through naming everybody right now. But thank you to everybody that works on the game. Um, for various reasons, not every single developer was able to be here today. But thank you to everybody that works on the game. Thank you to everyone who plays the game. Thank you to everyone who is here tonight, all the friends and family that also supported either the team that works on the game or the teams that played tonight. Um, feeling your support, the connection, everybody understanding the new ideas and the positivity of virtual reality and what we're trying to do. It means a lot to us that you're here, so thank you for that. Honestly, I'm just blown away by everyone that's here. Like, this has been an incredible event, and it wouldn't be possible without our community and everyone that's, that was able to come here and be a part of it. So thank you so much for being here and being a part of this. It's really, it's everything. This is, this is why we're doing this, is because it's for you. So thank you. One, one, one surprise guest. Very, very close friend and partner to push VR forward, the one and only Thrill Seeker. Hey, so something funny that I've noticed is you have like two camps. You have a, well, like, like one camp is, this event is awesome, this is, like this is amazing, and then the other side is criticizing for everything that we didn't do, right? You know what? Every single one of the players had a good time. I think every single one of you guys had a good time. And that's what it's all about. That's what this is. It's just us having a good time doing the thing that we love. That's it. And um, you know what? This is a challenge to everybody out there. You make something competitive, you have a good, a good FPS, you have a good whatever game, do this. Because you know what? This is scary. This is scary. Doing this event, it's not, it's not easy. It's not like... It's not like you come up here, here and like, oh, hey, let's have this event. Let's go fly a bunch of people out. No, it's scary. Yeah. And they did it. So here. <laughs> a challenge. A challenge to everybody out there. You want VR to succeed? You want to go do the thing? Go do the damn thing. All right? Come on. I'm proud of you. Drop a dirty set. And I might drop a dirty set after this. I don't know. But, <laughs> but hey, love you guys. Thank you. All right, you wrap up? I just want to say, lastly, wrap up, wrap up. huge, huge shout out to the iBarrel team. Every staff member that was here from our refs, stage managers, the techs behind the scenes, our observers in the back corner there who brought all of the gameplay, our amazing casters, Trip and the production crew in the back. Everybody, player managers, the people at home managing, the, the refs. It takes a village, it literally does. This was not easy, this was our first show. Um, and huge shout out to everybody who was here. Who was here overnight, who spent like 14 hour days this week, but it was an amazing show and we're only gonna get better. Thank you. Can I, can I tell the truth now? We didn't test shit, by the way. We had no fucking time, and I was shitting myself the entire time. But we had only one technical problem that nobody even saw. So, fuck yes. <laughs> all right, let's all celebrate. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's about it. I want to thank all of you for coming out to the Miami Vale Major. I want to thank all the teams, all of the staff behind the scenes. Shout out to Production Trip. You've been phenomenal. But also, last but not least, we could not have done it without every single one of you beautiful people. So once again, round of applause for all of you. Spread love, be good to each other. We'll see you next time here at Vail. Take it easy. <laughs> <laughs>